The tale begins on a night when a man, the world's best assassin, righteous Heavenly Alliance's assassin Chun Hajin, is alone fighting with many people, but he is strong enough to beat them all. He asks them to attack him together because he is rather busy, and they think he is too confident for someone who just killed a few of them. They all rush toward him together, but he is fighting and killing them all and doesn't even remember how many he has killed so far. He cut down the pursuers that came after him repeatedly, and they wondered why they could not fight with just one enemy. A bunch of pursuers again rush toward him and say it's his time to die, but Hajin thinks he can't die because he has finally found freedom after 30 years, so they should be the ones to die. He will kill them all if that is what it takes for him to find his freedom, so he kills them all one by one. They attack him with their swords, but he gathers their sword, stands upon them, and jumps over them, and they all are pushed back with his sword aura. They are shocked to see his power and think this is why he is called one of the top 10 strongest martial masters in the world. He has killed them all, but now he gets tired and thinks the pursuers have finally stopped chasing after him. After some time, many of them appear there and rush toward him, thinking he is at the limit and now they can beat him, and he is shocked to see that there is no end to them. He couldn't believe he still had this many left to fight, even after he fought until his blade became dull. He wonders why they despise the thought of him being free that much. He warns them not to get in his way. Otherwise, he will kill them all and swing his sword to attack them all. One of them shouts that he might be the world's best assassin and be called the Assassin King, but he was just a mere hunting dog of the righteous Heavenly Alliance leader, a soulless and murderous demon. Still, now he is free and happy even though the afterworld curses him for eternity, his life, and all the people he has killed. He is badly injured and bleeding but wants to survive because he finally becomes free after cutting off those pursuers they had on him. He lived as a dog of those righteous Heavenly Alliance people all his life, but now he is free. He runs toward a secret place to consume the elixirs and uses herbs to treat his wounds and recover his energy. But after some time, he slips and falls on the ground. He thinks he will go crazy because he is so hungry and remembers that he has only eaten a few pieces of beef jerky for seven days. He was about to get unconscious when he noticed someone jumping toward him, but he reacted on time and dodged his attack. He is shocked to see his stealth technique so skillful that even he, the world's best assassin, doesn't notice it, and his martial powers are so strong enough to cut the forest with just sword aura. Heijin gets that Persona is the strongest assassin in the southern central plains, the Death Lord, and he didn't expect him to be there. He asks him if Miram will acknowledge someone like him if he kills a man tired out from fighting hundreds of martial masters and threatens him that he will be cut into pieces even though he is fighting him when he is completely exhausted. They both start fighting and Hajin stabs his sword in his body after some fight. After taking him down, he asks the person who has hid in the bushes for a long time to come out. He is shocked to see Secret Demon Queen there and she says it is honored for her that he remembers her after six years. On the other side, the Righteous Heavenly Alliance's first leader, Young Ilryong reaches there and is shocked to see that all their men have died. All of the corpses in this area belong to the martial masters of the Streel Blood Fortress. He never thought that Hajin would get past the inescapable net formation they deployed and killed so many people of the Steel Blood Fortress martial masters. He exclaims Chin Hajin indeed lives up to the name of the Assassin King. He feels energy from the Demon Queen and orders his men to follow her death energy because that is where they will find Hajin. On the other side, Hajin and the Demon Queen are facing each other, and it is revealed that she is using a rejuvenation technique to maintain her appearance. Still, she is over 60 years old. In reality, she is a devilish murderer who cannot sleep a single night without killing someone, and Hajin wonders why they have sent an insane murderer to catch him. When he pulls out his sword, she acts disappointed and says they have such a special relationship between them and says he will not last for a long time in front of her, and says she will recommend a more accessible way out. Hajin asks him to check him and see how many strikes he can withstand and why he would fear a 60-year-old grandma, which makes her angry, and she says she will pull out his spine if he calls her grandma one more time. But he makes her angry again and says she has become more sensitive to age and time and calls her grandma again, and she gets happy to learn that she will get much pure energy by murdering him. She reveals that the Steel Blood Fortress had requested her to capture him alive and asks him how he managed to kill all those masters earlier, 
and Hajin now gets why she was stalling and uttering such nonsense when she prefers to spill blood rather than converse. Moreover, she wants to find out the hidden martial prowess of the nine sects and confidential information about the Righteous Heavenly Alliance. Hajin's mentality impresses her so much that he catches her up immediately. She admits all this and says she doesn't need the secret information of the Righteous Heavenly Alliance and wants the nine sects martial prowess, and if he reveals it to her, she will let him live. But Hajin says this is not a real deal when he is already dying, and she reveals that he is dying because of the Blood Parasite. Blood Parasite is the end to all who betray the Righteous Heavenly Alliance and will relay judgment of someone's betrayal. She promises to let him live and get him rid of the Blood Parasite if he teaches her the technique, but Hajin says she is lying because he already knows about her detestable nature. She gets offensive and asks him how he dares to say such a thing when he is nearly dying and is ready to attack him by saying she has never let anyone live after insulting her. Hajin takes his sword and rushes toward her, and the Demon Queen also turns into her true form and attacks him. Their powers collide, and there is a huge amount of destruction there. They are still fighting when Hajin observes that the first elder has reached there, and he wonders when he got there. The Demon Queen takes advantage of the situation and stabs her hand through his body. Meanwhile, the first elder cuts his arm, holding the sword. Hajin falls to the ground and starts bleeding badly, and the Demon Queen exclaims that she has lost his limbs now. She then grabs his head and says she should pluck his head off so that he may never utter anything else ever again. She then behades him in just one blow, kills him and asks him to crawl into hell like a parasite. He just wanted to live an ordinary life, but it was a dream for him which would never be fulfilled. Conversely, a sleeping boy wakes from a nightmare at the heavenly demon divine cult's main sanctuary, feeling like the demon queen beheaded him. Meanwhile, at the Heavenly Demon Divine Cult Inner Sanctuary, a man bows before the fourth young lord of the Divine Cult and tells him that he feels his pulses and that Seor Yong will die tonight at every cost. The fourth young lord gets happy by his words and exclaims that things are going better than he expected. Flashback to when Hajin was a young boy and had a friend who worked with him as an assassin. One day, when they were resting after killing many people, his friend showed him a bird carving and said he would get out of there using any means necessary and live the rest of his life as free as a bird. He will go down to the rural regions where he can smell fresh greenery instead of this musky scent of blood. And Hajin said he also wanted to go with him, but he refused and said he couldn't think about it. Suddenly, the blood started coming out of his mouth and he died instantly. A man appeared there and said that was the end to all who betrayed the Righteous Heavenly Alliance. The blood parasite in their bodies would relay judgment of their betrayal and would kill all who tried to betray them. Come to the present, the boy who just woke up is now wondering where he is present, and the room seems so luxurious. He remembers that the Demon Queen just beheaded him, but at the next moment, he is in some weird place. Meanwhile, a maid enters the room and introduces herself as Ongwa and he suddenly gets up and puts a stick on his neck. He asks her about who she is and if she is from the Steel Blood Fortress, while she tells him that she is his servant Anqua and why he is acting like this. He asks her who brought him there, and she reveals that he has always lived there and has been unconscious for the past six months because he fell victim to Kai blockage and only awoke two nights ago. He is shocked to hear this and thinks he just died a moment ago by the Demon Queen. He asks Angua to stop fooling around and asks her to tell him the truth, and she replies that she is telling the truth and has brought a simple meal for him so he can eat it. Suddenly, he sees himself in the mirror and is shocked to see a weak body. He thinks he may be reincarnated into this boy, or that was his past life where he lived as the world's best assassin. The door opens, and he wonders how a place like this can exist in Miram. Meanwhile, two men appear there and are shocked to see him. He bows before him, pays him his respect, and congratulates him on his recovery as a third young lord. He is shocked to learn it's a divine cult within Murum, the heavenly demon divine cult. He is the first royal guard, Mudum, and after that, he goes to greet the demon lord and informs him that the third young lord has awakened. Moreover, he has lost all his martial prowess from overextension and asks the demon lord what he likes to do with him now. Still, he forbids him from providing him with any further reports until the closing ceremony in three months. The royal guard bows before him and sincerely hopes the demon lord will accomplish the great deed. 
it is revealed that the heavenly demon divine cult is the oldest and most evil demonic power in the generation and was created several thousand years ago by a mum master. In terms of martial power, they were the strongest and just by existing, the whole Miram world would be anxious as it symbolizes chaos. In terms of numbers, the Federation of the Righteous Heavenly Alliance and the Steel Blood Fortress outnumber them. Among all the alliances, the Heavenly Demon was treated more than war and pandemics and was the evilest demonic group. Eventually, Hajin is still unable to understand how he wakes up there or if he obtained a second life, but at the same time, he is unhappy about being awakened in the demon cult. Ha decides to stay calm, grasp the current situation, and plan for the future. Last night, a boy was watching the cult through a roof quietly and saw two men talking about the third young lord awake again and a bloody hierarchical battle would start again. They revealed that he was known as a monstrous demon and would suck several people dry, and the boy who was listening to their conversation wondered how the third young lord lived his life. The following day, Hajin goes outside his room and thinks he needs a thorough plan to escape from there. He was the one who was roaming around the cult quietly, and his health didn't allow him to do anything yet. This body is equivalent to an eight-year-old boy, so first, he needs to recover his body. He checks up through the body and learns that the extraordinary eight meridians are all messed up, and he tries to remove the trim and rotten dungeon. The temperature inside the room has increased, and the air has gotten quite damp too. He will expel the dark energy outside his body with the boundless technique. In his past life, through utilizing several martial prowess from the nine sects, he perfected his martial prowess called the Boundless Technique. As a person without any status, this technique was his lifeline. And now, with the help of this technique, he can achieve a small goal, and he observes that no one has visited him except the doctors. They told him that his recovery rate was relatively fast and advised him to look after himself and that a maid would bring food for him. She was trembling with fear, and he also estimated from the guy's name, a monstrous demon, that he was a troublemaker with a trashy personality. Three months later, the fourth young lord asks the doctor about why he is recovering, because he told him that he would never be able to recover. He is surprised that he consistently exceeds his expectations and asks the doctor when Rin is coming, and he reveals that Rin should be arriving at the main temple around noon. On the other hand, Hajin is training in his room and is better than before, and his stamina for using the boundless technique has increased a lot. He gave it his all to get this body back to normal for the last three months, the remaining cloudy and demonic energy has disappeared. After some time, the maid brought him herbal medicine, and when he was taking the medicine, he noticed a bloody parasite inside the bowl. He immediately breaks the bowl, and suddenly, a man appears before him and says he will never forgive him for betraying them. Even if he dies, he won't be able to escape the Righteous Alliance. Suddenly, the maid calls him, and he gets that he just had a dream and all of this was his hallucination. After some time, a girl comes to meet him, but he cannot recognize her and wonders who she is and why she enters his room without permission. She exclaims that he looks better than she thought, and Hajin is thinking of a way to escape this. She asks him if he is going to keep her standing and says she wants to drink a cup of tea. The first thing that comes to his mind is to run, so he runs away, saying he has to do some urgent task, but two guards appear there and block his path. The girl orders them to stop all those who approach there because she will have a deep conversation with the third young lord while he stands still with a blank face. She then asks him to sit and says they have things to discuss, but he makes an excuse, says he didn't swipe with sweat while recovering his body, and asks her to wait while he changes. He asks Ankwa to follow him and then asks her about the girl's identity, and she is shocked to learn that he doesn't remember her. He makes an excuse that his head hurts after waking up from the Kai blockage, so he thinks there is a problem with his memories. She reveals that she is Hong Yorin, a demon affiliated with and working for the religion's internal enlightening facility. Moreover, she is the daughter of the Geoxa family within the demon cult and is strong enough to be called the most talented disciple and is excellent at her work and is the younger sister of the fourth young lord. He then asks her why Yorin has come looking for him and what their relationship is, and she states that she doesn't know the details, but both of them have met numerous times within a month. Hajin guesses that their relationship isn't just average. However, he thanks Ankwa for this and asks her not to say anything about this to anyone. After that, he returns to the room, apologizes for his behavior, and asks why she has come there.
At the same time, she thinks his attitude is different from earlier, as it looks like he has lost the brightness in his eyes, which means he has lost his martial prowess after he wakes up. She reveals a contract that has both of their seals and asks him if he remembers about this, and if one of them breaks the contract or if they must invalidate the contract, the penalty will be tripled. Moreover, the amount she has invested into the wonder drug is close to a thousand yam, and the additional money from other things is about two thousand yam, while he is watching all this with a blank face because he doesn't know about anything. After all calculations, she demands six thousand yang from him and asks him to give her money right now, and if he doesn't have money, then she writes up a contract saying when he will pay her back. Hajin thinks her previous version, Xior Yang, wanted to build his reputation and increase his wealth. But now, the girl, Yorin, wants to take advantage of the situation and is doing bad things she shouldn't be doing. He asks her where he spent this much money. He orders Ankwa to prepare the brushes, paper, and ink and writes up a contract, thinking he should do what she wants since he will be leaving this place anyway. She asks him to add one more thing to the contract, if he can't pay her back, he has to come when she calls for him like a loyal dog. He writes everything in the contract, and she exclaims that it will end when she receives the money, and until then, they should respect each other since they are contractors. But suddenly, he orders Angua to go out and brings the commander of the royal guards, and when he appears there, he orders her to prepare the carriage as he needs to go somewhere. The royal guard tries to stop him, but he says he will meet the demon lord, so he should prepare a carriage and send words to the demon lord's palace. Yorin gets scared and asks him why he wants to go there, and Hajon replies that he wants to see if this contract is fair for the demon lord. She tries to threaten him by saying that if the demon lord knows they made a contract, he will not be safe either, but Hajin says he is already aware of their circumstances and asks her to think about herself. After that, for the sin of raising their daughter poorly, his family will be stripped of everything. Meanwhile, Hajin was about to leave the room when she called him. She requests him to wait and asks him if he doesn't want to become the supreme leader, but he says it is ridiculous to even think about it with this body. When Yorin observes that he will not listen to her, she asks him what she needs to do for him not to go to the demon lord, and he orders her to rip the contract with her own hands. In the past, Hajin's friend told him that he wanted to be a free man and would go down to the rural regions where he could smell fresh greenery instead of the musky scent of blood. Once, they were on a mission and killed many people, and his fellow told him that they had looked through every nook and cranny, but they couldn't even find a single ant. Hajin revealed that they betrayed the alliance and committed treason, so someone must be remaining and ordered them to search the population nearby. Suddenly, he finds a bird in one of the child's hands and suddenly shocked to see something and asks his men to move aside. A man appeared and he killed his two fellow assassins in just one attack. After that, he turned toward Hajin and rushed toward him to attack. Hajin reacted on time and saved himself. The man took the child's corpse and started crying. Hajin asked him to listen to him and revealed that the mum told them this duty was to eliminate those who betrayed the alliance and told them that they were traitors who committed treason. He tries to tell the man that he didn't know those people were innocent, but he shouts at him and asks if killing people was just a job to him. He died in his arms and asked Hajin if he knew anything about life and he replied that there was no way an assassin would know anything. He cursed him that even from the afterlife, his life would become the death of all those people he had murdered. At present, the first royal guard tells the demon lord that the third young lord wants to meet him. He has just sent a carriage, so he should arrive shortly at the palace, but he orders him to escort him to the demonic judgment pavilion. Meanwhile, a doctor visits Hajin and tells him that the damaged veins have recovered more within the last few days and that he undoubtedly has incredible regenerative ability. The doctor believes that he will no longer require acupuncture to aid his healing, and they will recover his strength with nutrient-dense meals and the Supreme Healing Potion. Hajin asks him about the Supreme Healing Potion because he has never heard of it before, and he reveals that it is a decoction composed of fine herbs that aid in recovering his energy. Moreover, it is handcrafted by the artisan in the household and only serves the highest-ranking members of the main sanctuary. Hajin thinks that if it has medicinal properties, he can recover faster. The doctor leaves, asking him to come after two days, and he still has some weird feelings about him. After the doctor is gone, he is thinking about the demon lord. He wonders what type of person he is as nobody who lives within the Kanghomurim is curious about the heavenly demon, 
and he may be the strongest person under the sky. Though he has never displayed his full powers and is still considered one of the most influential people in the world, Hajin thinks meeting him right now can be dangerous since he doesn't know much about the demon cult. Sometimes earlier, Yorin apologized to him for being rude, and Hajin thought he couldn't stand to be reborn just to become somebody else's dog. Therefore, he got angry and taught her a good lesson. Sometime later, Anqua comes to him and informs him that the demon god's palace has contacted them, and the carriage is ready for him outside the house. After some time, when he reaches outside the palace, the first guard informs him that the demon lord has summoned him to the demonic judgment pavilion, but he is shocked when he sees the pavilion at the top of a mountain and far from the land. He has to climb up many stairs and wonders how this can be the headquarters of the demon cult. There were so many guards reminiscent of when he was trapped in the inescapable formation by the righteous heavenly alliance and the steel blood fortress and high-level masters surrounded the area. He feels like he is inside a dragon's pool and a tiger's den, and if he makes one mistake, he will die. Sometimes later, they reach the pavilion gate, but he is surprised to see that it does not look like a pavilion. He thinks he shouldn't be startled and has to act like he knows everything because every move he makes could decide his survival in the demon cult. When he entered, he reached a big garden and was shocked to see the place had spring weather when winter was outside. He guesses that is an illusory formation because there is no other way to explain this site since it's winter outside, and it exactly looks like the place of his dreams. He had always wanted to retire from Kangho in his previous life and live somewhere with lots of fresh greenery like this, but he wondered what a realistic illusion technique is. Suddenly, he sees a pavilion where the demon lord is waiting for him, but he is shocked as that pavilion wasn't there a moment ago. When he is going toward the Lord, he feels like his feet are moving on their own, as if he has been bewitched. His basic instincts as the Assassin King tell him this place is dangerous, but it's not like he can turn back. But if he wants to escape the demon cult and live a new life, he must face the demon Lord and finally meet the ninth person called Forty by the Heavenly Demon. He enters the pavilion, and both face each other, but no one utters a word. On the other side, the royal guard stands outside the door, but something bothers him. He reveals that under the demon lord's reign, only two instances exist when an outsider has entered the demonic judgment pavilion. The first time was around 25 years ago when the lord took in his first disciple, and the guard was surprised to learn that there was another disciple before the first young lord. The royal guard reveals that the unknown disciple that looms in the shadows died at the demonic judgment pavilion and his skin was torn to shreds as if wild animals had ripped him apart. But if the demon lord had intended to kill him, he wouldn't have brought him there, and the second person who entered there is the general strategist. He was the person of absolute authority who looked after small and big matters, the only man who climbed his way to the top using his brains, not martial arts, and the second person who went into the demonic judgment pavilion. But he also walked out with his head held up high, and today, the Daimonic Judgment Pavilion has opened its gate for the third time. He wonders if the third young lord will come back alive today. Meanwhile, Hajin bows before the demon lord, pays his respects, and asks him to get up, while Hajin thinks he is indeed different, the grand demonic master and ruler of all. He can sense the mountainous dignity he possesses and has no reason to be trapped within the confines of being one of the top ten strongest martial artists. He is so powerful that he is considered half-immortal and dwells in an entirely different dimension, and Hajin gets scared by just his aura alone. The demon lord pours some alcohol into the glass and offers him, and Hajin accepts this with obedience. The alcohol he offers him is so fragrant, and it's been a long since he had such fancy booze, so he takes it in just one sip. The demon lord then asks him why he requested to see him, and Hajin states he has a request for him. He asks him if it will be all right for him to leave the cult, and in his mind, he thinks he has messed up everything because he wants to go out for some fresh air. The demon lord gets his point and asks him if he wants to leave the cult or wants to go outside for a while. He inquires if he has given up because his body has become so exhausted or if this is the extent of his abilities. Hajin states he is not trying to cut ties and it has not been long since he has recovered and lost his martial prowess. Moreover, he is trying to put himself together, but it is more challenging than he thought, so he thinks going out for fresh air would be better. The demon lord gets annoyed because he has just come there to ask him permission for an outing, and Hajin thinks he gets screwed and hurriedly thinks of a response. 
So he makes an excuse that he wants to see him since it's been a while, and he wants to carry out some duties as his disciple. But the demon lord gets up and says if he knows about his duties as a disciple, then he should not have appeared before him with that body, and Hajin thinks he may know that it isn't Seor Young within his body. He feels like he is staring directly into his soul, but when he turns back, he gets relieved that he didn't get caught. The demon lord states he will send someone within three days so that he may go now, but he wonders if he doesn't say anything about his request if he is allowed to go outside or not. When he has left, the demon lord calls the royal guard and asks him what is happening with the third young lord. The royal guard states that he is recovering at home, but according to the demon lord, he seems pretty good. He exclaims that ten years ago, when he picked up the snake, he thought that it was an image, but was later disappointed to find that it was just a venomous snake. Similarly, when he chose the third young lord as his disciple, he thought he would be evil, but today, when he looks at him again, he possesses a magic pearl. While getting further away from evil, he also understands death and finds out that by his steps when he comes toward him. The first royal guard is shocked because a demonic judgment pavilion is a place where evil is judged. The demon lord brings forth the object to be judged, and the demon lord and the formation give the judgment. This place embodies the heart of those who enter it and reveals their current and subconscious state. And if the object is not the demon lord's linking at that moment, depending on his will, the demonic formation of the pavilion will attack them and destroy him in such a wretched way. This formation technique can discover one's true intentions and is a formation of the highest level that only the demon lord can cast. Now the demon lord asks the first guard if he is taking good care of the solitary bamboo grove, and he replies that personnel from the court of elders are appointed to maintain it every other day. Moreover, there is an average of five casualties a month. Still, fortunately, there has been no death in the past four months, and the demon lord again asks him if the court of elders withdraw their personnel for the time being and declares that he will be sending the third young lord to the solitary bamboo grove, because he thinks it will be the best place for him to get some fresh air. After some time, Hajin's condition is very bad because many creatures are there. He wonders why the demon lord has sent him to a place in the middle of nowhere and thinks about what mistake he has made for him to send him to such a scary place by himself. He gets furious and abuses the demon lord for how this can be the perfect place to get some fresh air. Meanwhile, a guard appears behind and says this is quite a dangerous remark for the demon lord. The language he used recently was abusive, and any such words are considered an offense serious enough to be granted an immediate death sentence. There is no exception for the young lords and ladies, but Hajin says he should have listened to him carefully because he wasn't bad-mouthing the demon lord, and the guard apologizes for the misunderstanding. He then asks the guards where he belongs, states that he is from the court of elders, and pays his respects to him, saying it is an honor for him to serve the third lord as his guard. But Hajin says he doesn't care about his honor, but wants him to get away from him. But he swears that he will devote himself to his guard and protect him with his life. His name is Donkpul, and he is the Heavenly Demon Divine Cult's third leader. Soon, Hajin realizes that he has been stuck there and can't get out of there. No matter how hard he tries, he can't leave this place. He is crying badly and abusing the cult leader again because he wants to go out, but he shouldn't exile him to a place like that. He gathers himself and thinks he should not waste any more time on useless thoughts. He wants to leave the demon cult because he had a bad premonition the moment he found out he was reincarnated as the third young lord of the demon divine cult, but it seems impossible to leave the place right now. However, to survive in this body, he needs power. He must become stronger because the heavenly demon cult thoroughly upholds the ideology of the survival of the fittest, more so than all other groups in Miram. It is not a place where he can wait passively to be culled and kicked out. Ultimately, he will have to take the path of martial arts, regardless if it brings him life or death. He determines not to resort to petty tricks anymore and will use his power to walk out with his head held high with his strength. He is thinking about all this when suddenly his guard appears in front of him. Hedgen gets scared when he comes there to call him for food, but he yells at him and asks him not to bother him. The guard tries to persuade him by saying he has not even drank a sip of water for two days, so he is concerned about his well-being, and Hajin agrees to go with him, but warns him not to appear suddenly in the future. It has been three days since he entered the solitary bamboo grove. First, he uses the boundless technique to straighten his body and soul. 
However, he feels the circulation of Kai from the Boundless technique is different from usual, and the cultivation level is at the third power stage. It is revealed that the Boundless technique can be divided into five stages of power, and in his previous life as the Assassin King, he reached the peak of the fourth stage of power. In the Boundless technique, the unity between martial arts and the physical body is much more important than achieving enlightenment. Now his weakened body is at the peak of the third stage of power and on the brink of advancing to the fourth. The Seoryang kid, whose body he has taken, seems genius because the purification technique has been automatically activated and cleanses the air by taking the turbid Kai in the surroundings into the body. When the air around the area becomes pure, the efficiency of the internalization of power multiplies, which in turn accelerates his advancement, and at this rate, he will be able to get back to his previous power sooner than he thought. He is now advancing toward the fourth stage of power, and a storm of power is pouring towards him. Two days later, his body was completely healed, and the tattered blood pathways and vital organs had become much healthier than his body's physical age. Now his life in the solitary bamboo grove has become much easier than expected, and even his hair has gotten darker as it is losing color due to Kai blockage. More than anything, his guard is an excellent cook, so he is eating healthy and sleeping well. Also, he can once again use the abilities he had in his previous life as an assassin, which is called hypersensation that naturally awakened from his frequent brushes with death. Its first form is omniscient sight, a material art that rapidly heightens one's five senses to the extreme, surpassing that of any beast and even without turning his head, he can sense all of his surroundings. This time again, when he was thinking deeply and his guard appeared behind and called him for a meal, Hajin got scared and yelled at him for hiding there all the time. When they were heading back to their shelter, the guard noticed someone behind the bamboo and thought it must be a ghost there, but he ignored this and walked away. A few days later, due to boundless technique, he has recovered to some extent and now wants to check that he can fly. He starts flying and two of his martial prowess are back. One is the boundless technique to restore his body, and the other is the heavenly net six power technique to enhance his hyper senses. The only thing remaining is Dark Shadow Kai, created by combining the elite hidden skills of the ten great sects. These three martial prowess are the basic atrial arts that made him a legend as the assassin king in his previous life, and with them, he can be strong again in no time. Suddenly, he realizes he won't be allowed to learn Dark Shadow Kai because this is the Heavenly Demon Divine Cult. He is the third young Lord Seoryang, not Chun Hajin, and he is sure that there was a demonic art he was practicing originally. After some time, he came back and called Dongpul. He gets scared when he appears from nowhere and jumps in front of him. He then asks if there is anyone among his brothers who hasn't mastered the demonic art or who has learned a martial art that isn't demonic while Dongpul cannot understand what he is saying. Hajin then asks him what will happen if he doesn't learn demonic arts and he replies that if he doesn't, the demon lord will be considerably displeased. He then orders Dongpul to head to the library immediately with the authority of the third young lord and bring back all the secret texts he can borrow on the subject of demonic arts. Dongpul goes directly to the royal guard and tells him about the third lord's request, and he gets surprised because, according to him, the third young lord probably knows them all, so why is he asking him about this, or if he is trying to stimulate himself somehow with them? Dongpul says he suspects the third young lord lost his memories after he suffered Kai blockage. He also goes into deep thought that the third young lord was talented from the beginning but greedy and arrogant, and was a true tyrant who didn't have an ounce of consideration for those beneath him. But ever since he recovered from Kai blockage, he seems like a completely different person. His maid Angua also reported that his words and actions about his behavior need to be clarified. He even managed to walk out of the testing ground of the demon lord, the demonic judgment pavilion alive, but he somehow asks Dongpul not to worry too much about it. The person he is serving right now is not just anyone but one of the seven candidates who may become the successor of the demon cult in the future. He then gives him the library keys, orders him to mix them with other texts, and takes about three or four secret texts out. Moreover, the royal guard asks him if he can explain the solitary bamboo grove to the young lord. Suppose he doesn't, then make sure to explain things properly to the young lord as soon as possible because it is quite a dangerous place. 
He wonders what the demon lord saw in the third young lord to send him to the solitary bamboo grove, because the bamboo grove is the demonic forest that existed before the heavenly demon divine cult settled on the hundred thousand mountains. It is the culprit that took away countless lives of demonic humans over a thousand years, when only the absolutely powerful first heavenly demon existed, and the divine cult did not have a large force, it helped the cult become one of the great sects in no time. It also provides the greatest gift to those who are fated and drags those who are not to the pits of death. This is the second time the demon lord is putting the third young lord to the test because he has already received a passing grade at the demonic judgment pavilion. Now, the first royal guard wonders what will happen at the solitary bamboo grove. On the other side, Hajin is surprised to see that Dongpul has brought so many secret texts for him and says he has just brought the best ones. He wonders if he needs to master demonic arts now, but if he considers them inferior to sacred arts, he will be unable to see their true nature, so he needs to look at them without bias. Dongpul reveals that three of the seventeen texts must be returned in three days because these three are the ten great demonic arts secret texts of their school. A moment later, he asks him if he doesn't remember any of these secret texts, and he makes the excuse that he has completely lost his martial prowess after waking up from Kai blockage. His mind and heart are not the same as before, and now they both have been exiled to the solitary bamboo grove. He wants to relearn all of the demonic arts that he had forgotten. Heijin requests Dongpul to help him because he is his only hope right now, and since he needs to warm up, he asks him to grab some weapons from the cult tomorrow at daybreak. Dongpul gets emotional on this and says he will support him with his life. At night, there are some mysterious wild animals outside their home, and Dongpul thinks they will start being more active in about 10 days, but now they are not making any move, so he is sure it will be fine. They are in the most secure area in the solitary bamboo grove and Hajin, concentrating on the secret texts. Back in the past, when Hajin's dark shadow Kai may not have been widely practiced, but it was one of the greatest techniques in Miram. It wasn't as strong as the secret techniques of the ten great sects, but the profoundness and purity of the technique were considered the best of its time. But daimonic arts are different because they prioritize destruction over purity. Also, they focus on output rather than stability, attack over defense, and true power over flexibility. That's all very similar to the methods of the assassins, and Hajin knows that he will not be able to master all ten great demonic martial arts with the way he is right now, but he can enhance the Dark Shadow Kai by using these ten great demonic arts. True demonic art is one of the basic demonic arts, along with demonic dissolution art that are the foundations of some of the ten great demonic arts. There are many other things written in the book, but he cannot understand them. So he shuts the book and decides to awaken his senses first. The boundless technique is best when you have so many thoughts. He concentrates on his technique when he senses someone near him, thinks he is Dongpul, and observes him silently. A moment later, he gets tired and thinks of returning home when he hears some voice from behind and thinks Dongpul has returned. He gets shocked when a creature appears from behind him and rushes toward him, but he jumps backwards and dodges its attack. He is astonished that the thing just smashed through the wall and the creature looks like a chicken and has three heads. It has six legs and wings as big as a person, and Hajin is shocked to see that the giant chicken looks like it could be a mutant of the great King Yanyo. This area is seriously leaving him speechless, and the speed of the chicken is so fast that he can't catch, and he is just trying to dodge his attacks. After a moment, the chicken jumps upon him while he tries to save himself. Meanwhile, Dongpul is returning home and bringing many weapons for the third lord. He thinks the third young lord used to use swords, and as a swordsman, he is supposed to be skilled enough to have created his style. He hopes that the third lord might regain his memories once he holds a weapon and compares his behavior from the past to Seor Yang, who used to shout at him any time. Suddenly, he observes a strong scent of blood in the air. Conversely, Heijin is fighting with the chicken and tries to attack him, but he holds his arm with the help of his two legs, punches it with his other hand, and frees himself. He observes that the chicken is using sound art and wonders what kind of chicken can do this and tries to save him from the strong sound waves. He thinks it would be easy for him if he just had a weapon and suddenly sees bamboo and thinks to use it as a weapon. He picks up a bamboo, flies it, and hits the chicken with full might. He strikes the bamboo in its mouth and the chicken falls on the ground. Hajin thinks it is dead. But after a moment, it opened its eyes and kicked him with so much power that Hajin fell to the ground at a distance. 
he gets injured and realizes he won't be able to pierce it through his feathers with physical force alone. He decides to use a technique on it and never thought he would be using it on an animal, but it can't be helped now. He asks the chicken to come toward him because he needs one blow now. He uses the heavenly net six power technique and the second form, hypervision, which allows one's thought process to speed up exponentially by using one's kai, which in turn slows down the surroundings within his vision. He rushes toward the chicken and finds its weakness, which is its heart, so he jumps upon him and stabs the bamboo in his heart. When Dongpul appears there, he is shocked to see the condition of the city bamboo garden, but Hajin is not present there. A few moments later, he calls him and asks him about the creature he had killed recently, and he reveals that its name was Azure Lotus. He gets relieved that aside from a few scratches, the young lord is fine because the Azure Lotus is a creature that is as dangerous as a leopard. But he looks surprised and asks if his defecation defeated the creature all by himself, but instead of replying, Hajin asks him if they have a big pot. He orders him to put some water and bamboo shoots in it and bring it to a boil as he will make dinner tonight. Also, he needs an explanation of how Dongpul knows about this chicken. He asks him about what kind of place this solitary bamboo grove is and everything else about this place. He reveals that this place existed before the heavenly demon divine cult. It is a natural demonic forest with the densest spiritual kai compared to any other famous mountain and the kai only becomes more concentrated over time. This is why the bamboo trees here are thick and strong, and Hajin asks him if they seem to have a shorter lifespan. Dongpul states that the bamboo shoots there grow exponentially faster than any other average bamboo shoots, and this is how the forest is maintained. Some of the trees also possess strange powers. They can become either poison or elixir because the spiritual kai within them is so dense that they have to be processed dozens of times before the human body can endure them. Moreover, over half of the demonic elixirs crafted by the cult are made from the bamboo trees harvested from the solitary bamboo grove. Still, the majority of the trees that have any medicinal value grow deep within the forest, and the problem is the spiritual animals and beasts that exist there, which means the chicken he killed a moment ago. Dongpul tells him that the azure lotus is the weakest one among them. Furthermore, some confirmed mid-level beasts are as strong as the peak cultivation level masters. They stop by the forest twice a year to harvest the divine bamboo, along with the first guardian and other high-level executives, but the deepest part of the forest is dangerous even for them. Therefore, the city bamboo garden is considered the safest place in the solitary bamboo grove, and Dongpul apologizes for being unable to protect him due to his arrogance. But Hajin says he is not responsible for this because he built walls around the garden and set up an octagonal wall formation outside, so he has done more than enough to fulfill his responsibilities as a guard. Hajin offers him some chicken to eat, but he wonders if it is edible or not. Hajin asks him if he has a weak stomach because he looks weak. Meanwhile, Hajin thinks if this place is so dangerous, why has the demon lord sent him there? Why has he decided to master the demonic arts as soon as possible? The next morning, he orders Dongpul to return all the secret texts. He is shocked that he has read them all in just three days and trounced the Azure Lotus, even though he has not fully recovered. Sometimes he seems light-hearted, but when he's serious, he displays an aura that is hard to approach. Furthermore, even when he loses his martial prowess from Kai blockage, he does not seem particularly frustrated, and Dongpul thinks there must be something he doesn't know about. The next morning, when Hajin decides to master the demonic art, but he can't rush through learning since this is his first time, and if he wants to become strong in the shortest amount of time possible, he cannot give up Dark Shadow Kai which is the most familiar to him. Dark Shadow Kai is a new martial art that hasn't even been through one generation that he created by compiling the Ten Great Sects, and he thinks to make KM0 Coop for the insufficient foundation of his Dark Shadow Kai with the demonic arts. The entire bowl will be contaminated if someone spills a drop of ink in clean water. Similarly, demonic arts are like ink, especially the true demonic arts, which is a kind of being the parent of all demonic studies cultivated by the heavenly demon divine cult. To mature the young martial prowess of Dark Shadow Kai, which is less than one generation old, there is nothing more suitable to mix up the heavenly demon divine cult with Dark Shadow Kai. He starts the training and uses the true demonic arts and dark shadow kai to see if the basis of demonic arts and the secret techniques of the ten great sects can be combined. It's been 12 days since he shut himself in his room, and he told Dongpul not to disturb him no matter what, but he wondered what he was doing there. 
On the other side, Hajin has created a new martial art, which is more destructive than Dark Shadow Kai, and will transform into a more stable art than the true demonic arts. He can feel demonic energy rushing through his body for the first time, and it's a new martial prowess he has not possessed before. Suddenly, there is a rush of demonic energy, and Hajin names this martial art the Dark Shadow Demonic Art. After that, they both go deep into the forest and kill all the beasts on their way. After some time, Dongpil tries to tell him that the place is getting dangerous, and it's not good for them to keep going deeper. Also, he has no strength left in his legs, so they should retreat to the city bamboo garden for today. But Hajin says the beast they have killed recently is called Zingxing, and they live in herds, but there were too few to be called a herd. He was right when a herd of Zing appeared from nowhere, and Dongpil got scared and asked him to retreat because there were a lot of them. He thinks Dongpil is right because his internal Kai has long reached its limit as he has been battling beasts all day, but there is no time to lose, he needs to perfect his new martial art to get out of there by pushing himself to his limit. He uses the skill of Dark Shadow Demonic Art and attacks the herd of Zingxing. On the other side, the Demon Lord gets shocked when he comes to know that the third young lord is hunting herds of Azure Lotuses and Zingxing in the Lone Bamboo Grove, and says this is fascinating because if he had mastered the Black Dragon, it would have been difficult for him to escape the beast's hideous cries. He then asks the first royal guard if he had given the third lord three demonic secret texts, but he bows before him and apologizes for accessing the secret library without his permission. The demon lord orders him to rise and says he has the authority to access the secret library, but the lord asks if he takes full responsibility for providing the third lord with secret texts. The first royal guard replies that he can take responsibility, and the demon lord says he respects his decisions. He then asks the royal guard if he knows why a child's fight is scarier than an adult's fight because children do not know when to stop, and they think about honor, no matter the price is an honor. The moment they realize where the appropriate line is, a battle armed with sheer ignorance, the child becomes a man, which is the moment of realization for the third young lord. On the other side, when they are fighting with the Zingxing herd, some jump toward Dongpul, but Hajin saves him and asks him not to let his guard down. He observes that those Zingxing were nothing but numbers, and the continuous usage of the dark shadow demonic arts is so smooth, and at this rate, he thinks he can even attempt the heart of the solitary bamboo grove. Suddenly, they see another beast coming toward Donpal, and he asks him to dodge, but the beast attacks him and makes him fall. It looks like a horse and is way faster than others, but he cannot belittle it as he did with that chicken. Donpal amplified his inner Kai exponentially within the past few days from the constant battle with these beasts, but the horse knocked him out in one blow. This beast is much stronger than any they have encountered and has a great murderous intent. Then he faced it with his full strength from the start, but the beast attacked him at his full speed and faster than before that Hajin could not dodge him and fell to the ground. He gets seriously injured and observes that wasn't his maximum speed earlier. He then asks him to come again as he won't be fooled twice, but feels his right arm completely broken and cannot move. The horse jumps upon him, and he won't be able to attempt a single strike at this rate. He gets disappointed by thinking this all happened when he thought things were going well and shouldn't have let his guard down in this forest. The horse beast rushes to attack him. Meanwhile, Dongpul throws a sword toward it and asks him to come over to him because he is his opponent. Hajin forbids him to fight it because this isn't a beast he can handle alone, but he doesn't listen to him. The beast rushes toward them, but he starts running and tries to take him to the other side. He is trying to trap him, and as soon as he steps on the trap, it falls into a place full of bamboo. Dongpul thinks he has died, but gets scared when he again jumps over him and tries to get out of the hole, but cannot escape it. Dongpul says how he dares to hurt the precious young lord's body, and that he should punish him by beheading him right. But he runs away, saying he will leave that for the next time, and now he has to rescue the young lord first. Eight months later, at the Heavenly Divine Cult Court of Elders, the first leader, Lee Goonsung, and the second leader, Gi Young, are discussing the matter of protection of the court, and that the patriarch of the Demon Sword family is visiting them today. He is such an important figure, and they think that they might have something to discuss with the cult leaders, it is also said that they are trying to have the eldest son from the Demon Sword family become one of the Demon Lord's disciples. It is revealed that two of the disciples are from the seven families, and based on loyalty alone, there is no reason that is more outstanding than the Demon Sword family. 
But now, they heard that the Lord took in another disciple, while he already had seven of them, and Gi Yang wonders if there will still be seven in the end. He is talking about the third young lord as after suffering from Kai blockage, he lost his martial prowess and is currently at the solitary bamboo grove, and they think he is far from winning the race. He is at the point where a solitary bamboo grove is a dangerous place, and he is sure that when the third young lord returns, or maybe he will be trapped there forever. The second leader asks them to stop at that instant, and if anyone hears what he is saying, then it will lead to a problem. He exclaims that the third leader is suitable out of all of them for the solitary bamboo grove and was sent according to the order of the master of the court of elders. After a while, a guard appears at the door and informs them that the third leader, Dongpul, wants to see them. They are surprised and ask the guard to bring him in immediately, but as soon as he enters, they are shocked to see a sinister, murderous intent on his face. He has come there to ask them for the cave pine tea leaves and the first leader asks him what he plans to do with them. He replies that he is just following the orders of the third young lord and orders him to bring the cave pine tea leaves. They offer him a drink with him and catch up, but he refuses by saying he is quite busy and they forbid him with some courtesy words. When he is left, the second leader tells the first about the murderous intent of Dongpul, which is not normal and means he is living extremely dangerously. But they are relieved that at least he seems healthy, they are sure that he will come back stronger. Meanwhile, he is running toward the bamboo grove and feels light while running. He thinks he has become much stronger than he was eight months ago, and the grueling experiences in the solitary bamboo grove have advanced his martial arts by another level. Suddenly, he notices something moving before him and thinks it is a beast because its steps are heavy and uniform and don't look like zinxing. It is getting closer, and Dongpul takes out his sword, thinking he will cut it down when it appears, but gets shocked to see Hajin in his place. He asks him why he comes back soon as he told him to catch up with his comrades, and Dongpul asks him why he gets out of the city bamboo garden when he is away and has caught another beast horse. Hajin states he was bored, so he came outside and saw it roaming around, he couldn't let it pass, and now they will have horse meat for dinner tonight, and asks him to wash the pots when he gets back. Dongpul asks him to remove the cast from his right arm since it looks like it has healed completely and he remembers the time when he asked him to do chores for him saying his arm hurts, he thinks he has been using him too much for the past few months. At night, Dongpul is making dinner, and Hajin is increasing his stamina, he wonders how he could defeat a horse beast by himself, and nobody would believe that he suffered from Kai blockage before. He then asks him to promise not to enter the dangerous areas without him, but Hajin asks him what he should do because they are running out of time. Because the place is dangerous, and if they stay there, they will also become dangerous due to its mysterious environment. The heavenly concentrated spiritual Kai produces not only the spiritual bamboo and spiritual beasts, but also changes the bodies of the people there. Even though they have put in much effort, these gains cannot be achieved within eight months, so the place is getting dangerous because too much is just as lethal as too little. Moreover, the bamboo and beasts may have adapted to this environment perfectly, but the same cannot be said about humans, and Hajin opens the bandage on the broken arm, which is now completely fine. Dongpul thinks it took him about two months because the bone was broken and dislocated, so it must have taken at least two months, but Hajin states it only took him one week. When the skin breaks, the body heals the wounds, but if the healing process is hastened to the extreme, the body gets completely fine within a few days. It is revealed that the environment of the solitary bamboo grove is good for growth to a certain extent, but the human body cannot withstand it because it explodes with so much power. They must leave this place before that unless they want to explode and die, but Dongpul says they cannot return home until the demon lord permits it. Hajin states that the demon lord told him to go to the solitary bamboo grove and had never given him the timeline for when to return, and this place was the perfect spot for him to get some fresh air. If they defeat about two more beasts, they can get to the heart of the solitary bamboo grove that they haven't been to before. That's where the best spiritual bamboo the leader's harvest is. He determines to obtain them within the next three months. On the other side, the fourth young lord is disappointed to learn that the third young lord is still alive, because the demon lord told him that if he didn't attain peak mastery of the demonic arts, they wouldn't even last three months. The demon lord calls him and tells him that he doesn't mind if his disciple gets each other's throat, and it's as if he wants them to understand that they must overcome this to become his successor. 
he is shocked when the demon lord tells him that the third young lord is doing well because he tried to kill him with poison medicine. Moreover, the demon lord reveals that he plans to summon the third lord soon, which means all the trouble he went through to get rid of him was all for nothing. Conversely, Dongpul has brought all the things ordered by Hajin, and he asks him to bring the cave pine tea leaves because he discovered that its aroma could ward off the beasts. Since it's a bother running into the Azure Lotus and Zinxing, he figured it would be best to prevent them from approaching, and Dongpul asks him why he wanted the turbid elimination herbs. Still, he says everything is used and asks him to bring more herbs next time. Dongpul reveals that this month, the Demon God's Palace Pharmacy is researching the ratio of the Supreme Healing Potion based on this herb. Since it's the elixir's main ingredient, it will take at least two more months to obtain more. Hajin remembers the same Supreme Healing Potion. The physician made him drink for three months after he awakened. These herbs can get rid of any turbidity in the body and are fed to a patient who is nearly dead from the symptoms of Kai blockage. The turbid elimination herb is too strong and attacks even the demonic energy. It is okay to use it on a healthy body, but its effects would be fatal to a weakened body, meaning they fed him this medicine on purpose so that he might die. He asks Dongpul if he has ever heard of the silken clarifying needle, and he reveals that it's a form of acupuncture used to tense up the muscles to balance the body when the muscles have loosened up too much. He also had it a few times before going out on some missions after he used the circulating arts to warm up the body, and it's not a procedure that is too difficult and has a fairly good effect on his memory. Hajin thinks the physician served the supreme healing potion on a body in its weakest state and used the silken clarifying needle on a body that was already rigid and wonders who told him to do this. He remembers Angua told him about the Yorin, the fourth young lord's sister, who came up to see him as soon as he woke up which means the fourth lord was the one who tried to kill him. On the other side, the physician comes to the fourth lord's room and brings cave pine tea leaves for him, and he asks him if he knows about the most difficult place to infiltrate the cult. The physician asks him if he is referring to the solitary bamboo grove. The fourth leader reveals that the solitary bamboo grove is impenetrable, not even the high-level executives may enter without the master's permission, but his question is if they can plant eyes in that place to see what is happening there. The physician states that the military office be the most suitable option in this case because he has heard that the general strategist's control over the organization is so tight that not even the demonic elders can touch them. Still, he doesn't like his idea because the military office is an organization that is fairly easy to infiltrate. The general strategist overseeing the military officer is considered a genius of this century. If something happens, he will turn the tide by finding out which forces have infiltrated the military. According to him, the Court of Elders will be the best option because it is an organization that is distant from everything else and only exists to protect the demon lord and the cult. It differs from other organizations that will switch sides depending on the authorities involved. Moreover, touching them is equivalent to challenging the demon lord so no one pays any mind to them, as they are untouchable. The physician is shocked when he tells him about the third young lord who is still alive after eight months in the solitary bamboo grove. He also heard that they had sent someone experienced and talented to guard him, and if he could contact Dongpul, he would ask him to kill the third young lord. Still, the physician says this is impossible because the masters of the demonic elders must be on guard in the solitary bamboo grove. The fourth young lord thinks before heading to the solitary bamboo grove, his body is in peak condition. But it was still at the level of a civilian who had not mastered martial arts, so he asked his physician to gather his men along with enough weapons. The physician asks him why he involves himself directly, but he says he will not believe this battle should turn into a dogfight. He orders him to gather the men who harbor desires for vengeance against Xiaoyang from before his Kai BLC cage, and they will merely put the swords into their hands, and it's not up to them whether they will seek out Xiaoyan with the swords they have been given. Eventually, Hajin goes toward the heart of the solitary bamboo grove and asks Dongpul to stay there until he returns while he tries to stop him because the place is too dangerous. But Hajin is at the point where whatever danger lurks there, it doesn't change the fact that they are running out of time, and he has no intention of giving up on the spiritual bamboo there. He thinks that since he transformed the Dark Shadow Kai into a demonic art, he won't be able to use the Dark God Phantom however he wishes. This is the reason why he needed the Turbid Elimination Herbs, he needed to suppress the demonic energy somewhat to activate the Dark God Phantom. 
Once he takes the herbs, he will have half an hour, and this time is more than enough to reach the heart. He again asks Dongpul to wait there, saying he will be right back, but he says he has to behead him first to leave the place. So he has no other option except to accompany him, and they reach the place where Heijin hunted the horse beast last time and think this is the heart's entrance. They observe that something is stinking there and looks like something is rotting, and they are shocked to see that many beasts have died there. They all died by vomiting blood, and there were a few beasts they had never seen before. One of the beasts looks like a leopard and is called Menji. It's a beast at the top of the hierarchy in the solitary bamboo grove. They hear that it doesn't leave the heart of the solitary bamboo grove unless necessary. Dongpul reveals it is the beast with the second highest spiritual kai in the solitary bamboo grove, which even the seniors haven't seen. The first most dangerous beast is called the Sundered Serpent, a snake with two tails, and Dongpul is also seeing him for the first time. But Hajin says it doesn't seem all that strong and doesn't even look venomous because it has died like all other corpses like the rest and looks like they all were defeated by something, but it is confusing that they don't have any injury on their bodies. Moreover, the spiritual bamboo that should be much thicker and thriving near the heart is all withered and dead, and it's as if everything in this vicinity had its life force sucked out of them. Suddenly, Hajin felt a cool breeze coming from the side of the heart of the solitary bamboo grove. He asks Dongpul to stay there, and he proceeds from there and doesn't follow him no matter what happens. On the other side, the demon lord is sitting in his room when he observes a jackal appear in front of him in his observations. He thought they would have no reason to see each other while the jackal attacked him, and he fell on the ground in his room. He orders his mane to summon the first guardian, and after some time, the first guardian appears in front of him and pays him his respect. When he goes into solitary training, the demon lord asks him if any guardian entered the heart of the solitary bamboo grove, but he replies that no such thing occurred. He then asks him about the third guardian Dongpul, who went along with the third young lord, and the first guardian tells him that he is one of the strongest of the ten masters in the council of elders. The demon lord wonders if he is Dongpul, who appeared as a jackal in front of him, and wonders if he could rage the mountains. Meanwhile, Hajin enters the forest's heart and feels the terrifying kai in the wind, which gets stronger the closer he goes to the heart. It is getting hard for him to walk straight, and the kai he is sensing is similar to that of the demon lord. He is trying to walk, and even though he enveloped himself in demonic energy, he is still suffering internal injuries and the blood is getting out of his mouth, and at this rate, he will not last longer. He takes out the turbid elimination herb that will surpass his demonic energy and uses his stealth technique, and as soon as he takes it, its effect spreads all over his body. He feels lighter, and the wind is blowing right through his body. And this is the dark shadow arts dark god, the phantom. At this rate, he can reach the heart within the period of the medicinal effects of the turbid elimination herbs wear off. Suddenly, he slips and falls to the ground. He notices a mysterious, clever-looking fox and is surprised to see it. He wonders what he is doing there. He remembers Donpul told him that the deeper he went, the stronger beasts would appear, but he got a little fox there. But according to where he is right now, he should not let his guard down, but it looks so cute that he wants to pet it. But he continues his journey, reaches the end, and thinks this is smaller than he thought. He touches one of the spiritual bamboo, and the spiritual kai emitting from it is tremendous, and he can sense the kai there is the most concentrated. If he purifies just three of them, he might be able to become the strongest martial artist in terms of internal energy, but he is not capable of absorbing three and thinks he should just take one for now. Suddenly, he notices a bamboo shoot there and the kai of this is pure, and he will be able to take it without having to use the purification technique, so he tries to take it out of the land. In this process, he makes a lot of noise, which causes the fox to wake up. Meanwhile, Hajin starts eating bamboo shoots, but he doesn't feel kai flowing in his body except for some warmth in his chest. After that he takes out his sword and strikes a bamboo, but it doesn't cut, and he thinks his sword is weak. He strikes another bamboo with his full might, but gets angry when it doesn't affect the bamboo. After that, he emits his sword aura and strikes the bamboo, and this time, it cuts into two pieces. He is surprised that it is so hard, feels like steel, and can be used as a weapon. Suddenly, the fox appears beside him, and he gets scared to see it and jumps backward. He asks him when he woke up and wonders how he appeared there as he was distracted by the spiritual bamboo, but should have noticed it was there. 
After some time, he gets back to Dongpo, brings spiritual bamboo along with him, brings that fox with him, and tells him that it followed him all the way there. He tells him that he found it sleeping in the middle of the solitary bamboo grove, and when he tried to pet it, it almost bit his fingers off. He then uses the boundless technique to purify the bamboo, because carrying it to the city garden is very hard. Suddenly, he is shocked to see that the bite marks are gone, and Dongpo tries to attack the fox, saying it dares to put its teeth on the young lord. He asks him to let him go, asks if he is going even after animals now, and asks him to come to him. The bamboo is too big to carry back so he will purify it. He uses the boundless technique to purify it, and Dongpo thinks that technique is always amazing to watch. In a flash, all the impurities disappear, and the air is clean. Dongpo is surprised to see him as he doesn't look like a youth in his twenties, but he is like an experienced pugilist who has lived for many decades. He has done its purification, and the sap inside this spiritual bamboo is the best elixir there. He asks Dongpo to drink it first, but he asks him how he dares to drink this precious water. Hajin gets bored and asks him if he is not tired of being so humble all this time, and Dongpo says it's only right that he is the only one to drink this. Hajin asks him if he is going to be like this all the time, and he says they have developed a bond and asks him to drink it hurriedly. He has saved his life enough time to deserve this, and he feels bad saying he should give him all of this, but he is only giving him half. He works hard and is stuck in a place like this from the start. Dongpo bows before him and promises to protect him until his duty ends. Hajin asks him to stop saying this and asks him to drink it already, but he gets emotional and says even when his duty is over, he will never forget this great favor he has given him until the day he dies. Hajin gets bored of his oaths and forcefully puts the sap in his mouth, and when he is done with it, he feels something coming this way. Soon, all the beasts of the solitary bamboo grove crowded around them, so Hajin hurriedly took all Kai to drink to boost his stamina. He asks Dongpo if he has memorized this place, and he ensures that he has fully memorized it. They decide to run away from there when he is surprised to see the fox still sleeping there and thinks he can't leave it behind when it follows him all the way there. He orders Dongpo to carry it in his arms and run to ensure it doesn't get hurt. Meanwhile, a Zinxing appears from a side and jumps upon him to attack him. Dongpo asks him to step aside, and he will cut them off, but he punches him, saying when he says something to him, then he has to obey him. Dongpo is shocked at such a powerful fist aura and thinks what an amazing martial arts power he has. He asks him to watch out since there is a lotus behind him, and he is coming to attack him. He uses the heaven-splitting triple slash and cuts the Zinxing into parts. He uses his Assassin King's ultimate technique, which he has to hide while practicing demonic arts. Now, it is the time to inhibit himself from the kind of martial arts he uses for the sake of training. On the other side, the Demon Lord learns that the Jackal, the owner of the solitary bamboo grove, abandoned its spiritual ground and came out. He can see the third young lord through his demonic judgment pavilion and observes that after surviving Kai blockage, he has changed and become a completely different person. The essence of the third he saw in the demonic judgment pavilion is death. Now he is killing all the beasts of the solitary bamboo grove. Soon he kills all the beasts present there, and the demon lord wonders what the jackal has seen in the third young lord. Now he is glad that he called him to the demonic judgment pavilion. At the same time, a huge tiger appears in front of him. He is surprised to see this beast and wonders if he is the leader of the solitary bamboo grove or something. Suddenly, the leopard rushes to attack him, and he dodges it, saying he is attacking him when he is saying hello. He thinks he doesn't like this forest at all, and he uses the technique of grasshopper ascension and is taking his head on. If he combines the demonic arts, a simple footwork technique like grasshopper ascension can also become a well-executed attack. He defeats the beast and is a bit disappointed because he thought he was supposed to be one of the strongest in the solitary bamboo grove. He asks him to stop pretending and come back out since he doesn't have much time today, and the leopard comes out to attack him furiously. It has gotten faster than before and attacks him at full speed. Hajin falls back to the ground at a distance, and he is surprised to see that they are in the group. He then gets up angrily and asks if they have a death wish. One of the beasts rushes towards him to attack, and he thinks that attack just now was ridiculously powerful and if he takes another one of those attacks, he might just get to meet King Yan in the underworld. However, he has had to taste all the beasts there at least once. 
the power of his demonic arts feels different, and it's because of the spiritual bamboo, and spiritual kai from the bamboo hasn't been fully turned into demonic energy yet. The spiritual kai lessens the force of the demonic energy, weakening his demonic arts. On top of that, these leopards just keep coming to him, and he doesn't have any turbot elimination herbs left, so he can't use his stealth arts. He tries to run away, but there are some behind him, it looks like they are just attacking instinctively without reason, but they are as powerful as a peak master. He gets seriously injured and will end up dying if he drags things out. They are so fast that they do not give him time to think, and he tries to hit them all, thinking he can't get hit twice. He punches one of them and passes him out, but he doesn't have time to punch all of them one by one. If he keeps fighting them individually, he will be at this forever. They are large in number and have surrounded him from all sides, and he thinks he doesn't have any choice now. It's pointless to fight them individually, and he needs to defeat them all at once to be able to get out of there. If his demonic arts have weakened, he has to increase his demonic energy to make it stronger again. He then gathers his energy and tries to destroy them all with this attack. He uses the technique of explosive mountain blasts, and there is a sudden massive explosion there. With this, all the beasts have been defeated. Meanwhile, Donkle runs away, taking the jackal with him, and wonders what is happening in the forest where Hajin is fighting with the beasts. He feels the forest just shaking now and wonders if it happened due to the young lord. After a while, Hajin tries to get back from there but loses his path, and after using such a strong demonic art, his legs feel like they weigh thousands of tons, but he can see bamboo all around. He needs to get out of there as soon as possible. Otherwise, he might come across other beasts. Suddenly, he felt the bamboo in this place didn't contain any moisture, and all the bamboo there was like that. This is the same scene as the one at the entrance to the depths of the solitary bamboo grove, and he thinks there must be corpses of beasts nearby. Suddenly, a large serpent appears behind and rushes toward him to attack, but he sees him in time and puts his sword in its mouth. The serpent rolls his body around his arm, and he feels like his bones are breaking with so much pressure and his sword starts rusting due to its poison. The Sundered Serpent is known to cause droughts, and they are stronger than the horse beasts and Zingsing, and now he cannot get it away from him. Eventually, Dongpul appears there, stabs his sword in its mouth, and kills it. Hajin thanks him for saving his life. He is glad to see that he doesn't have any serious injuries and asks him if he can get up, and he replies that his sword almost scared him to death. Hajin asks him why he didn't leave the forest, and he asks him how a guard can leave his master behind. He says he won't leave without him. As soon as he gets up, another herd of leopards reaches there, and he thinks they reach there faster than he expected. He asks Donpal how far the exit is from there and replies that it is about two kilometers. The distance is too far to try to shake them off by running away as they will surely catch them, so he needs to end things there to get out of there. They have to leave this place together, and Hajin jumps upon them to kill all of them. He is so strong that he kills them in just one blow, and Donkpal uses his sword to kill them. After killing them all, Hajin gets so weak that he can't even stand properly, so he asks Donkpal to carry him on his back from this point on, but another herd of leopard appears there again. They both get tired and can't fight them, and there is no time to run away from them. Hajin thinks this may be the end of his life. He thinks he managed to come back alive after that horrible death, and now he can't let this life end like this. Dongpal calls him and says there is no time, and he needs to run away in the direction he came from. Suddenly, the leopard roaring at them was scared to see the jackal in front of them. Hajin asks him what he is doing there, but it emits light from its eyes, and there is a sudden flash of light in the forest. They both get unconscious, and the next morning, when Hajin wakes up, he sees the jackal sitting behind him. He gets up and wonders what happened to him and if he has died again. He is hurting all over, so he must be alive, and he asks the jackal if he did something. It jumps over his body, and he asks him to stay away from him, but he watches him with his cute little shiny eyes. He then calls Donpal to get up and do something. At the same time, at the Heavenly Demon Divine Cult capital, everyone there hails in front of the Heavenly Demon Divine Cult. All young lords are present except the third young lord. The meeting starts, and the first guardian reveals that the expected expenses for the upcoming Mara festival are about 57,000 nyong. He exclaims that it is a full 12,000 nyong more than last year, and the special strike forces are out on duty, so there should be a lot fewer attendees. 
The first guardian is curious as to how the expenses increase despite that, and he would like an explanation for that internal enlightenment facility master. One of the court ladies came forward and said she would explain that. She reveals that it is confirmed that four out of the seven families of the demon cult will be attending, with the demon sword family as the key member. The seven families of the demon cult are renowned families who have protected the sect for hundreds of years. So, she believes it is only right that they show them the cult's dignity and generosity by awarding them accordingly. She is the heavenly demon divine cult internal enlightenment facility master So Yonsum. Demon Lord replies to her that history proves the cult's dignity, and it has prevailed until now, and it will prevail for a thousand years forth. If the head of the family's heads attends the ancestral rite, then they will be honored with the six heavenly spirit brews, which the demon lord himself will make. The first guardian states that the cult's dignity and generosity are expressed through the demon lord, not money, so he orders her to decrease the expected expenses. Yonsen bowed before him and said she didn't consider this matter deeply enough and would provide a new proposal for approval before noon tomorrow. After a while, the first guardian reveals that it is all for the progress reports from the internal and external demonic heads. The demon lord assumes that the first young lord is still training, and he tells him that he hasn't yet come out of the third guardian demon hall. He then asked the second lord to come forward, and the second young lord, Guan Piam, bowed before him. The demon lord asks him if he is planning to go back to training, and he replies that martial arts is already ingrained into his everyday life. He believes it's meaningless to undergo closed-door training until the time comes for him to undergo another period of change. Everyone thinks he is so bold since he is so confident in his martial arts skills in front of the Demon Lord. The Demon Lord announces there is no need for teaching for those who know where they stand and asks him to do as he pleases. Everyone thinks this is such a compliment from someone who harshly judges martial arts. Aside from the first young master, who is still in seclusion, the second young master might be the best contender, and the second lord thanks the demon lord for the compliment. Next, he asks the fourth lord to come forward and says he is different from a few days ago, and it seems like he has been working hard. However, he says the fourth lord is late, and if he wants to overpower others, he must throw himself into the training, and then some more. The fourth lord bows before him and promises him to keep his instructions in mind, and he thinks the demon lord always asks him to devote himself. He believes what he has to focus on right now isn't martial arts, but expanding a force of supporters, he just needs to keep doing what he has been doing. After that, the demon lord calls the fifth lord, and the heavenly demonic divine cult's fifth young lady Ju Xioyun comes forward and pays her respects to the demon lord. The demon lord appreciates her and says there is a limit to how much her current martial arts can boost her talents and asks her to go with the elder court master after this meeting. The second and fourth lords get jealous to see her getting praised by the demon lord. He asks her to choose one of the ten great demonic arts and Suoyun says she will never forget this generosity. The fourth leader wonders if he needs to change his plan toward the fifth lady since he just praised her. It is revealed that the sixth is supposed to attend the Mara festival with the patriarch, and the demon lord calls the seventh and says it seems like she has neglected her health. She is the heavenly demonic divine cult seventh young lady, Ki Yeoman, and the demon lord says the cult is not a place for spoiled children, and she wouldn't be in this state now if she was just stronger. He advises her to work harder and asks her if she is afraid of death, but she doesn't seem to be in good health and is about to cry. The demon lord exclaims he has never taught any of them to rest, and if they really want power, then they shouldn't be bound by their limits. He then says the third young lord is late and orders the first guardian to bring him. Suddenly, the door opened, and the third young lord, Sior Yang, heard the scared lord's call. Sior Yun thinks she heard that the third young lord has recovered, but he has lost his martial prowess, and the fourth is shocked to see that he is already out of the solitary bamboo grove. The third lord greets the demon lord, and he seems impressed by his appearance. He feels a dense and luxuriant demonic energy and wonders how much training he has undergone during this period for him to be unconsciously boiling over with demonic energy like that. He praises him with the word excellent, and everyone is shocked to hear such a compliment from the demon lord. That's the highest praise the demon lord has ever given, and he asks him about the solitary bamboo grove and asks him if it is a good place to get a breath of fresh air. Hajin replies it was surprisingly refreshing and thinks he has experienced an entire life's worth of weird things in there. 
The demon lord gets up and asks him to follow him, and Hajin is shocked at why he asks him to come with him. He wonders if his reply is rude, and the demon lord orders the first guardian to take care of the rest. The royal meeting ends with his departure, while Hajin wonders if he will send him a more terrifying place since he survived the solitary bamboo grove. After a while, the guards are discussing the recalculation of the budget, and Yoon says things are going to get busier for everyone too. One of the elders asks her why the general strategist didn't attend today's meeting. She replies that he has always been busy, but she doesn't think he is busy because of the Mara festival. She heard the Northern Orthodox sects have started an interesting business recently, and it's probably because of that. The man says regardless of where they are from, he has never come across a sane person who claims to be from an Orthodox sect, and they are probably up to something pointless again. Meanwhile, a man approaches them and asks about the Third Lord. He says it was his first time seeing the Demon Lord give such high praise. They heard he was broken by Kai blockage, but it doesn't look like that ever happened. The fourth lord is getting jealous and thinks not only has he come back alive, but he has got the attention of everyone too. He thinks he should have killed him when he was suffering from Kai blockage. On the other side, the demon lord takes him to a cozy garden, and he thinks it doesn't fit the vibes of the demonic cult. After a while, the demon lord asks him to sit, and he sits thinking he survived eight months in that hellish solitary bamboo grove and did everything he told him to do, so he hasn't done anything wrong. He then offers him some alcohol and says he has yet to learn the Black Dragon Mountain moving technique, and he wonders what that is. He can't even ask what that is in this kind of atmosphere, and he can't even drink because it's so uncomfortable. The Demon Lord says he has mixed something in his true demonic art, and Hajin is shocked at what he saw through his martial arts. The Demon Lord says it seems to be a martial art from the Buddhist sects, and Hajin is shocked that he can tell that just by looking at him. He knows that he's strong, but he is actually able to see through one's martial arts just by looking at them, and he wonders if he has modified the true demonic art without asking. He gets scared and thinks he is going to be sent to a place much worse than the solitaire bamboo. But the demon lord praises him and says he is impressed by him. He says it's not easy to create a martial arts technique that's higher in level than the ten great demonic arts. However, being complimented by the demon lord so suddenly is making him shy. He exclaims that he tried many things but found them to be the best for getting stronger, and the results are rather good. The demon lord says he didn't think far enough ahead and says the demonic art may be lacking in power and impact, but as a foundation, it's the best technique of their cult. He asks Hajin if he is given a bit more thought and wouldn't have had to modify it with any other martial arts. He exclaims the third lord has made a flower bed in a place where a tree should have grown, and he wonders what the lord is saying since he said earlier that he was excellent. After a while, the demon lord says his martial arts are fine since he has achieved good results and asks him to leave. Hajin wonders. First, he pours him a drink, and now he wants him to go and is unable to understand why he even called him there. If he wanted to blabber on about his martial arts, then he should have sent him a letter. Anyhow, he gets up and takes his leave, and the demon lord asks him to take a bottle with him. It's a reward for his good work, and he thinks he never thought that the third lord would mix in Buddhist arts to create a new art. He wonders if the third will surprise him again next time, and if this happens, then this winter will be an interesting one. After a while, when he is leaving in a carriage, he thinks he can't breathe when he is with the demon lord. The more he thinks about it, the funnier this seems. He is the demon lord, but he gives him a half-drank bottle of alcohol instead of a new one, and Gonpal grabs the bottle and says this is the Six Heavenly Spirit Brew. He tells him that this is something only the most honorable martial artists in the cult can drink, and asks him if the Demon Lord gave this to him by himself. Hajin shockingly asks him what is so great about this, and he reveals that the Six Heavenly Spirit Brew is the cult's highest grade liquor and something enjoyed by the past and current Demon Lords. It is a special drink that is bestowed upon those who have accomplished great deeds, and just getting to drink this is great glory and honor. Moreover, the demon lord himself made this, and it is a drink that even money can't buy. Hajin is surprised to see that he is a real fan of the demon lord. He asks him to drink together when they return, but he states that his duty is done once he escorts him to his residence. He needs to return to the court of elders and says it was an honor to work with him. Hajin asks him if he is fine with not drinking this, and he asks him to give him some time to think about it. 
After some time, he is finally back to his home, and it's nice to see this place again after such a long time. Suddenly, he is surprised to see the jackal beside him and wonders when it appears there. He thinks he will take care of it from now on. It had been a while since he saw Anqua too, but as soon as he entered the home, he felt an ominous aura that spread everywhere. He thinks someone must be there before him, and judging by the scent, it hasn't been long since they left. He also finds the way they left, and he wonders who they dare to hide in his residence. In the meantime, Anqua opens the door and is happy to see him there. She bowed before him and said the divine teachings are unquestionable, and all the demons prostrate before him, and she greeted the third young lord. He asks her to get up and says she doesn't need to do this, and she hears something bad happen to him in the solitary bamboo grove. Hajin thinks he didn't consider her enough, but she must have been waiting for him, and he asks her why she looks thinner than before. But she is just glad to see that he is okay, and he praises her work since the residence is very clean, even though he has been gone for eight months. She tells him that she drops by every day to clean so that he can return any day and feel comfortable. Hajin thinks Angua is fine then. They must have just been watching her quietly, and she states that she has yet to heat the water because she just received the news about his return. She asks him if he wants to eat something first, but he tells her he wants to shower first. He wants to clean himself from the dirt from the solitary bamboo grove. After some time, he takes a bath and feels all that tension has been relieved. He thinks about the presence he sensed when he came back. He wonders if it was the person who was glaring at him at the meeting, and the person who caused his Kai blockage, the fourth young master, Hong Yumun. Suddenly, he gets angry at him and says he is dead once he gets him. He is going to be busy once again, and he needs first to get an understanding of how the heavenly demon divine cult functions. There's nothing he knows at the moment other than the fact that the leader is the demon lord. With so little information, he doesn't have any control. He can't predict what the demon lord would do, so he's out of the question. He needs to find out who the people who will be of help to him are. He will have to bring them to his side and gain enough influence to be able to go in and out of the cult as he wishes. With that, he will be able to leave someday and gain freedom, and now at least the silver lining is that he is the noble demon lord's third disciple. No one might know what he is planning, but at least on the outside, he is of high status. He plans to climb up the social ladder higher in this life and have some fun. On the other side, a guard comes to the fourth young master and asks him to quit smoking for his health. He replies that he has been smoking quite a bit lately, but he will quit it when it is time to do so. He then asks him why he got the ones in the third young master's residence to return and thinks the fourth young master has good insight, but he can't understand his actions this time. He just keeps smoking instead of finishing the job he started, and he replies that he didn't know how the third lord would react, so he had them return. The guardian asks him if he already predicted how he would react and had planned accordingly, and he replies that he thought he knew, but he was wrong. The guard is shocked to hear that the young master just admitted to being wrong, and he states that he saw the third lord at the meeting today. It was his first time seeing him after the Kai blockage incident, and he felt much different than before. He's a lot better too, and he doesn't know what happened in the solitary bamboo grove, but he seems to have recovered his martial arts too. However, the reason he ceased the plan isn't that he regained his martial arts, but he felt that he looked like the third lord he knew, but it felt like he was looking at a different person, like he was a whole other person. He felt his eyes were looking at him as if he knew everything that he had done. He says he is not doing this just because he recovered his martial arts and got a bit stronger, but he needs to reorganize his thoughts about himself. The Guardian thinks he is not speaking the truth right now and is confused by the change in the third young master. He then asks him what the subordinates are doing after being ordered to back off, and he tells him that they are all complaining about the cancelled plans. The fourth young master asks him to comfort them with some money, and they are as obsessed with money as the third young master is, so they will be found as long as they get money. He thinks trying to attack the third young master is not a good idea right now, and he needs to go with another plan. On the other hand, Hajin waits for Dongpol for a long time at the dinner and asks him why he is so late, but he is shocked to see so much food on the table. He tells him that Anqua prepared all this and asks him to sit down and start eating. Anqua asks him if it is really okay for her to sit down there with him and if she can eat later of her own. But he shouts at both of them asks them to stop saying weird things in front of good food and asks them to start eating hurriedly. 
After dinner, they all drank the alcohol given by the demon lord and drink a lot of alcohol. After three bottles, they are out of alcohol now, and he feels Dongpol is a bit drunk and asks him to stop drinking. But he exclaims that he is not drunk at all, and he asks Onkwa to bring more drinks for them. He then asks him permission to ask him a few questions before the drinks come, and he permits him to ask whatever he wants. Hajin says he wants to meet someone who knows all about networks and connections within the organization. He replies that a few people are pretty knowledgeable about the organization of things. Still, with human relationships, he heard the military office's general strategist is good with networking, but it will be hard to meet him. He suggests that he should meet the internal enlightenment facility master, and at the same time, the fourth young master orders the guardian to send a message to the internal enlightenment facility master, So Yonsen. He has invited her to dinner tomorrow for a conversation, while he says it's dangerous to contact the internal enlightenment master so rashly. Considering her personality, she will try to avoid interfering in the conflict between disciples and suggests he buy her resentment instead if he rushes into asking for her cooperation. He warns him, saying if he makes an enemy out of the internal enlightenment facility master, it would be of great detriment to him. The fourth young master knows about these circumstances but wants to take risks. Now that the lynx has changed into a viper, so they have to change their weapon. The next morning, Angua is cleaning the floor and thinks her young master drank so much last night, but now he seems fully fine and is training very hard. She is watching him while preparing and thinks he is just amazing and, as expected, not just anyone can be a disciple of the demon lord. Last night, Dongpul told him that the general strategist would be the expert in that, and he is the head of the military, the most powerful group in the cult. However, it is difficult for anyone other than the demon lord to meet with him, especially these days. He heard that he is even busier, so it will be very difficult to meet him. He then brags by saying the court of elders is also very good. After all, they are the ones who protect the demon lord and the cult. They are the best organization in the heavenly demon divine cult, and Hajin asked him if anyone else was familiar with the details of the interpersonal relationships there. He then tells him about So Yonsem, that the internal enlightenment facility master will definitely be well versed in that. She has great power as she takes care of finances and will probably have good information on the relationships between people. However, he doesn't think they would tell him anything easily and leaking information containing personal views is taboo. After that, Dongpul asked him why he was asking him about this. Meanwhile, Enkwa brings drinks for them and they change the topic. Now he thinks about So Yonsem's internal enlightenment but as Dongpul said, dealing with her won't be easy. Someone who is the head of a facility that deals with finances is bound to have a lot of authority, and things might go wrong if he approaches her rashly. But he is worried about Forth, who is blatantly targeting him with his subordinates even within the cult, and he is mistaken when he thinks he will return to a safe life once he is back from the solitary bamboo grove. Whether he is in the heavenly demon divine cult or outside it, there will be people who are after his neck, and he needs people who will have his back and be on his side. He has learned from his previous life what happens when he fights alone without any friends. He is training very hard and is breaking the stones, while Angua is tired of cleaning the floor and wonders when she will finish it. After a while, Hajin gets tired, and it may be because there are a lot of things on his mind, and he is not supposed to leave any marks like these behind. In the meantime, Dongpul enters there and asks him if he is training. He offers him the sword he mentioned, which is similar in length to the one he used to use. He opens the sword, and there is a huge amount of energy in the air. Hajin likes the sword and thanks Dongpul for bringing something good for him. After that, he says he is going somewhere to make his future, and the jackal is also with him. He asks Dongpul if he would like to come along if he is not busy. On the other side, at the high-class spring flower pavilion, the fourth young master welcomes So Yonsem to his house for dinner. He requests her to come and tells her that he has asked for the most valuable dishes, but he doesn't know if they're to her taste. Later, they start the conversation, and she tells him that the spring flower pavilion is under his management, and she knows best how good the food there is. The fourth lord laughs and says he didn't know he invited the owner of this place there and played host instead. The servants serve them the food, and she asks him the reason he invited her there, and he exclaims that there's no particular reason. He just wanted to buy her a meal since she always worked so hard for the cult. 
he observes her quietly and thinks she is a woman who's endured decades in this battlefield called the Divine Cult and climbed up the ladder to the position of Internal Enlightenment Facility Master. She has strong self-esteem and knows her values well, and he thinks he needs to act carefully as with the general strategist, it's not easy scoring a meeting with her. After some time, all the servants leave the room, and Yonsim asks him to tell the reason why he called her there. He comes to the topic and says he needs her help, but she gets up thanking him for the gift, and says she will see her around. The fourth lord asks her if his request makes her uncomfortable, but she says she doesn't take sides when it comes to candidates. She doesn't know about the other organizations, but she cannot endorse such actions and her facility manages the internal affairs of the entire cult, and if they don't keep a neutral stance, the cult will be established. The fourth master thinks even if she is the internal enlightenment facility master, it's just one of many organizations of the cult, and he expected her to know this. He takes his drink on the table and says she seems to be mistaken. He is only asking her to lend a hand and is not asking her to side with him. She replies that there is not much difference between these two statements, and he exclaims that he knows how important the internal enlightenment facility is. She then asks him to remember that he will not endorse any candidate, and he states that such a statement is not written in the cult's laws though. She says her statements are expressions of loyalty to the cult, and he suggests she change her mind on the matter, but she takes her leave thanking him for the meal. He calls her from behind and says he heard she needs the green turtle four-leaved clover, and says it's a very rare herb and it can't be found in even Yunnan, where most of the cult's herbs come from. He heard it's an herb that one can hardly find even near the eastern seas, and he will give it to her if she needs it. She turns back and asks him how he knows about that, and the fourth young master asks her if this is so important to her. She inquires him about the answer, but he demands something in return for the answer and says he doesn't make deals that make him lose out. She asks him if he is threatening him, and the fourth master asks how he can threaten her, the internal enlightenment facility master. It's just that he happens to be in a difficult situation, so he hopes that she understands. One needs to offer something, and the other wants to have a smooth negotiation, and he believes the green turtle four-leaf clover is a good example of that in this case. She gets ready to hear him out at least one time and asks him to say what he wants. He exclaims that he wants something that could be considered a favor between friends and wants to give a secret order to a servant. He asks her if she knows a servant named Angwa, and she says she is a servant who works in the third young lord's residence and requests her to have a report on what the third young lord has been doing for three months. She asks him if he is planning to do something to him, and he asks her not to ask questions that cannot be answered. She states that he asked her for a difficult favor first and asked if it was a difficult request. She asks him what they will do if she gets caught reporting on his daily activities, and he says all she has to do is not get caught. She just needs to tell Angwa to go on with her daily life as usual and send a simple letter after the day's work. Even if a problem were to occur, then the solution is simple. He states that the truth is as empty as tobacco smoke, and if they were to get rid of the tobacco pipe, then no one would know who the smoker was. When Yonsim refuses to do this for him, he asks if he has asked for something very big from him. She tells him that she doesn't even know what kind of person Ankwa is, and she can't have her spy on someone for him. He then asked her to change it to someone else, someone she could trust. She is about to say something, but he interrupts her and says he knows she can do anything as long as she decides to. He asks her for the last time if she can do this, but she stays silent, and he takes her silence as consent. Suddenly, they are shocked to see Hajin already present there and listening to their conversation. He asks the fourth young master how long he will drink with these cheap cups and says he has cheap alcohol, but his cups are clean. They are shocked to see him there and wonder what he is doing there, and he asks him if he is going to drink from those old dirty cups or if he will come to drink with them. The fourth young master asks him why he has come there, and he replies that he struggled quite a bit looking for her and he was wondering where she might be. She bows before him and pays her respect to him, and Hajin says she doesn't need to be formal. The fourth master comes forward and asks him what he is doing there and asks his guards to take him outside since he is entertaining a precious guest. He replies that he has come there to look for the facility master and asks him to calm down, but he says it is insulting to interrupt them so suddenly. 
He ignores them and asks Yonism to join him for a second round of drinks, but she apologizes to him and says she has already accepted the fourth young lord's invitation. He then asks her to join him for a second round after this meeting and she wonders what he is planning to do. He asks her if she needs the green turtle four-leaf clover. He exclaims that there are usually two reasons why someone would need the green turtle four-leaf clover. One is when it is necessary to rapidly reduce the concentration of yin kai due to excessive depletion of yang kai, and the other is when one is inflicted with nine yin meridian failures. However, both of those situations can be resolved with herbs other than the green turtle four-leaf clover. He exclaims that there is no way someone like the fourth young master wouldn't know that, so it must mean he is in a situation where the green turtle four-leaf clover cannot be substituted. He asks her if someone he knows was inflicted with Kai blockage from trying to learn yin cultivation, and she shockingly asks him how he knows about this. He sits on the chair and says he doesn't know what kind of state the patient is in, but unless they are on the brink of death, they don't need the green turtle four-leaf clover. It might actually be more dangerous to use that, and it might mess with the yang kai instead of just repressing the yin kai. He starts eating and says he knows she is anxious because she is worried about the patient, but there is no need to bend over backward to try and get the herb. She is shocked to see him and wonders why he is so kind and if this man in front of him is really the lord young lord she knows. The fourth young master calls him and asks if he is listening to their conversation, and he replies that he was just standing in front of the door and heard something about the green turtle four-leaf clover. He starts shouting at him and asks if he thinks this behavior is befitting of the third young lord of the divine cult. Ajin counterquestions him and asks if trying to kill his siblings behind the scenes in order to obtain sovereignty is befitting of his behavior. The fourth master asks what he is talking about and he asks him if he is asking this question because he doesn't know. He calls him a fool who can't even control his subordinates and says he can understand this much, but he doesn't need to use his cheap tricks on the youngest. She is just a barely ten-year-old child, and she says the seventh young lady looked so frail at the meeting. Yonsim is also shocked to learn that the one who made her like that was the fourth young lord, but he starts shouting and says he will not tolerate any more slander, even if it's him, the third brother. Hajin says he endured a near-death incident, so his brother should be able to tolerate some harsh remarks. Hajin says he has no proof, so there is no point in rambling on and getting up, asking Yonsim what she will do now. He says the deal is pointless now and asks her if she will stay there. She asks him if there is any way to improve the condition of someone with Kai blockage, and he asks her if she doesn't know he was inflicted with Kai blockage himself and recovered from it despite some fool's attempt at killing him by interfering with the medicine. The fourth lord shouts at her and asks if she is going to keep listening to him, and she thinks if it's the same deal, then there's no reason for her to do it with a hateful person. She thanks him for his invitation, says she will pay for her share, and leaves him saying goodbye. Hajin calls him, says he is going with his guest, and thinks his face is a sight to behold. He tells her he only has some cheap wine, and she says it's fine as long as the cup is clean. After that, the fourth young master called his guard and asked him how long the third lord was listening. He replies that he came in so suddenly, and they couldn't stop him, and he says they have no choice now that the plan went wrong. They will have to do it themselves. He wanted to avoid getting himself directly involved, but he would make him pay for this humiliation and pain. At the same time, Hajin takes her to his residence, says there's no need to think of it as some great favor, and just tells him the treatment method, excluding the explanation of martial arts. He says it won't be difficult though, and it will probably take about three days just to understand and attempt the treatment. There won't be any significant changes at first, he can't be certain since he doesn't know the patient's condition. However, with patience and determination, about half a year should be enough for the patient to regain movement. He says it depends on the effort and disposition of the patient, and if the patient's condition is not that bad, and they are talented, then they will probably be able to move around without discomfort in about half a year. She thinks this period is not short, but considering that the Blood Spirit Pavilion's physician couldn't even perform any treatment, she says she will put her doubts aside. She then asks him what he wants from her in return. On the other side, Anqua finished the cleaning and appreciated herself for her good work. Suddenly, she hears a sound on the door, thinks it is the third young lord and runs toward the door to open it. But it is the guard of the fourth young master, 
and he says she shouldn't just open the door for anyone since it could be someone she wasn't expecting. He kidnaps her, takes her to a weird place, and says he has brought her there just to ask for a tiny favor. He asks her to raise her head since he wants to show her something. He offers her a slow, corrosion-prisoned insect and reveals that it's a harmful insect that takes a human body as its host. It starts acting two days after entering the human body, and then it will enter the host's internal organs and eat whatever is in its way, causing the host to die in excruciating pain. However, if she drinks the antidote before the insect can act, then there will be no problem. One of his men has kept a sword on her neck, and she seems so scared and asks him why she is telling her about this. He states that she has to come there every other day to report on the third young lord's activities in exchange for the antidote, and she has to do this without anyone knowing. He grabs her hair and is about to put the insect in her mouth. He says she won't be in pain until she listens to his orders. She might lose her vision if the insect accidentally gets into her eye, and she is so scared she just calls her young master to save her. On the other hand, Hajin is with Yonsim, and she asks him what he wants from her. She knows that he came to see her because she wants something from him. His knowledge has saved one of her people, and she wants to show him her gratitude. Hajin thinks he saved lives before when he was living as an assassin. It was when he was killing the political enemy of the Righteous Heavenly Alliance's master. One of his men came to him and informed him about two girls who were still alive. They seemed to be subordinates of the dead. His men reached them and asked if they thought they wouldn't be discovered if they hid. Fortunately, their names weren't on the list of people to kill, and his men thought they would get some good food out of the guys. They cried for help and asked them to leave them, and his men said they should be grateful that they didn't kill them. They were about to kill them when Hajin reached there and asked them to stop and let the kids go since their mission was over. His men asked him what he was doing since they could get a lot of money after selling them. He exclaimed that the mission might be over for him since he killed those who needed to be killed, but they got them as a reward and asked him to stay out of there. He said Hajin killed his best friend's wife and children without even blinking an eye, and now he is suddenly being kind to some random girls. He then turns toward the girl and is about to attack her again, while Hajin gets furious and kills the man. In a while he killed both of his companions and saved the girls. He then asked the girls to run and told them that there was a village about 10 kilometers east of there. He didn't know when he might change his mind, so he asked them to hurry up and get out of sight. One of the women asks him why he is pretending to be kind when he killed their family in front of them. She asked him to kill them too because they couldn't thank them if he saved them. She shouts at him, saying he is no different than those people. At that time, he knew that it was hypocrisy because they were killing their families in front of them and then paying their savior. She cursed him that he would never live happily even after his death, and it wasn't that he was sad to have been insulted after saving them. It just felt like this was all his life was going to be, and the life he was leading already felt like hell. At present, he says there is indeed something he wants from her, but now he will give it up. She is surprised to hear that he is giving up on something he wanted earlier and is now giving her this precious knowledge for nothing. She asks him why he is doing her such a huge favor, and Hajin replies that it's a little difficult to explain. He exclaims that she must have been trying to obtain the green turtle four-leaf clover because they were someone important to her, and he thinks that person would be bad. Knowing that he doesn't want to make a deal using someone's life, it will be too cold of him to ask for payment. She is shocked at him and thinks the third young lord used to be the worst of all, and now she feels like she is talking to a soft-hearted newbie merchant rather than the ruthless third young lord of the divine cult. She is so confused and says she doesn't understand why he is giving her such a huge favor. Besides, he has never even met that person. He pours some drink into the glass and says in this world, people can kill others they have never met, so what's the matter with saving someone he has never met? However, drinking with her has made him feel better, and he also exclaims that he didn't think she would meet with the fourth young lord. It's refreshing to get one back at someone who has been sharpening his blade behind his back. She thinks it's a given that successor candidates will fight and betray each other, but no one would say it openly, even if one has such thoughts. She thinks he wants something else from her because he was cold, vicious and unforgiving before that. The third young lord is never satisfied with anything less than first place, and she wonders what has caused so much change in him. She wonders if he has changed because of the Kai blockage or the solitary bamboo grove. 
He then says if she wants to give something in return, she should often serve some light dishes at the restaurant. He asks her if food management is also a responsibility of the internal enlightenment facility. He states that the food is good, but the spices are a bit too much. She ignores his discussion and asks him if he wants the information of the other young lord and ladies. Hajin thinks she is very intelligent, as expected of the master of the internal enlightenment facility. He reveals that he wants to know the information and relationships of everyone in the cult. After some time, when they were about to leave, Hajin thanked her for spending a good time with him, and she also thanked him for receiving great help from him. They say goodnight to each other and Hajin leaves with Dongpul. After that, her subordinate calls her and says if the information he gave him falls into someone else's hands, then they can be in danger. She exclaims that she is also aware of this, but she has received something much more valuable from him, and has to wish at least that much. At the same time, they both leave, and he asks Dongpul to have a third round with just two of them. Yeonsim is watching them and thinks he knows all there is to know about the major figures in the cult, but he just met someone who destroyed that confidence. She wonders what the third young lord wants to do and where he is heading. She orders her man to report her if there is any news about the third young lord. The following day he reads the extensive documents from So Yonsum, including details of the traits of the prominent figures of the cult and their secrets. However, he is taking this information with a grain of salt as they are just subjective evaluations from one perspective, but even if just half of these are true, then it is fascinating. On the surface, it looks like a vertical organizational structure in which all facilities are loyal only to the orders of the Demon Lord. However, according to So Yonsim's investigation, that is not the case, and she has recorded all of the veiled fights over the struggle to expand influence and all of the alliances, betrayals, and grudges. The disciples are no exception in this struggle, even though they are said to be independent of the divine cult's system of authority. After a while, he finds the name of the Berserk Demon squad leader, thinks this guy sounds interesting, and decides to read more closely from there. In the meantime, Ankwa appears there and asks him about the meal, and when he tastes the food, he feels that it tastes different from usual. She replies that they have been procuring ingredients that are milder in taste recently. He remembers he was the one who asked Yonsum to do this, and thinks she is someone who remembers even such a trivial matter. Angua also offers food to Jackal and calls him Mr. Fox. Hajin asks her why she is calling him Mr., and he replies that it is because he doesn't have a name yet. He also realizes that they have been together for quite a while, but he hasn't given it a name. He asks Angua for her opinion, and she replies that if it has big ears, then they can call him Big Ears. After that, he suggests he keep his name Big Tail, but he doesn't like it and says he will name him himself. Since he is a golden fox, he named him Goldie, and he tells Ankwa that the names she came up with are very bad. He likes the name he kept for him and calls himself a naming genius. He then asks her to eat dinner by herself since he might not be back for tonight. On the other side, Dongpul is training and thinks the third young master's martial art is different from his. He is quick to change strategies and can think outside the box. He thinks this might be why the third young master became stronger so quickly. He is practicing when the second young leader appears there and praises him for his martial arts. He is impressed that he destroyed a boulder from such a distance using only his basic technique, but Dompel says he is still lacking. His name is Gi Yang, and he states that it looks like he has grown quite a bit while working for the third young lord. Watching him train made him forget that he had something to tell him, and he told him that the third young lord stopped by the guardian court. He was looking for him, so Gi Yang told him he was training, so he left immediately. Also, he said that he would be attending the Berserk Demon Squad's gathering today. Gi Yang tries to say something more, but Dongpul runs away from there to follow the third young master, thinking he should not get involved with the Berserk Demon Squad. The Berserk Demon Squad has a name that indicates all the insane demons it is made up of. They adopt a fighting style that shows no mercy and no neither compromise nor conversation. They are the most terrible squad of the divine cult, and they are known for never stopping until their enemy is ripped to pieces. On top of that, they don't differentiate between friend and foe. Today, they have a get-together after a long time. One of them forcefully opens the gate of a restaurant, but they are shocked to see no one there except one man. He calls his owner and asks if they are not open yet. He is Berserk Demon Squad's second leader, Chagwang, and calls Hajin repeatedly, but he ignores them and remains busy playing with Goldie. 
He comes near him and asks why he is not answering or if he doesn't know that they have rented out this entire place today. Hajin replies if they rented out or the owner kicked out everyone because he was scared of them. He asks them to show him an official notice saying that they have rented this entire place, but Chagwang gets angry about this and is about to attack him when a girl enters there and asks him to back down. Hajin awaited her since she was the youngest and most violent of the Divine Cult's squad leaders. She is the leader of the Berserk Escod, Yui Hongron, and she asks Chagwang to stop behaving rashly. She then asks Hajin if he knows who they are, and he replies it would be harder for him not to know who they are. He calls them a bunch of crazies who don't know any manners, and she realizes that he doesn't seem to be of ordinary status. He also doesn't look like someone who would go around picking fights recklessly, and Hajin asks her to sit down if she has something to say. She asks him why she listens to him, and Hajin says looking up at her is making his neck hurt. She reveals her demonic energy, and he observes that her demonic energy is pretty good. Meanwhile, the owner appears there and asks them to step aside since he has brought all the best dishes for their esteemed guest. He calls the squad leader and asks her not to threaten his guest, but Chagwan puts the sword on his neck and asks him to repeat what he just said. He asks him to give him 30 reasons why they can't touch him, and then he will let him live. The owner reveals that he is the Divine Cult's third young lord and the disciple of the Demon Lord. After some time, the restaurant is full of people who are all demanding food from the owner. Meanwhile, the squad leader is with Hajin at a table and asks him why the third young lord has come there, and she hears that he is suffering from Kai blockage. Chagwang is also sure that he was in a state of Kai blockage when they left and thinks he must be weak now. They can take action as soon as possible as he gets on the squad leader's nerves, but the other man forbids him to do so because he is the third young lord and is a potential successor. He wonders what he can accomplish with a body that came back from the gates of hell, and even if he is a successor, he is of no use because he is so weak. Chagwang states that if a potential demon lord candidate were to be beaten up by a combat squad, then he can't even say anything for the sake of his reputation. Meanwhile, the squad leader asks him if he already knows that they are going to gather there for dinner. He asks him what he wants from her, and Hajin is glad that she gets straight to the point. He says he doesn't like to beat around the bush either. He asks her to turn herself into the penal law hall, which is the chance he gives her. She understands what he is talking about and gets angry about this, releasing her demonic energy. Hajin says even if she turns herself in, it will just count as a minor offense and result in self-reflection or a pay cut, and it won't be a big deal, and the penal law hall won't be able to lock her up over such a crime. She is surprised to see him, who appeared out of nowhere, and she wonders how much he knows about them. She says she has not committed any crimes. He then asks her why the berserk demon Eskode spends a thousand yang on swad expenses every month, and they are number one in cruelty, not strength. Even the Heavenly Demon's first army uses only 800 nayan a month, but they are spending more than a thousand. It is revealed that So Yonsim's internal enlightenment facility manages the cult's finances, and the information she gives him includes budget records that show the size of the combat squads. Last night, he read about the Berserk Demon Squad, and there is no way a small squad like hers is made up of a group of uncontrollable crazy people that come and go and can have a larger budget than the cult's main army. That must mean they are receiving extra money from someone else other than the budget from the cult, and there is only one person in the cult who would do such an underhanded thing. So, he assumed that she just happened to receive money at a dinner or something somehow and said if she turned herself in, he wouldn't make a big deal out of it. But in return, she has to tell him the name of the person who gave her that money. She smiles, thinks she wasn't his target from the start, and feels herself being treated like a chess piece in the power struggle between the young lords. She gets up and says she doesn't know where he came across those false rumors, and if he is there to pressure her, then he must bring proper proof. Hajin asks him if a crime without evidence is considered a crime, and if it is her hobby to make things more complicated than they have to be. She states that the third young lord is the one who made things cumbersome and gets up, saying she is taking her leave now. Hajin calls her and says she distributed all the money from the fourth young lord to her squad members, which is why her squad expenditure is rather hefty. Everyone knows that she can't spend like that with just the budget she is given, and threatens her, saying all of her subordinates will be arrested for accepting money from unidentified sources if they were to investigate their expenditure. 
If that happens, the Berserk Demon Squad will either be reorganized or disbanded, and she asks him if he wants to see this through till the end. He observes with her tone that things will be fine as long as she turns herself in and asks her what she will do now. She replies that she can't leave cuts on an influential person like him, and he thinks she fell for his plan. Suddenly, Chagwang appears from the side and rushes to attack him, but before he can reach him, he uses his demonic energy and pushes him back away. He falls back to the ground at a distance, and Hajin wonders if he used too much force on him. Their squad leader gets furious and says she doesn't want any violence today because it has been long since her squad has had a party, but he crosses the line. She furiously rushes toward Hajin to attack, and he tries to dodge her, thinking she is fast and sharp, admiring her and thinking she is pretty good. She states that it's the first dinner party they have had in a year, and she can't forgive anyone who disrupts a joyous day like this, even if that person is the disciple of the demon lord. Hajin asks her to watch her words, and it's not him who ruined the dinner, but it is her stupid subordinate. Meanwhile, everyone starts watching them and wonders why their leader and the third young lord are fighting. She again jumps toward him to attack and says he should have just stayed home to reset if he has recovered from Kai blockage. She asks him why he came there to mess up things. But Hajin not only dodges her attack but punches her back, saying she should pay attention to what is happening in the cult. She falls back and Hajin is happy about the success of his counterattack. She gets up, saying she doesn't care if he is the third young lord. She threatens him, saying he is dead now, and he confidently asks her to come and see who wins the fight. Conversely, the fourth young lord is informed about his activity, and his subordinate tells him that the situation is not good. He thinks the third is probably after him, and he is sure he is trying to put a wedge between him and the berserk demon squad leader. The man asks him if he should do something about this, but he asks him not to worry because he trusts the squad leader since she doesn't have a loose tongue. He smiles and thinks they should be fighting because he knows the third won't win against the squad leader. Moreover, even if it is the third young master or Hongrone, neither will come out of that fight unscathed. He shows him the green jade demon arts the berserk demon squad leader is said to have mastered, and she throws an attack toward Hajin using the technique. He tries to tell her that they are in a building, but she doesn't listen to him, and the attack gets out of the building, causing destruction. He heard that once she gets mad, she will be blinded with rage, and now he sees that the rumors were right about her. He tells her he is fine fighting, but asks her not to damage other people's property. The restaurant owner gets unconscious over the destruction of his restaurant, and Hajin asks her to use the money from the fourth lord for compensation. But she again attacks him, asking what is so funny that he is smiling, and Hajin thinks it was quite a strong punch he faced just now. Her follow-up attack is also quite robust, he is just trying to dodge her attacks individually. She then jumps upon him to attack again, and he feels that she has become even more robust and is almost too strong for him to just be on the defense. He can now understand why the fourth young lord gave her money because her combat abilities are worth it. However, she doesn't seem like the type who can be swayed by money. She exclaims that it has been long since she had such an exhilarating fight, and he wonders why she accepted his money. Everyone was enjoying their fight, and she called her squad to listen up to them. She states that their previous dinner party has been ruined because of her personal affairs, but she will take care of this even if it means she gets sent to the penal hall. She orders her squad to enjoy their dinner and not to focus on their fight, and they all cheer up for their leader. Hajin smiles and thinks the entire squid lives up to the squad name, as expected of the heavenly demon divine cult. It's full of exciting people. He calls them a heartwarming organization and wonders if he is too naive. He didn't think someone this talented would have taken shady money from the fourth young lord. He can forget about manipulating her and thinks he should beat her up enough that she starts listening to him. In the meantime, Goldie enters and he shouts at him about what he is doing there since he told him to stay outside. The squad leader asks him if he is getting distracted when she is standing right there and prepares an attack toward him, saying he underestimates her. Hajin observes she is going to use palm force again, and he tries to stop her for Goldie. He asks her to attack him in a little bit and tells her that Goldie is his cute little friend, and they can continue the fight once he goes somewhere safe. She doesn't listen to him and uses his palm attack on Goldie. He uses the heavenly met six power technique, second hyper vision, and catches Goldie. But it's too late for him to dodge the attack, so he decides to block it with his body. 
there is enormous destruction and the squad leader laughs at him, saying that is the power of the berserk demon squad leader. She thinks the disruption has been resolved, so she orders her men to have the dinner party for real. She asks everyone to enjoy their heart's contents while Hajin calls him and says he can't forgive her. She exclaims that his mouth is fine and orders her men to carry the third young lord to his residence. One of her men heads toward him and asks him to go home instead of just lying there, and is making fun when Hajin grabs his face and throws him toward the others. The squad leader also gets hit by his attack and falls to the ground. He angrily asks her how she dares to land his hands on his little Goldie. He releases his demonic energy and asks her not to be mean to animals. Meanwhile, Dongpul reaches there, but the fight has already started, and he thinks he needs to get the young master out of there before the fight gets any worse. Meanwhile, the squad leader is shocked to see that he is still fine, and she wonders how this can be possible since he got hit directly with the green jade demon arts. She didn't hold back at all with her demonic arts, but she was shocked to see him standing there. Dongpul appears and asks him if he is okay and needs to get out of there. He asks Dongpul not to stop him, and he is not leaving this place until he has wrecked them. He asks the squad leader if she knows who he is, but she replies that she doesn't care about this. She asks him to get out because he is not part of this. In the meantime, Hajin reaches and punches her face with his full might and throws her away out of the building. She is shocked and wonders what was the attack just now because she couldn't see his movement at all. She has more than 20 years of experience in battles where she had to fight for her life, yet she couldn't even react at all. Hajin asks her if she thinks she can leave there alive after laying her hands on Goldie. She also releases her demonic energy and says she was nice to him because he is the third young lord, but now she will kill him. Dongpul tries to stop him, but she uses the berserk demon divine fist, and he is shocked to see that this crazy woman really intent on taking the young master's life. She rushes toward him and attacks, but Hajin stays there unharmed. He then asks her if she is done with her attack and pushes her away with just his fist. She falls to the ground, and Hajin says her punches are slow. She gets up and calls him a rat, but Hajin gets furious, throws a punch on the ground, and asks how dare she call him a rat. She dodges herself from falling and reaches him, saying there is no one except him there worthy of calling a rat. She exclaims that she can easily defeat someone like him with his berserk demon divine fist, and he asks what she means by someone like him. She is shocked to see that her berserk divine fist couldn't pierce his demonic energy, while he uses the time to kick her and push her back. She starts bleeding and wonders if the demon lord's disciples are all this strong, and she has never met someone this strong. He then jumps upon her to attack again, but she quickly dodges his attack. She wonders if this is how her life is going to end, and if she will die after having survived countless dangers. She is shocked that her men are watching her with such pity and thinks she looks pathetic because she can't do anything. Hajin again rushes to attack him, and she can see her death in front of her. She remembers the time when she entered the cult, and everyone was shocked to see a girl from the EU family's bloodline. The Yui family was ruined after harassing the divine cult, and no one liked her back then. She didn't care how she was treated as long as she could survive. After her family fell to ruin, she entered the divine cult, and she was put into a squad called the Berserk Demon Squad, which was said to be just a group of people the divine cult didn't care about. No one went easy on her just because she was a kid, and even there, she was ignored for being an outsider. So, she didn't go easy on anyone just because they were adult. Through countless battlefields, she killed and killed again and survived. After that, she had a battle to the death with the former squad leader and finally rose to her position as the Berserk Demon Squad Leader. The Berserk Demon Squad became a family she had to lead and protect. No one in the cult dares to speak their name lightly, but now a random boy has challenged them, and she wonders if her life is going to end. Hajin observes that she has pulled herself together while getting beaten up and admitted that she is tough. She takes out her sword and asks him not to underestimate him since she is the Berserk Demon Squad's leader. Hajin observes that her sword aura is blue and she is at the level where her sword follows her will. As a fellow martial artist who has practiced in the way of the sword, it is only right that he wields his too. He can sense Hongrone's current feelings through his hypersensation, and she rushes toward him with killing intent. She has anger, anxiety, shock, stubbornness, a sense of honor, and a loss of acknowledgement in her eyes. He knows that she is also aware that she has lost the fight. He thought she had lost her mind, 
but he guessed that she still had some sense left in her, and he decided to give her a lesson as the winner. When she comes forward to attack him, he uses the technique of steel wall hand and throws her away. She had lost the battle, and Hajin was impressed that she had pierced his steel wall hand. Even though he did it in a rush, he still uses a lot of dark shadow kai. It is stated that the steel wall hand is a hand technique in the Chronicled of the Myriad Realms. It is a skill that contradicts the explosive mountain blast, which maximizes internal power. It is a deadly technique that turns one's hand into something akin to steel to destroy everything it touches. She would be more well versed in the sword than he expected if she could pierce through the steel wall hand and injure his hand. He then exclaims that the fight was impressive, but that is where she ends. She used all she had for that sword aura earlier, and she barely managed to stand. He says that he will give her a choice. First, she will turn herself in and say that she received money from the fourth young lord, and second, she will end her life for disrespecting and attempting to murder the third young lord. She asks him to shut his mouth, and Hajin takes his sword and says she doesn't like that some random person came out of nowhere and started telling her what to do. He is about to attack her, saying he will stop talking and end this fight there, and he swings his sword. Yon is ready to face her death, but he thwarts the sword and says she has been acting like a mad dog till now, but now she looks like a gentle sheep. He asks her why she didn't dodge the attack, and she replies that she didn't have the strength to do so. He asks her if she is ready to accept her death, and she replies that the loser has to die, and that's how it goes. All the battles she has fought were a matter of life or death, and she states that she didn't live a good enough life to have regrets or anything like that. She knew that she would someday die at someone else's hand, just like everyone she had killed. Hajin comes forward and punches her face and says he will forgive her disrespect and other petty crimes with this punch. She says she won't be his obedient dog just because he spares her life. He replies that he crushes the bait on the hook himself, and the fish would never bite the hook now. He wanted to use her to pressure the fourth young lord, but they fought to the death. He then apologizes to the restaurant owner and gives him some money for the repairs. He then warns the squad leader not to steal money from him, and she also shouts at him and asks if he thinks she is some hooligan from the alleys. He replies that the hooligan is a saint compared to her and calls Dongpul to follow him. Chagwang comes to her and asks if she is okay, but she doesn't seem okay at all. She asks him to clean up a bit and orders some drinks. She always thought all the young lords were nasty cheats, but the third young lord is different. She thinks he is an idiot who has nothing but brute strength. Conversely, the fourth young lord meditates and wonders how the third young lord knew about this. He kept it well concealed that he gave the berserk demon squad leader money. They say there are no eternal secrets, but it should not have been revealed so quickly. The only person who would know about this is the facility master, and he is sure that she did this crime. She said she wouldn't interfere in the succession conflict, but this means that the third young master has changed her mind. He thinks it doesn't matter to him because he will kill him soon enough, and no one will ever see him again. His incense infused with concentrated deadly poison will seep into his lungs and paralyze his body, and he will die in agony. He thinks it is terrible that the seventh young lady hasn't improved, and she has barely eaten anything today too. He thinks this is bad because she can't even sleep if she doesn't have that incense. He also gives this to Angua and orders her to burn this at the third young lord's bedside when he is sleeping. She asks his man what that is, but he forbids her to ask unnecessary questions. She asks him how she can put something by the young master's bedside when he doesn't even know what it does and refuses to do so. He threatens him, saying after two days, the parasite in her body will begin to take action. If she doesn't take the antidotes on time, it will be unbearable. After some time, she is called by the young master, and he asks her to bring him some food for Goldie. He observes that she has been looking tired lately, but he thinks he is misunderstanding and turns toward Goldie. He thinks this animal looks strange lately and wonders why he got so upset when the squad leader tried to attack him. He believes he has become so fond of him without realizing it, and he feels they are connected. However, he thinks this is impossible that he shares Kai with a beast, but he is not an ordinary beast either. In the meantime, someone knocked at their door and said they were from Penal Law Hall and asked him to open it. Dongpul opens the gate and tells him that Penal Law Hall is looking for him. He reveals that the berserk demon squad leader went and confessed. He is shocked to hear that she confessed to having disrespected and attempted to murder the third young lord. 
He then asks her why she did this when he already told her that he forgave her transgressions with that punch. She doesn't reply to him, and Hajin asks her why she is causing all this fuss and making things annoying for him. She shouts at him, saying she is sitting there to confess her crimes. He doesn't get her point and says there is no mercy for the attempted murder of a young lord or lady, and as soon as she admits that she did that, her head would go flying. She asks him to kill her if he wants to, and he thinks she is out of her mind. He is pretty sure that he did not hit her head, and she replies that she did get struck on the head. He asks her to tell him what she thinks actually, and she replies that there's no reason for her to say to him. He observes her and asks if she is doing this because of the fourth young lord. He asks her if she is doing this to keep her promise to him, but if she were going to keep her mouth shut, she should have done that till the end. He wonders if she confessed to harming him, and starts laughing and says she is not the Berserk Demon Squad leader for nothing. He calls an officer and orders him to free the Berserk Demon Squad leader, and he surprisingly asks him why he is doing this when she confesses the crime of attempted murder. He replies that he merely taught her a lesson because he liked her, and her face is like that because he couldn't control his strength. Even if she's crazy, she is a follower of the cult, so she would never try to kill the Demon Lord's disciple. The officer agrees with him, but considering the witnesses and the situation, they can't let her free. Hajin releases his demonic energy and says the person who's involved is saying it isn't true, so why do they have a problem with this? He agrees to free the Berserk Demon squad leader. He asks her if she likes drinking, but she stays silent and doesn't answer him. He states that he will take that as a yes and asks her to come over when she has time, and they will drink together. He also asks her to bring her snacks because he can't burden his servant with more work. After that, Donkbal asks him why the Berserk Demon Squad leader did such a thing, and he tells him that she did this to live. He found out that she accepted money from the fourth young lord, but she can't admit that she took his money when she promised him she wouldn't, and she couldn't let her squad members get involved. Considering her personality, she would probably rather kill herself than have her subordinates also receive punishment. Donkbal asks him why he left the place after the fight, and she could have just not confessed and pretended it didn't happen. Too many people had witnessed the fight for that option, and the restaurant was also destroyed. Someone had to take responsibility and go to the panel law hall, or things would have worsened. Hedgen states that besides apart from him and the witness, Hongryon has another threat to worry about. The fourth young lord, Hong Yuamun, she fought the third young lord, and if the incident happened just like that, the fourth young lord would think she had taken his side. If he were to spread rumors that the Berserk Demon Squad accepted bribery, both she and her squad members would be harmed. Therefore, confessing to the penal law hall was her best option, and in that way, the fourth young lord wouldn't have any suspicions, and the other witnesses would think the incident was being taken care of. As she took all the blame, then her subordinates are safe too. But Dongpul says the charges are showing disrespect towards and attempting to murder him, the third young lord. All he has to do is say a few words and she will be dead. He asks him why she would risk her life when she doesn't know what to do. Hajin also thinks this was reckless of her, but that's probably how she has lived her life, thinking that every day could be her last. Dongpul says she left too holy to luck and Hajin says she got what she wanted. She wanted to protect her subordinates, and he says she's eccentric, but she takes excellent care of her subordinates. Donpol is surprised at how he has such insight at such a young age. Sometimes he feels like the young master is more mature and older than him. Suddenly, someone bangs on the door, and Hajin says she will break the door and asks her to come in. The squad leader enters the doorway and asks him to give the promised drink, and she also makes food to go with it. They are shocked to see that she has brought delicious food and they shockingly ask her if she made all these items. She asks him why they are shocked to see this and she is outstanding at cooking and he doesn't need to eat this if he doesn't want to. He tells Donpol that he thought she was the craziest one in the entire divine cult and asks him if he is not sure she is the best cook. He isn't aware that she can cook either. After that, she starts drinking from a bowl and states that drinking out of a small glass doesn't allow him to taste the alcohol. She observes Dongpol standing there and asks why he is not sitting. He asks him if he doesn't want to join them, then he can rest instead of standing there. He replies that he can't go because no one knows if the Berserk Demon Squad Leader will suddenly go off the rails. She says he is more loyal than she thinks and asks him if he really thinks he can stop her. 
Hajin interrupts and says that considering her state, he thinks Dongpol can trounce him, but she gets angry about this. Hajin asks him why she comes straight to his place as soon as she is freed instead of returning to rest, and he doesn't think she would go so openly. He says it will be bad for her if the fourth young lord finds out about this, and she replies that there is no time for him to worry about him. He might be in more danger than her, and she says the fourth young lord is proficient in using dirty tricks. From what she knows, more people are secretly under his control, and they are people who do anything as long as they get paid. On the other side, the fourth young lord's subordinates ask him if they should contact the true demon squad leader, and he replies that there is no need for this. If the berserk demon squad leader couldn't defeat the third young lord, it would be the same for the true demon squad leader, so it's a bad idea to call for him. He tells him that the squad leader has been freed because of the third young lord. He states that he did consider the possibility that the berserk demon squad leader has betrayed him, but he doesn't have to take care of that now. He asks him what is happening with the poison incense, and he tells him that the maid hasn't reported back to him for two days now. He picks up another insect and says he will give this to his one loyal servant, Dongpol, and hopes that he will like this. He thinks while the third young lord has been acting all high and mighty, he probably hasn't even looked into his own house, and he will show him what it feels like to be helpless. At the same time, the squad leader tells him that the fourth young lord has bought over several people with money, and some of them are after Hajin's life. He asks her why she is telling this to him, and she points toward the bowl of alcohol and says it's her payment for telling him this. He pours him some more drink, and they continue their conversation. After that, she leaves the home with Dongpo and asks him if the third young lord was always like that. He warns her just in case, but she should better hold back on any criticism against the young master in front of him. She says he is just showing them how he trains, and she says she will leave, but he says he can watch if she wants. Dongpo tells him that there is something he always says, no world more dangerous than the Murum. So, if it's a world where one can only survive by staying alert, he would rather show both his strengths and weaknesses. She wonders how his statement makes sense, and Dongpo says that is how the third young lord stays alert and on his toes. He said that he's anxious sometimes, but he also said that true freedom begins with honesty. Since his path is already destined, regardless of what others see or say, he will walk his path. The squad leader is shocked to hear such statements of honesty from someone and thinks she has never met someone like him. She didn't know someone with that kind of mindset actually existed and asked Dongpo if he was younger than them. Dongpo says age doesn't matter when it comes to learning. Meanwhile, Hajin is training and thinks even if he doesn't focus on using the heaven elevation technique now, it balances well with demonic arts. Initially, he did nothing with the heaven elevation technique, which he learned as an assassin, as he wanted to focus on the dark shadow demonic art. He thinks there's no need to throw out his assassin technique to learn demonic arts. In the first place, it was arrogant of him to think of splitting up his martial arts like that. If he wants to kill, it will be an assassin technique. If not, it will be an overpowering technique. It all depends on whom he is dealing with. At first, he thought he already knew that, but it's taken on a new meaning now that he has learned demonic arts. By learning other types of martial arts, his perspective has broadened, and now he has more ways of utilizing martial arts too. Suddenly, Dongpo claps and praises him for his training, and he asks them if they want something to help with the hangover. The squad leader says she wants a hangover drink, and Hajin is surprised to learn that she wants a drink to cure her hangover. He takes them to his home for the hangover soup and asks her to go home if she wants alcohol. Suddenly, he is surprised to see Angua unconscious there, and when he tries to get up to her, she tells him that her stomach hurts really bad. He finds out that she has internal injuries and there is something inside eating her alive. She tries to tell him that she couldn't do it as they told her to. He asks her if something happened to her, but she gets unconscious and her state is worsening rapidly, and he thinks he has to save her life first. On the other side, the first guardian tells the demon lord that all preparations for the Mara festival are complete. Even if there are any small changes they have to make, they can take care of it immediately without a problem. Demon lord appreciates him and asks him if he likes a drink that would be an honor for him. He presents him with a glass of alcohol and tells him that there is a good fenju there. When he takes the drink, the demon lord asks him about the third young lord, and he replies that he hasn't heard anything about him ever since the incident with the berserk demon squad leader. 
The demon lord says he is not asking him about his activities, but he is asking about his changes. The first guardian reveals that there is nothing worth mentioning about the third young lord at the moment. He thinks the jackal chose the third lord in a different way, but if there are not any changes in him, then it is perhaps just fate at work. It is revealed that, unlike other creatures that were manifested into reality from the imagination of the person who created the solitary bamboo grove, the jackal is a real mystical creature that repeats the cycle of life and death. When it abandons its age's body and returns to being a newborn, it absorbs all the life force in its surroundings. This is the reason it is considered one of the world's most wicked creatures. However, there is another real reason why the jackal is considered wicked. Wherever a jackal appears, war is bound to happen in that nation. Because of the legend that the jackal absorbs life force and causes wars, it is seen as the worst disaster on earth. At the same time, Hajin is treating Ankwa and feels toxic energy inside her and thinks it is surely one of the poisonous insects. Her internal injuries aren't so bad that they are life-threatening yet. However, as a young maidservant without any martial prowess, she won't be able to last long with this toxic energy in her. He decides to take out the poison insect and has to use the boundless techniques purification technique to maximize her body's healing power. He noticed that Angua had been looking anxious the last few days, but he didn't know that they had put poison insects inside her. He wonders who could have done such a cruel and despicable thing to a young maidservant like her. He uses his technique and takes out the poison insect from her body and finds out that it is the slow corrosion poison insect. They weren't just trying to harm her because this is a poisonous insect that's used to threaten someone with their life so as to enslave them. He thinks whoever is behind this was trying to threaten Ankwa into hurting him, and there's only one person who would come after him with just a despicable method. At the same time, the squad leader also finds things that say Angwa is a spy planted by the fourth young lord. She tells Dongpul about the incense and that it's the same as the one she saw in the fourth young lord's residence. The fact that this was found on the servant means something, and since she was afflicted with a poison insect, perhaps they threatened her. However, she must have known that her life was in danger, but she still disobeyed the orders, and they think the third young lord has a very loyal servant. She asks Dongpul if he is really a part of the divine cult, and there is only one reason to do all this. This is a fight for succession, and if all other disciples were to vanish, then the last one remaining would naturally become the demon lord. On the other side, the fourth young lord asks his servant Shin if he is worried about how the third young lord will react. He asks him not to worry because he is always prepared for the worst, and Shin replies he is not sure what kind of worst-case scenario he has in his mind. But if that were to happen, he would take responsibility and ask the fourth lord to abandon him. He seems relaxed and also asks him to stop worrying needlessly, and he makes plans for every possible move that the third young lord could make. He says it's about time he did something, and Shin tells him that he has placed people around the third young lord's residence. Suddenly, they were shocked to hear an explosion from outside. The third lord enters there by destroying the gate, and all the guards get injured. He shouts the name of the fourth young lord and asks him to come outside and not hide like a bug anymore. He comes outside and asks him why he is behaving like this, and he should be ashamed of himself as the young lord. He makes fun and asks him what brings him there with such a funny expression. Hajin gets angry about this and punches him with his full might. He jumps backward and exclaims he was a bit nervous because he heard that he had become a different person after waking up from Kai blockages, but now it seems like those were all false rumors. He calls him the same old hooligan, acting rashly without a care, while Hajin calls him angrily and says he will cut off the dirty hands he plays tricks with. The fourth young lord says he started this fight so he doesn't expect him to treat him with respect just because he is the Haiyang Nim. He says the third lord is no different from a corpse just eight months ago, but he is now full of himself. He uses the Serpent King's demonic art, and Hajin is surprised to see this and wonders if this is the Jioxa family's demonic art. The fourth rushes toward him at his full speed, and Hajin thinks the strength of this demonic art is in its speed and flexibility but its power is not very significant. His foot techniques are pretty good though, but he is able to dodge his attacks. Hejin is impressed by his foot techniques at this age and thinks he is a disciple of the Demon Lord for a reason. However, there's nothing compared to him, while the Fourth Lord gets angry at him and says he used quite a unique foot technique, but it means nothing to him. 
Hajin again dodges his attacks and thinks his movements are as obvious as ever, but he uses his sharp nails and penetrates them through his body. He smiles and says this is the end for him, and Hajin finds out that he had poison under his nails. He then punches him and makes him fall to the ground. He states that he has injected poison directly into his body, and if he uses his demonic energy to burn off the poison, he will burn his organs too. It will be so painful that he would want to die, but that's the only thing he can do if he wants to live, and asks him to become crippled like before and live like a corpse once more. But he is shocked to see him moving, and Hajin again appears there, saying he can't defeat him with this kind of poison. He is shocked to see that the third has nullified the snake poison of Serpent King's demonic art. Hajin thinks in his previous life, he was able to complete missions even with broken limbs and holes in his belly, and enduring this much poison is nothing for him. He then releases his demonic energy, which causes all his guards to bleed, and the fourth finds out that it's not just powerful demonic energy. This sense of alienation and terror is something he would expect to feel from seeing the Great Nine Demonic Elders. He wonders if he has reached the ultimate demon stage. Hajin comes forward and is about to attack him when the Penal Law Hall's Black Guard appears there and asks them to stop. They surround the fourth young lord, and one of them introduces himself as the seventh guard captain of the Penal Law Hall's Black Guard. They ask Hajin to come with them to the Penal Law Hall. Hajin is shocked at how they got there so quickly, and it seems as if someone knew this would happen. Shin thinks this was the preparation the fourth lord was talking about. Hajin takes a moment from the guard and grabs Shin's mouth tightly. He shows him the poisoned insect he fed Anqua and says he brought it with him because he really wanted to return it to him. He also exclaims that he doesn't need to worry about swallowing it because he will shove it deep down his throat. The fourth young lord rushes toward him and asks him to stop doing that while Shin calls him for help. Hajin called the fourth lord and said his servant was skilled with the poison so he would have an antidote for this, heal in a few days, and come with another dirty trick in his hand. He pulls out his hand and says he won't do such a meaningless thing and then puts it in his ear. Shin cries in pain and falls to the ground and asks the penal law guard to accompany him. After some time, he reaches the heavenly demon divine cult penal law hall and he wonders where they are taking him since they have already done the interrogation. This isn't the direction of the jail where squad leader Hongrion was incarcerated. He feels the poison he was suppressing with his demonic energy has begun to spread because the fourth lord was using martial arts involving poison. The incense he was using was definitely a kind of hallucinogen with poison too, and he probably trained his martial arts by fighting imaginary opponents in those hallucinations. He did hear that there are a lot of strange techniques in demonic arts, but this is quite a unique approach, and it will take him some time to really understand it. The man takes him to a room. Hajin felt two presences pass the door, and one of them was the fourth young lord. However, the other one is very vague. It's dull but clear, and he feels some unpleasant energy from inside. When he enters the door, he sees a man facing the wall, while the fourth lord sits on the chair. He asks him if he is the hall master of the penal law hall and he introduces himself as the penal law hall master Gagu. As far as first impressions go, he looks like just an ordinary person, but everything is not as it seems. His appearance is normal, and he can't feel anything unique about his energy, but that is precisely why he feels like he is not ordinary. Master Gagu asks him to take a seat and asks him if he is tired from the interrogation. Hajin replies he can't sit there and says there must be a reason why he called them both there, and he doesn't know what it is but he doesn't intend to talk to someone who keeps their inner self concealed. He states that the black guards all wear masks, but he doesn't sense any ambiguity and feels different from others. Hajin says he is wearing a mask that is a hundred times thicker than the masks the black guard wears and is keeping himself concealed. The fourth lord is unable to understand what they are talking about, and Master Gagu appreciates Hajin for his keenness. He then removes his mask using bone contraction mystical arts, and they are shocked to see that his face is changing. He shows his real face and says he is the third person even to notice his transformation. He is the real penal law hall master, and he exclaims that he was wondering how he survived eight months in the solitary bamboo grove, and it seems like his unparalleled perception played a big role. Hajin asks him to get to the main point while the fourth is still shocked at how he saw through the penal law hall master's true face. He reveals that he called both of them there because of their conflict. Hajin says the interrogation is over and the incident's been resolved. 
He asks both of them to promise that there won't be any more conflict from now on. The fourth lord says he never wanted conflict, and even if that was what he wanted, who would tell him what to do? He thinks he is the disciple of the demon lord, and there is no reason for him to take orders from anyone but the demon lord himself. He also says he has no authority to impose anything on them. Likewise, they don't have the authority to subjugate others, and he tries to use money to control a battle squad commander. The fourth lord is shocked to hear this and asks what he is talking about, but Gagu has enough evidence against him, so there is no need to deny it. The fourth leader asks him if he is threatening him right now, and he states that the penal law hall upholds the cult's laws alongside the guardian court, but they are different in nature. The guardian court focuses on communication and reception. In other words, they have no choice but to act passively. However, they are different, and they are in an organization that protects the cult. They give out punishments as they see fit and also administer judgment in exceptional cases. But as a person who is actively protecting the cult, he can give them to an experience he has never had. He asks the third young lord for his suggestion about the matter, but he is busy eating and doesn't have an idea what he is talking about. However, he says it is not difficult for him to avoid fighting and says no one would want to make an enemy of the penal law hall. He exclaims he doesn't want to fight anyone either and it's best to live in peace. He likes the alcohol and says he hasn't tasted something like this before and Gagu replies that he made it himself. Heijin asks him if he intends to sell it and he replies he can send a few to his residence. They are having a good conversation while the fourth young lord is watching them furiously. Suddenly, he gets up angrily, says he will never forget this humiliation, and leaves the room while Hajin calls him from behind and asks him to close the door while leaving. When he has left, Gagu asks him if he wants to talk to him about anything, and he says there is one thing he wants to talk about. He gets how good his bone contraction mystical arts is, but he asks him if there was any reason he used it to meet them. Gagu stays silent, and Hajin says he doesn't have to answer it if he doesn't want to. When he is left, Gagu thinks it has been a long time since he has come across someone so hard to read and has a familiar sense. On the other side, the fourth young lord is walking toward home and thinks how he dares a mere penal law hall master to threaten a young lord of the divine cult. He thinks he will give a return present to the third young lord soon, and he will ensure that no one gets in the way. Hajin is already present there and says he has a lot of blood thirst in his eyes and it seems like he is ready to kill someone right now. He asks him to come to him and they will have a drink together. He exclaims that the penal law hall master is a bit annoying, but he sure is good at making alcohol. The fourth lord wonders what he wants to do or if he is going to do something there in the penal law hall's territory. Heijin asks him not to be so worried because he is just offering him a drink to celebrate being freed from interrogation. They both sit there, and the fourth lord thinks he just needs to be relaxed in front of him because he is just his prey. He then asks him what he wants to talk about, and Hajin says he feels like they never had a proper conversation. He replies that they have talked a lot as kids, and Hajin says it feels like they never had a good discussion after growing up. He then asks him if he intends to continue all this and why he wants to make life hard for himself. The fourth lord replies it was evident that all seven of them must fight one day, and the moment they became the demon lord's disciples, they became enemies too. Hajin admits that they have to fight, but they don't need to kill each other, and the fourth asks him if he stopped him just to have this kind of conversation. Hajin says he just wants to hear what he is thinking for now, and he replies that he will know if they look at the royals of this land. The fate of the royals who were unable to become emperor lived pitiful lives. In order to avoid that kind of fate, they have to kill even their siblings to become the ruler. Hajin asks him if he wants power or if he is killing because he is afraid of being killed. The fourth says if he called him to ask such type of questions, then he is leaving. He is about to leave when Hajin says he doesn't want to live a life of fighting and chaos and asks him if he is going to try to assassinate him again. He leaves it to chance, and things won't go their way though and waits for his answer. The fourth release his demonic energy and breaks the bottle of alcohol, saying he is giving him an answer if he really wants that, and exclaims that he will make sure to kill him one day. Suddenly, Hajin attacks him with his demonic energy, and the fourth shockingly asks him what he will do. Hajin says he is determined to kill him one day, so he can't let him go after hearing that kind of answer. He is determined to kill him at the moment. 
At the same time, the penal hall master is thinking about the young lords and thinks the fourth young lord doesn't seem like he is going to heed his warning. The cult won't be shaken by incidents created by someone like him, and he doesn't know how the third lord will react to this. Meanwhile, the third guard captain appears there and informs him that the third and fourth young lords are fighting again. Hajin says since he attacked first, then he will let him have the next attack. The fourth lord takes out his poisonous nails and is ready to attack him, and Hajin says his martial arts technique sure takes a while to get prepared, which is why he can't respond to an ambush. He shouts at him, saying he made a mistake by warning him, and jumps upon him, saying he will kill him. Their demonic energies collide with each other, and there is considerable destruction there. Hajin pushes him backward and asks how he is going to kill anyone with a technique like that. He thinks he is definitely more substantial than the berserk demon squad leader, and he is sure he would be able to kill her within 10 turns. It's not that he can't beat him, but the poison from earlier is getting in his way, and he won't be able to end this fight until that's taken care of. The fourth lord calls him disrespectfully and rushes toward him to attack, saying he doesn't deserve respect. He dodges his attack with his hand and says he needs to be faster than that. He asks him how he dares to do anything when he is this slow, and he tries to attack him repeatedly. Suddenly, Hajin pushes him away, disappears from there, and calls him from another side. He says he will show him just once, so he should open his eyes wide, and rushes toward him, saying this is how footwork should be. He punches his stomach and asks if he gets the technique now, making him fall to a distance. The fourth lord is shocked that he didn't see his movements at all. Hajin says the dynamic between the nine heavens contraction divine steps, heaven and dark shadow demonic art is pretty good. He was relatively sure but didn't have the chance to check in a real life situation. The fourth lord asks how he dares to use him to test his martial arts and warns him not to expect his death to be peaceful. He again attacks him, but Hajin dodges him, saying it's no use and this kind of attack won't work on him. He smirked and said he was still looking down on him, always looking down at everyone, and never had the chance to look up. He uses the most significant form of snake shadow poison palm and asks him to dodge his next attack. He throws a large attack towards him, and the poison of the poison palm will be absorbed into the injuries he made in his torso earlier, and he is sure that he won't survive this one. He has poured in all the deadly poison in his attack, and says he will now die struggling from the poison. The poison penetrates through his skin and injuries even if he holds his breath, and he never expects that he has been hiding such a monstrous technique. He needs to get out of this as soon as he can, and he uses his sword Kai to get out of this. He looks for the fourth young lord, but he disappears, and he is shocked to see Anghua there, who is calling him for help. He runs toward her and asks what she is doing there when she is recovering from a severe injury and she shouldn't be moving around yet. Suddenly, she gets up and attacks Hajin, but he dodges his attack and discovers that the fourth young lord is pretending to be Anghua. But he is shocked to see secret demon queen there, and she calls him by his real name and says it is time for his head. Suddenly, his hands disappear, and after that, his feet are also gone. He is struggling in the snake shadow poison palm's illusions, while the fourth lord is watching him joyfully and says it's a shame that he is the only audience. He says he will kill him right there like he said he would do to him, and he might come back and be a nuisance if he doesn't make sure to kill him there. He rushes toward him to attack, but Hajin reacts in time and grabs his neck. Shockingly, he asks him how he escaped the illusion because he had completely fallen for it. Hajin asks him if this is the secret martial arts technique he has been hiding all this time, and it's just as cunning and wicked as its wielder. He punches his face and says he can't attain power with this kind of petty trick. He has wholly eradicated his snake shadow poison plam from his body, and this is all thanks to the poison he put in him earlier. He trained his tolerance when he was an assassin, so that he would never fall to poison and quickly escape the fourth young lord's illusion. The fourth young lord is shocked and says he should be on the level of the demonic elders to be able to detoxify his snake shadow poison palm. Hajin comes forward and says he did take a bit longer than he expected, but it's not an accomplishment worth mentioning. However, he has indeed created more trouble for him than he expected, so he will show him what real demonic arts are. He shows him the true openings of the Shadow Wicked Art and uses the Underground Poison Spirit Guard Gateway Technique. There is immense pressure in the air, and the fourth young lord is shocked at how this can happen. He wonders even if he swings his sword. 
Hajin is just standing there, but his body is being ripped to shreds, and he is targeting his Serpent King Demonic Arts core energy barrier like it's just a piece of paper. He is not even moving his body, and he takes out his sword to attack him at the same time, the fourth tries to attack him. He uses the heaven splitting triple slash technique and tears his body with his sword. He then falls to the ground and Hajin asks him about his last words and says the lives of humans life disperse away meaninglessly like the smoke of the tobacco he always smokes. He then takes out his sword after saying goodbye, but he faces some formless energy that bounds his sword and stops him from doing so. He is the penal hall master Gagu and recalls they agreed not to cause any further trouble. He asks Hajin to put his sword down at this moment and uses the skill of avoid capturing object. It is a skill that allows someone to control the movement of an object without touching it. It's a skill that requires advanced martial arts knowledge. Hajin asks him why he should be nice to someone who wants to kill him, and he replies that they are still in their territory. He cannot accept them fighting there even if they are the young lord. Hajin turns toward him, says he doesn't know his place, and asks him if he wants them to tremble in fear of the penal law hall regardless of their status. He swings his sword and breaks his energy form, and Gagu is shocked to see that he broke the inner energy chain in just one attack. He asks him if he can take responsibility for antagonizing the penal law hall. But Hajin attacks him, saying this is something he should be taking, and Gagu finds that the depth of his demonic energy is comparable to that of Supreme Peak, but his demonic arts skill doesn't live up to it. However, his skills are different, and his speed and movements are on par with his. Hajin uses the second form of the nine-fold resilient calamity blade technique. He throws an attack toward Gagu while he is trying to dodge him, but the energy of his blade is far hotter than he expected. Soon, there is a vast destruction, and if he had reached just a bit slower, he would have been burned to ashes. He has used too much inner energy, if Hajin uses a more vital daimonic art next, he won't survive. However, Hajin gets silent, and Gagu wonders why there isn't another attack, because someone as skilled as him wouldn't miss this chance. But he wasn't his target from the start, while he was rushing toward the fourth lord to attack him. He tries to stop him, but Hajin doesn't listen to him and penetrates his sword through his body. He exclaims he has thought about it and thinks the fourth lord should also lose everything she has. There is a famous proverb, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Similarly, a Kai blockage for a Kai blockage, so he also makes him suffer from Kai blockage. He has destroyed the core of the poison that was above his energy core, and his muscles have gotten small and weak. This is because he maintained his muscles through mystical arts instead of training his body. That is the limitation of having raised his martial prowess with only illusions, and he won't die right away, but he will be bedridden for several years. Even if he tries to recover, he will have to start his martial arts from the very beginning, and he will send him some medicine and acupuncture needles. Meanwhile, some black guards appear there and ask the hall master if he is hurt anywhere. Hajin surrenders and says they can arrest him. After some time, they take him to jail, and he asks the hall master if he won't ask him anything. He exclaims that his wrists are hurting and asks him to free him because he will not run away. The hall master replies that he is currently imprisoned, which means he is a criminal, so he can't comply with that request. He states that he means it when he says things would get complicated, and Hajin asks him to act like the penal law hall master who doesn't want any conflict within the cult. He exclaims that there won't be any conflict now and says there needs to be more than one person for conflict to arise, but the fourth young lord is now incapacitated. He breaks the chain off his neck and hands easily and asks him why he is saying things will be difficult for now. Gagu is shocked to see that he broke the prohibited sea iron so quickly and Hajin says if he hadn't respected him, he would have run out of there before he even got these handcuffs on him. He thinks he has done everything he can to be patient, considering his status as the third young master, and Gagu asks him what he will do if he doesn't release him. Hajin didn't think he was someone to drag out conversations with meaningless theoretical situations, but he guessed he was mistaken. He is about to leave when Gagu warns him, saying he will keep an eye on him. Hajin warns him not to get in his way, and he doesn't want to become enemies with the penal law hall. Gagu exclaims he is really confident when he hasn't been named as the successor yet, and he is one of many candidates. He leaves the prison without saying anything, and Gagu thinks he is a complex and dangerous man. 
he observed that the third young lord's martial arts were more potent and brutal than the demon cult's martial arts, and the sword technique he used was that of the orthodox faction. After some time he eats a lot of food and demands more food, while the squad leader and Dongpol ask him to slow down since no one will steal food from him. She asks him if the penal law hall didn't feed him, and he replies that they only serve stale rice and wild vegetables. Dongpol asks him if it is all over now and if there will be any retaliation from the fourth young lord or higher-ups. He says the fourth lord is now crippled and can't even move his body, and the higher-ups turn their heads the other way when it comes to fights between candidates, so he doesn't think anything will happen. It's all over now, and everything is taken care of, so he asks them to return to their organizations. He calls Dongpol and says he has been with his way for way too long, and he is not just a regular member of the Guardian Court, and he is the third leader. He then calls the squad leader Yui and asks her to get back to her responsibilities as squad leader too. She replies that she is already doing what she needs to do, and that he does not need to tell her. He is done eating, so he leaves, saying goodbye. Yui says he is so heartless, and he didn't have to go away so coldly. She asks Dongpul if he is also upset by his behavior, but he has a weird expression on his face. He states that he feels like the young master is saying goodbye to them for the last time. He then goes to Ankwa, calls her, and says she doesn't need to move like this, but she sits on his feet and thanks him for saving his life. He is glad to see that she is okay while she is just crying badly. On the other side, the first guardian informs the demon lord that the fourth is in a very bad condition, his energy core is broken, and the poison is taking over his body. He is holding on to his physical strength, but even if he gets lucky, he will just barely avoid becoming a cripple. The demon lord asks him what the livelihood of recovery is, and he replies that the physicians of the Blood Spirit Pavilion assessed that it's basically impossible. Even if they are able to heal the poison and internal injuries, the energy core is too severely damaged for him to return to his previous life. He asks the first guardian to leave, and the demon lord thinks he always thought that the third lord would end his life, but he lets him live. He wonders why the third changed his mind at the moment, or if he wanted to make the fourth suffer the same fate. He thinks about his recent activities, the private meeting with the internal enlightenment facility master, the fight with the berserk demon squad leader, and now the fight at the penal law hall. The third has created more chaos than possible for one person in the last few days, but what's important is that he managed to achieve his goals in all that chaos. He thinks this is how one side of the succession fight collapses. It is stated that the fourth young lord Hong Yuamun is the son of the patriarch of the Jiaxa family who had as much talent as any other child. With time, the fourth became sly like a venomous viper, like all those who had inherited the true blood of the Jiaxa family, but that was fine. It doesn't matter what one's personality is like as long as one's talents bloom, but the problem is that Hong Yuamun didn't tend to his talents. He did the bare minimum. He was strong for his age, but that was the way he lost. But the third young lord is different, and there was a time when he was similar to the fourth, but after waking from Kai blockage, he has been striving to do the most rather than the least. A small but significant difference decided the outcome of their fight. On the other side, Ankwa informs Hajin about a guest at their home, and he is surprised to see Yonsen there. He asks her what brings her there and wonders why she is there since there isn't anything unresolved between them anymore. She replies that she has a favor to ask him and asks him to come to his residence if he has the time. She tells him that it's about the martial arts method he taught her, and it hasn't been long, but there is already a difference. He replies that the person must be very talented because it's not easy for most people to achieve it in a short period of time. She reveals that she had picked out that child herself to be her successor, and Hajin asks her if it is okay for her to tell him something like that. She states that it's not something she should be announcing to anyone, but she doesn't really care anyway. She doesn't trust people, but she trusts situations and judging from the situation back then and now she doesn't think they will ever become enemies. Hajin tells her that her successor's recovery is going well and asks her what she wants from him now. She states that she made all the final decisions in the internal enlightenment facility, but the child is responsible for commanding and carrying out the decisions. Therefore, her hands and feet are basically bound right now, and if the situation continues for more than a month, the cult will suffer severe losses. Hajin thinks this is not good for the internal enlightenment facility master, who has a strong ego and knows better than anyone how this cult works, to ask him for help. 
He thinks Yonsum would do anything to try to persuade him if it's for the sake of the internal enlightenment facility. He observes his eyes and feels that it's like she's telling him she won't accept no for an answer. However, he asks her to make a deal with him and is sure she would feel burdened if he just helped her one-sidedly. She asks him if she wants something from him in return and he says there isn't anything he can think of at the top of his head. Suddenly, he remembers something and thinks the facility master, their blessed and merciful internal enlightenment facility, manages the livelihood of the cult. All the goods that are distributed in the cult are sourced from outside, and he asks her if the things get delivered there or if they go out. She replies that they go out for essential items and some people will leave the cult after two weeks. He grabs her hand excitedly and says he will ensure the recovery of her successor in two weeks and she has to let him escape the demon cult. On the other side, Dongpo meditates and thinks about what the third young lord said earlier and thinks he is right because he gets so used to being with the young master that he almost neglects his work. He decided to get it together and was sure he would see the young master again. Meanwhile, a guard appears there and informs him that the first leader wants to see him. He goes to see him and he tells him that he is swamped so that he will get straight to the point and the escort of the demon army commander is in three days. His duties have been changed and he is aware that the internal enlightenment facility sends members of their cult out every three months to deliver essential goods. He gives him a page and says this month happens to be that month and he asks the first guardian if he is supposed to escort the cult members in charge of the delivery. Things in the cult have been quite chaotic with the upcoming Mara festival, and he doesn't think anything would happen, but considering the situation, they can't let them go on their own. The festival is in two weeks, and the essential details are all written on there, and asks him to burn the page after he memorizes its contents. Dongpul promises him to accomplish his duties successfully. At the same time, the facility master takes Hajin to her successor, and tells him that her name is Juhua and that she is just as skilled with getting work done as she is with martial arts. She was known for being a genius when she entered the cult, and she is just in charge of a part of the facility, but she's also serving as an overseer without anyone knowing. The internal enlightenment facility came to a standstill after this child fell into this state, and this just goes to show how many responsibilities she had and how good she was at handling them. Hajin is surprised to see that she looks around his age, but she's already overseeing an organization as big as the internal enlightenment facility. Moreover, Juhua has deciphered the boundless technique within just a few days and utilized it enough to see improvement. He takes a look at her condition first and releases his demonic energy, while Yonsim is surprised to see his amazing demonic energy. He's only using a bit of it, but the quality of the energy is excellent, and Hajin finds out that it's easy to conform her boundless technique with his because she's already learned it partially. Now if he just removes the toxic energy, he starts taking it out through the blood. Ten days later, and one day before the two weeks, she wakes up. But Yonism is shocked to hear his demand that he wants her to sneak him out into the delivery squad without the cult leader knowing. She asks him to realize his ridiculous request, but he replies he doesn't know about that, but he does remember that she said she didn't want this to be a favor but a transaction. She gets worried and asks him to end things with a favor, but he replies that the ship has already sailed. She gets angry and uses abusive language, and he is surprised to see that she also says things like that. He asks her why he should work so hard to treat her successor, but she shouts at him and refuses his demand. She asks him if he wants to deceive the cult leader, and she will pretend that she didn't hear him, and he replies that it is not misleading the cult leader. He states that the cult leader has no interest in his disciples in the first place, and he just reigns over them. She tells him that the cult leader isn't the only problem. If someone hears that a successor candidate sneaked into the delivery squad, others will be suspicious of the internal enlightenment facility. Hejin says he knows he has the power to crush the rumors like that, and she agrees that she has that kind of power. She tells him that is a very different matter from political retaliation or covering up malicious rumors. If things go wrong, the other organizations in the cult will try to interfere with the candidates too, destabilizing the divine cult. He asks her if she isn't worried about what someone would request from her after they help her bring a person back from the dead. He doesn't want to discuss the value of life anymore, and he doesn't like to feel like he is guilt-tripping her or anything. Yonsum thinks she doesn't have a choice now, and they made a deal with the life of a precious child at stake, so she should keep her end of the bargain. 
However, it will take her some time to think of a way, and she is already stressed that the child wants to lead the delivery squad when she's not even fully well yet. Hajin asks her if her successor wants to lead the delivery squad, but she is in no shape to take on such a role just yet. After some time he goes to her room and says she is strong enough to be moving around like that. She asks him who he is, and Hajin asks her to think of him as something like a physician. She asks him about his identity, and he replies that he is someone who helped her get out of the Kai blockage. She realizes that she is the person who gave the martial arts technique and thanks him for his favor. Hajin asks her how she can believe him when they have never met each other, and she replies that an internal enlightenment facility is a place where suspicious people can just enter. Hajin observes that she is quick to judge the situation, and he hears that she is tenacious but flexible. He appreciates her and says that with some enlivening of the core energy and half a day of warming up, she should be fine making the trip. Meanwhile, Yonsim enters the room, and he tells her she is in a better condition than she anticipated and won't have to worry as long as she's with him. Yonsim is shocked and asks him how she can travel when she barely got out of bedrest and if she were to pass out again. Juwa calls her and says the commandment of the delivery squad is her main duty, and she has no idea how anxious she was the last six months because she couldn't fulfill that duty. She requests that she go with the delivery squad. After some time, they are finally leaving, and it has been almost a year since he woke up in the body of the third young lord of the heavenly demon divine cult. After what feels like a decade, he finally gets to breathe in the air outside. If he does well, he might succeed in escaping forever, and their destination is somewhere near Jiangxi. There are two safety houses in Jiangxi made for assassins, and they are both quite far from the neighboring areas of the Guangdong province, but with his current abilities, he will be able to get there if he runs for three days without rest. Meanwhile, Zhu Hua apologizes for being rude to him, not knowing he is the third young lord. Hajin apologizes, asks her not to think about it, and says he should apologize to her for entering her room like that. She also thanks him for his help, and if it weren't for him, she would have never gotten out of Kai blockage herself. He replies that he just happened to know the method, and the one who saved her using that method was the facility master. Suddenly, he feels very familiar and heavy energy from his surroundings, and he wonders who this person can be. At the same time, Dongpil appears outside and introduces himself as the substitute commander of the delivery squad, and he has come there to escort them to their destination. Hajin is shocked to see him there and wonders what he is doing there. He is instructing the other guards to accompany their delivery squad, while Hajin thinks it will be terrible for him if he sees him there. He asks Juhua how her body is doing and if she circulated her kai today. He grabs her hand and lets her sleep, saying sleep is the best medicine, so she should sleep for a bit. He then calls Dongpul from the cart, and he is surprised at some familiar voice and thinks it is definitely the third young lord's voice. Hajin again calls him from his cart and asks him to come to him, and he shockingly asks him what he is doing there or if he is part of the delivery squad this month. Hajin asks him not to talk out loud and to communicate with him with the distant whispering technique, and he asks him why they are in charge of escorting the delivery squad. Dongpul replies that the atmosphere doesn't seem quite right as the Mara festival is just around the corner, so they are tasked to escort the delivery squad and ask him if he is on some secret mission. Hajin asks him to think something like that and not to tell anyone he is there. He has never expected that the very person he is the closest to in the cult would be there when he is trying to run away. He wonders if he will successfully run away when things are like this. On the other side, Iron Blood Fortress Steel Will Squad Captain O Jonghua is waiting for the delivery squad to come their way, and they will attack them. However, he is unhappy because he has been assigned to such a lowly mission with those inferior people. One of his guards asks him to use his words carefully because they are still a well-trained organization, but he gets angry with him. He asks him to remind him that he brought him in as vice-captain despite his shitty swordsmanship. He exclaims that they, the Iron Blood Fortress, are still the most powerful and no one can do anything to them. He thinks robbing the demon cult delivery team would be a piece of cake for them, and they have to work with the Southern Savage Beast Palace. They really live up to their names because they are just beasts. He thinks no one would ever want to work with them because they are just hungry beasts who will eat anyone coming their way. It had been about a decade since they last saw people from the demon cult, and he hoped that it would be good fun this time. On the other side, Juhua wakes up and gets scared to see Hajin there, 
and he asks her to be careful because he will get a scolding from the facility master if she pulls a back muscle. She is surprised that she slept for half a day, but Hajin tells her she slept for half a day. It is good that he puts her to sleep because her body was exhausted from all the activity immediately after emerging from Kai blockage. Even if she has prepared well with the internalization of power and Kai circulation, he is still human, so he asks her to rest. He gives her something to eat, saying she would be hungry after being asleep for two days, and gives her the rice balls and beef jerky made by the delivery squad. She thanks him. Hajin says she is the reason he is present there and also takes Goldie from his luggage. Juwa gets scared to see him, but he doesn't notice her reaction and offers some rice balls to Goldie to eat. He then tells Juhua that his name is Goldie, and she asks him if he is his pet. She is shocked because she has never met someone with a fox as a pet. He then leaves the cart, saying he will rest, and goes to Dongpil, who has called him. First, he apologizes to him, saying he should not call him in the forest at the moment, while Hajin says there is no need to be so formal with him when he is already stressed enough. He asks him if he faced any inconveniences in the carriage, and he calls him there because he thought he should know this in advance. It's a message they received in the Guardian Court before they set off, and this was the reason they were assigned to this mission. Hajin is shocked to read the message and asks him if it is true. At the same time, a first elder told a man that the world is filled with depravity, but they already knew that, and the weather was rather cold, but the further south they went, the warmer it got. The north is cold for sure, and even though this fabric isn't meant to be worn, the carpets from the west should be helpful. The elder asks him how his life is in Jiangxi, and he replies that the land there has always been good, but that's not all there is to life, and times have been hard. He tells the elder about the demon cult's festival, and to the demon cult, the Mara festival is the greatest event. He heard that they had been all over the place collecting valuables. However, things have been chaotic because of those robbers. The elder exclaims that he has enough experience in managing a sect, but since the alliance is a new environment for him, he will look for a suitable position for him. The man gets up and thanks him and says he doesn't know who might have heard that his cultivation has reached the entrance realm. He asks the elder to be careful because he is worried that the evil cult members might do something to him. The elder laughs and says he may be old, but he is still sprightly and even if the demon cult leader were to come, he would scold him and tell him to get out of his sight. He is the Righteous Heavenly Alliance's first elder, Yong Ilryong, and Hajin remembers him from his previous life. In his past life, he asked him how it is being the Alliance leader's hunting dog these days. He called him so impressive that he was doing such work at that age, and he replied that his work was nothing compared to the effort he put in trying to steal the Alliance leader's position. Jung says it seems like it's about time he retires and he is not as discreet in his work as before. Now, people are talking about him and calling him the world's best martial artist. Hajin asked him why he was upset that some assassin was the first elder of the Righteous Heavenly Alliance and said he didn't care about what the public thinks. He angrily called him and said he would give him a piece of advice and asked him to watch his back. After that, in the last moment of his life, he was the one who cut off his right leg without mercy. He is now angry to think that he is nearby, while Dongpil is unable to understand what he is talking about. On the other side, the squad leader Yui comes to his home for a drink, but she can't sense his presence there. Angua tells her that he is not there and only says that he is going to train. She is surprised that he went for training when he was already that strong. Later, she finds his sword there and is surprised at how he can leave his sword behind when he has gone for training. At the same time, Hajin asks himself to calm down because it doesn't matter whether Young is nearby or not, and his goal is just freedom. He decides to visit all the safe houses he has prepared throughout the Central Plains, recover his martial arts, earn money, and then leave the country. He can't forget his goal and dream, but he wants to kill the first elder Young at any cost. Juhua felt his expression and asked him if he was okay. Suddenly, Goldie jumps from her lap and reaches his face. On the other hand, the subordinate tells Dongpil that there is not too much to take back, which means the things they are taking are really valuable. The subordinate asks him what kind of audacious would try to rob the divine cult, and Dongpil says they still shouldn't let their guard down until they are done. They realize that the patrol team is late, and they are not usually the kind of dawdle, and it seems like the terrain is slowing them down. After a while, they see some of them coming toward them in an injured state and tell them that there's a fight at the handover point. 
Donpal asks him whom they fight with, and they tell him that they are in the midst of making their retreat. There's a very skilled martial artist among them, and Hajin comes outside and asks them about the person. On the other side, the squad leader is watching the things their men have stolen, and says these are all rare medicinal herbs. They wonder why they are buying these things in bulk, and why these things are necessary for the Mana Festival. One of his subordinates tells them that there are no survivors on the enemy's side, and they obtained all of their items too, so they just need to set the place on fire before leaving. There are three with minor injuries on their side, and none are severely injured or dead. He gets angry with them and asks how strong the enemy was that their people took minor injuries. He reveals that they have led about four or five people on purpose, and he orders him to get those men to load the things up. Meanwhile, one of the injured guards is still alive, and he exclaims that he is quite determined. He is the one who got hit by his palm strike, and the guard asks him if he is from the inner cult. The squad leader makes fun, saying they are funny to worship the demon lord, and all of the demon cult members are out of their minds. He kicks him again, saying he should die and go to his demon god if he likes him so much, and keeps his shoe on his neck and asks him to die. He challenges him, saying if their demon god really exists, then he should come to save them. Meanwhile, a huge man appears behind him and says he needs to feed the kids. He asks him to tell his subordinates to bring something. The squad leader asks him why he obeys his orders, and he replies that he was told that his squad will be responsible for feeding them. The squad leader asks him to keep his promise. The squad leader shouts at him and says he should think of all the things they have already eaten, and the man replies that they are just making a request that they need more food. He angrily leaves, saying beasts like them need to be fed at all times, and asks them to feed on the demon cult guys, saying he will provide more corpses for them soon enough. He thinks he will bury all of them beasts once they are done with this. After some time, Hajin and the other squad reach there, and they are shocked to see that they have destroyed the building to erase any traces that might have been left behind. Juwa observes that it's a bit hastily done, and she feels like they could have done a better job if they wanted to get rid of their traces. She says this sloppy work is either a trap, or they must have run to a very good hiding place where they won't be able to find them, and she asks Donpal to send out a message to the nearest branch. She needs some time to think things over, so she orders the captain to take care of the corpses. She thinks it's too late to wait for orders from the higher-ups, and in this case, it would be better to take of things first and then make a report. Their cult has a strong influence in Jiangxi, and they will be able to track the enemy down even if they don't hurry. Dongpal asks her to rest since she has only recently recovered from Kai blockage, and she replies that she has recovered most of her martial arts because of her physician. Dongpal thinks if she were impatient or obsessed with just getting accomplished, she would never take such actions. She has recovered from Kai blockage so quickly, and he wonders if she was talking about the young master when she said physician. Meanwhile, Hajin calls him to the carriage, saying he has a favor to ask of him, and he gives him the blade he asked for. He replies that he will be able to find their trail about 20 kilometers northeast, and the enemy's pretty intense, so they should try to avoid an all-out confrontation as much as possible. He states that the Guardian Court's top priority is to safely escort the delivery squad back to the cult with the goods. He advises them to move as quietly as they can before uncovering who the enemy is. Dongpal asks him what he will do then, but he orders him to get moving and runs away from there. He thinks something is not correct, and clearly, the demon cult has a strong influence in Jiangxi, but the Righteous Heavenly Alliance's first elder is also there. He needs to find out what is going on there. At the same time, the beasts are feeding on the corpses, and the squad leader exclaims they are all greedy and asks him about the men when he is coming. Meanwhile, the first elder Jung appears there and asks if they are waiting for him. He greets them with the Steel Will squad captain and says it has been a while, and he asks him what took him so long to they are there. Elder Jung states that he had some business to tend to, and he is not that late though, so he doesn't need to be mad at him. He turns towards the beasts and asks them if they are the renowned beasts, and the captain says it has been really annoying because of them. Elder Yung goes to their leader and asks him about his name, and he tells them his name is Yul Liang. He is the beloved disciple of the Beast Palace Master, and unlike the martial arts of the Central Plains, the martial arts of the palace are rather bizarre. It is said that as soon as the opponent lets their guard down, even an expert martial artist can be defeated. 
Elder Young says his potential Kai energy and even most peak realm martial artists of the Central Plains won't be able to endure 10 attacks from him. The captain doesn't like this and asks Elder Young why he is being so nice to that savage. He replies that each and every one of the four outer wall palaces is an organization with very skilled martial artists. They are relatively quiet now, but it's only sensible to find out as much as he can about an organization that he doesn't know will be an enemy or an ally. The squad captain says if they're an ally, they should kill them, and Elder Young says he needs to do something about that temper of his if he wishes to climb even higher. But he says he will live his life on his own, and he can die if he has a problem with this. Elder Young asks him if he has brought the promised item, and he replies that it isn't a personal request, but one from the higher-ups, and it's a critical mission. He gives him a bad which contains a stone in it, the Jade of Calamity. The captain asks him what it is that he went so far to obtain it, and he replies with a proverb that one man's trash is another's treasure. However, this wraps up their transaction, and the captain says he thought he would stay to have a few drinks. The elder Young says he also loves to stay and chat like the old days, but he is rather busy. The captain asks him to take this chance to enter the Steel Blood Fortress, and the elder Young asks him if he is suggesting he join the fortress. The captain asks him what is wrong with him joining the fortress, and it's only natural to convert a talented person to their organization. The elder Young thanks him for saying that, and asks him if he is even in the position to offer him something like that since he is just a squad captain. The squad captain gets embarrassed and says he didn't need to say something like that, and is about to say something when Elder Young stabs his hand in his chest. He repeats his saying that if there's an ally, they work together, they need just to kill them. He asks the squad captain to figure out who his enemies and allies are and fix his shitty personality of his in the afterworld. He kills the squad captain while his men rush to help him. The Elder Young asks how many minions did he bring there. He calls Yul Yang and asks him if he is willing to have another meal for his beasts, and he agrees happily, saying he can't say no to this. At the same time, some people are packing some luggage in a village, and one of them asks another about when the first elder will be coming. He replies that he went somewhere quite far from there and will be there for about half a day. The guard again asks if it is okay for him to have gone somewhere so far on his own, and they suppose that he went to take bribes again. They are near the demon cult's base, and for him to travel alone without an escort is dangerous. The man states that the first elder went to pay respects to his mother's grave, and that is what they must say if the alliance were to ask the reason they stayed in Jiangxi. They are all dependent on the first elder, so they need to be careful not to leak any stories about him, and if anything goes wrong with the first elder, and if anything goes wrong with him, it'll be a problem for them too. Suddenly, they look towards the woods and find something strange about the woods. They are just observing the situation when Hajin appears from nowhere and destroys everything. He reaches them in no time and jumps upon them to attack. There is a huge explosion of demonic Kai there and grabs one of the men about the first elder. He starts crying and says he only hears that he's going to visit his mother's grave, but Hajin shouts at him and says he will kill him if he doesn't tell him the truth. He wonders why the first elder of the Righteous Heavenly Alliance leaves his escorts behind, and he has come there to kill young Ilryung before leaving. At the very least, he wants to take his leg, and thinking about him makes him feel an ache in his right leg that was cut off in his past life. He then leaves the village looking for him and thinks he will definitely kill him. On the other side, Elder Young has killed all the people of Steel Blood Fortress and says Yule, and has made a wise choice allying with him instead of the Steel Blood Fortress, and anyone would choose to ally with a side that treats them better. He then asks him about the Palace Master, and he replies that the medicine he brought them has had some effect, and he thinks he will soon be up and running again. He then asks him about the thing he received from the Squad Captain, and the Elder Young replies it's the Jade of Calamity. He says he doesn't need to know, and all he needs to know is that it's a treasure that will be useful in his work. He asks him if he will use it on the Righteous Heavenly Alliance leader, but he asks him to stay quiet. He then talks about the wolves he has brought, that they have a great appetite and are the beasts that can win against swordsmen. He is seeing all kinds of occult studies that he has never heard of, and Yule says the Great Beast King technique isn't some kind of occult study. It teaches beasts to learn how to internalize power as humans do, and he means that they can understand his orders from the movements of his hand. 
he states that he and the Blood Squad are connected through their spirits and upper energy cores, so they understand even the most detailed of orders. Elder Young says he was always curious whether something like that was possible when he heard that he worked with beasts. He thinks that if he uses these guys to his advantage, then he can take the position of the leader of the Righteous Heavenly Alliance. Suddenly, one of the wolves howls, and Yule tells him that it seems like the Blood Wolf Squad leader smelled members of the demon cult. He doesn't know the exact numbers, but it seems like there are about a hundred, and Elder Jung asks him if they have tasted the blood of demon cult members before. He replies that they have ambushed them nearby, and they missed a few, but it wasn't a bad meal. The Elder Jung knew they would be out and about because of the Mara festival that's coming up and asked how they are compared to the Blood Wolf Squad. He replies that there are a lot of them, and there are some very strong ones among them too. The Elder Jung asks him to show him how good his Blood Wolf squad is, and Yule exclaims they will all die before sunset. At the same time, Donkle comes toward this side and asks everyone to stop, and he asks them if they feel the same as him. It's not demonic energy, but it's very violent. Juwa also feels something and says the smell is inhuman, and they also feel the intense smell of blood. Donkle is sure that a lot of people must have died, and in the meantime, Yule reaches them with his wolf squad. He asks him about who he is and wonders if they were the ones who attacked the delivery squad earlier, but he doesn't reply to them and orders them to rip them apart. All the wolves rush upon them to attack and Dongpul orders his men to spread out. Juhua also spreads her demonic energy and asks everyone to watch out. The wolves attack the guards and bite them badly, and Dongpul is shocked to see the wolves bigger than cows and wonders where such monsters came from. He tries to attack them, but their skin is like steel and he can slice through boulders easily with just his inner energy, but all he can do is merely leave scratches on them. Even if he wants to try to imbue his sword with his kai, the wolves are moving too fast for him to do that. Just purely attacking won't do anything, and one of the wolves rushes toward him to attack. Juhua appears there and asks him to stand back, uses her moonlight demonic arts, and attacks the wolf. She then asks the delivery squad to stay on the inside, so that they don't get in the way of the Guardian court members. She tells him that they should retreat because this is not a fair fight for them. These aren't the regular wolves, and at this rate, they will all be killed, and the Guardian court will protect the delivery squad from the wolves. Donkle orders the Guardian court's third squad to use the spinning formation, and they will spin around endlessly at high speed to make the wolves dizzy. They will stop them from getting anywhere near them, and Elder Young explains that it is interesting to see this and says he doesn't even seem to have much combat experience. He has set up a defense formation and uses the features of that formation to his advantage to attack the wolves. They wonder if the Blood Squad will be okay, and he knows that formation can only stall for time, but they won't be able to get close like that. Yule says it's fine, and they can easily break an amateur formation like that because they don't know yet how terrifying the Blood Wolf Squad can be. They will see how long they can hold up against the wolves. In the meantime, Hajin finds the first Elder Young and says this is the place where he is. They are impressed by Donpul's skills that he has set up a defense formation and used its features to his advantage to attack the wolves. Juhua is attacking them but is shocked to see that the wolves are predicting his attacks and Donpul rushes toward her, saying it's getting dangerous. He uses his skill to return to the heavens, kills two wolves in just one attack, and asks Juhua to stick closer to the formation. She is amazed by his sword aura, which is quite powerful, but it's getting dangerous because he looks way too tired. His last attack consumed so much of his inner energy, and the demonic energy has gotten rough, and his breathing is unstable. He wonders what he should do now because everyone is getting tired, and just defending themselves won't cut it. He orders everyone to open the formation and asks everyone to run in, and he asks everyone to run as fast as they can toward their branch. The Elder Jung says they have made a boring choice and exclaims that they are doing much better than he expected, and the wolves have taken quite some injuries too. Even if they are injured and exhausted, they are still demon cult members, and if they let them return to the cult, there will be consequences. He asks Yule what he will do now, and if he will show them the terror of the Southern Savage Beast Palace's successor. First, he watches Donkle fighting and then jumps from the mountain to attack him. He collapses at his full speed and everyone shouts the third leader. Juhua also rushes to help him and freezes Yule's hand. 
but he smiles and says this king of martial arts is child's play, and she is shocked to see that his martial arts were so easily broken. She then kicks her badly and says it's time for pain, and Elder Young says it seems the demon cult has downgraded. She twisted her body just in time to avoid being hit at her crucial point, but he grabbed her by the hair and asked other guards to listen to her closely. If they don't want to watch their leader get eaten alive, they better not even dream of running away. He calls his blood wolf squad to stop standing by, and more than 10 of them were killed by these insects, and they killed quite a lot of his wolves. However, he exclaims that he can just raise more of them, but he is not so nice that he can just move one from the fact that he spent a lot of time and effort raising those wolves. The subordinate squad captain asks him to let go of her this instant, but he orders his wolf squad leader to attack and kill him. Dongpal asks the captain to move, but before that, a wolf attacks his head and kills him. Yul smiles and says it has a lovely sound and asks Juhua to watch closely as her subordinate gets eaten alive. Suddenly, Dongpal attacks him from behind through his sword aura, but he dodges his attack and wonders if he still has some strength left in him for this kind of technique. Dongpal thinks that was the last attack he could blow, but Yul hits him to the ground badly and says he is quite determined. Dongpal thinks his destruction power is enough to overpower first-rate martial arts with just external arts, and they will all die if they don't get away. Yule drags him to the ground at a great distance, and everyone is shocked to see the third leader dying in front of them. Yule calls his wolf squad and says it's mealtime for them, while Juhua asks everyone to run away and alert the cult on what's happening there. Yule says there is a portion of food everywhere for them and asks them to eat as much as they want. He has called forth the beasts around the area too and says their bodies will be ripped to pieces and they will die unimaginably painful deaths. All the beasts surround them and the elder Jung is happy to see this interesting scene. The beasts of the demon cult are being subjugated to real beasts and this Jongsi is dotted with delusions. A swordsmanship who saved a family because he could not stand injustice, the romanticization of sharing a drink on a sailboat over friendship. However, Zhang Hu is just one face of the world, and it's not something he likes, but the world revolves around one rule, which the demon cult people love to chant. Eat and be eaten is the rule of beasts. In the end, humans are beasts too. Whether they rip someone to pieces or deceive them to their death, they kill and kill to reach the top. He thinks mortality and ethics mean nothing in the world of beasts, and it is the reason they exist in this world to struggle to climb to the top. Meanwhile, Dongpal gets up again and Yul says he doesn't need to struggle so hard and that he will die just like them anyway. Dongpal desperately remembers his third young master and wonders how he will save the squad members in this hell and fulfill his duties. Juhua is also worried about what she should do and she needs to find a way out of there and needs to think in a hurry. Meanwhile, a beast rushes toward her from behind and is about to attack her when someone appears from behind and slashes the wolf into two parts. They are shocked to see that it is the third young lord who has come there for their help, and Elder Jung is also shocked to see him. He jumps upon them to attack and says there sure are a lot of beasts. He uses his demonic energy to tear many of the beasts. The beasts rush toward him and Hajin says it will be even better if they all come together at him like that. He uses his demonic energy to kill them all while Yul is angrily watching him and wonders who he is. Hajin says he came there to kill just one guy but there is a whole mountain of trash he needs to get rid of. Everyone is watching him with hope, and he turns toward Yule and says he doesn't have the time for this today, but he will kill him too at least before leaving. He then sees Elder Young and releases a large amount of killing intent toward him. He then asks him to just wait for a bit and he will make Sahimi out of his flesh. On the other side, the facility master is having a cup of tea with the heavenly demon divine cult's general strategist, Ho Yoseon. He says she is throwing away her honesty, and she says the other person will be taken aback if she suddenly changes topics like that. He states that he is talking about the third young lord, and says she has been meeting him quite often these days. She wonders how he knew about this, or if he has a spy on her, and he tells her that the generella strategist position of the divine cult is rather lonely, so he has kept his ears open to what has been going on lately, and it's rather amusing otherwise he wouldn't be able to survive there. He tells her people called her a cold dictator and one of the top slayers of the cult, but she hasn't been living up to her nicknames recently. 
she asks him if he is comfortable saying those things to her face, and he replies that people say that it's not a sin to talk bad about someone, even if it's the cult leader as long as they are not present. He asks her to lessen his workload, and she thinks if things go wrong, he might be able to manipulate her. He acts like someone impulsive, but he's the scariest and pickiest person in the divine cult. Yoseong says he is curious about if the internal enlightenment facility is breaking their neutrality and supporting the third young lord. She emphasizes again that the internal enlightenment facility will not interfere in the successor fight. He asks her if she will do this as an individual, and she thinks that he is provoking him on purpose to try and see if she breaks. He says he can't interfere with the choice she makes, and he trusts her as she cares about the cult so much. He says he is curious why someone so loyal to the cult would send the third young lord outside of the cult without a single word to him. He then asks her not to take this as sarcasm or a threat, and he will not send her to the penal law hall or anything. She asks him why she is so curious about the third young lord, and he says this is just innocent curiosity. He exclaims that all of the divine cult has their attention focused on the third young lord and people kill others they don't even know, so he thought he would save the lives of people he doesn't know instead. He is a successor candidate who has been growing more influential and stronger at a very fast rate ever since resolving his Kai blockage. Yonsum says she can't describe how he is and he should meet him himself. He asks her if there is something about him that can't be explained and he smiles at her saying he has never seen him talk about someone in such a manner. She says he can meet him whenever he wants, and he says something interesting happens whenever he feels too bored. He is thinking of treating him to tea once he returns, and thinks he will take care of all the work he has until he gets back. On the other hand, Hajin has killed many wolves, and the elder young wonders if he is from the demon cult. He observes that he attacks the wolves, but the direction of his bloodthirst is pointed at him. Yule calls him furiously and asks how he dares to kill the Blood Wolf squad in front of his own eyes, and Hajin asks him if he is the leader of these mutts. He also asks him why he is playing subordinate to that old man, and there is no point in listening to a dead man. He releases his energy and says he doesn't know where he came from, but he will kill him if he is also from the demon cult. Hajin thinks this man smells like the wolves, and Yule orders the leader of the wolves squad to attack him. Hajin thinks he orders the wolves around using a connection through their energy core. But Goldie releases his energy and stares at the wolf, which scares him. He releases a weird sharp sound, and it is so loud that everyone grabs their ears to protect themselves. In the meantime, the wolf falls to the ground in front of Goldie, and he jumps upon him. Yule is shocked to see a small but powerful beast and thinks it's a different beast wearing the skin of a beast. He wonders if this is a mystical creature that causes all kinds of mysterious happenings in legends. It's not comparable to any beast in the southern savage beast plave, even the Tiger King looks pathetic in comparison. Hajin smiles and says he knows that he isn't just an ordinary fox, and Yule is surprised to see that he is not affected at all by that cry, while the cry should have put fear into the minds of all living beings who heard it. He asks Hajin who he is and why he is going around with a monster like that. He releases his demonic energy says he will rip open that mouth of his and uses the skill of divine southern wolf fist. Their fists collide with each other and Yule is shocked to see that his divine fist is losing to him. His muscles are being twisted his bones are being crushed and the bones in his left arm have been completely shattered. This isn't a matter of inner energy or skill and he is just that much stronger than him. He was always confident that he was superior in strength to anyone except for head bear. Suddenly, Hajin disappears in front of him, appears in just a second, and punches his stomach badly. Yule is still shocked at how he can lose to a mere demon cult member. Hajin throws him away at a distance and says he remembers a sect that controls best and a sect that is as strong as the Central Plains Great Sect. He releases his demonic energy and says we'll kill him at the moment. Yule wants to say him something but Hajin reacts quickly and cuts his head with the rock behind him. The Elder Jung is also shocked that the successor of the Southern Savage Beast Palace was killed by that young demon cult member. He then rushes toward the Elder Jung and says he has waited so long for him, but now he is dead. He jumps upon him thinking he could have just passed by since it was something that happened in his past life and he could just live a new life. But his legs kept hurting and he couldn't let it go and cut the same leg he cut off that day. 
He attacks him, but the elder Jung reacts in time and dodges his attack and is shocked to see the killing intent in his eyes. He wonders from where a demi-demon like him comes from and says he seems to be misunderstanding something. The ones that attacked his people were that group of beasts over there, and they were all unrelated to him. They have dealt with those wolves so this fight is now meaningless, and he will be frank, although the powerful triad may be antagonizing each other, that is to a certain extent political territory. He asks him if there is a need to fight to the death needlessly there, and asks him to stop there and put away his sword. Hajin smiles and says people really don't change and his wicked tongue is still the same. He asks him if he is scared to fight in a battle for the first time in a while. The elder Jung is surprised and says they have never met before. He asks him if they know each other. Hajin smiles and says if he thinks they simply know each other, he releases his demonic energy and disappears in front of him. He thinks the speed of the dispersing traces is too fast and blocks his attack at the same time he reaches him. However, he is facing a problem in dodging the attack because Hajin is so powerful, and Hajin says if he died from one swing, he would feel far too disappointed. The elder Young steps back and says the demon cult has created another obscene demon, and thinks he is stronger than he expected, but he can't just lose to a young man like him. He uses his sword to attack him, and Hajin thinks his body's aerodynamics are lower than his, so he receives internal injuries from an attack like this. His hidden move is white funeral swordsmanship, and he thinks the white sword dance may seem beautiful. The hidden blood third is as deadly as a poisonous snake's fangs, and now he will use his hidden technique to blow his attack. He uses his ninefold resilient calamity blade technique in the third form and eight cold hell's bloody lotus filler with cold air and prepares an attack toward the elder Jung. He is shocked to see that blade technique and thinks he has definitely seen it before. He thinks the Righteous Heavenly Alliance's worst secret weapon assassinated all sorts of masters under the command of the leading power. He remembers this is the Assassin King Chun Hajin's blade technique. The Elder Jung removes his clothes and asks him about who he is to be using Hajin's blade technique. Hajin asks him if he remembers who he is actually now. At the same time, Dongpul and Juhua rescue their luggage and restore everything they have lost. He then gives Juhua the life-sustaining pill, and she is surprised that he is giving her such a precious thing when his injuries are severe too. He replies that he can get more when he returns, but she needs to circulate her kai. She thanked him while he was worried because this was the worst situation, and he couldn't protect anyone properly at such an important moment. He received the young lord's help again this time, and he would have nothing to say even if he lost his rights as a guardian upon returning to the cult. However, he has never seen the young lord so furious before, and he feels like he has a deep resentment. Juhua tells him that the search has finished, so he can ask the demi-demon transportation unit to guard him, and now he needs to help the young lord. Dongpul says the third young lord doesn't need his help, but she says it's only right for all demons to G help the young lord, and not just him publicly, he is someone who shouldn't be there. She tells him that the only person who can help the young lord is him. In the meantime, Goldie comes to him and wants to say something, but Donpal doesn't understand what he is talking about. Goldie starts running toward a side and Donpal follows him. Conversely, the elder Jung thinks he definitely killed him properly, and he cut off his legs and beheaded him more cruelly and miserably than anyone. He wonders if Hajin raises a successor without anyone knowing, but this doesn't make sense because this boy is a demon. He asks him for one last time and asks him about who he actually is and Hajin replies if he is that curious, then he can find with his sword. The elder Jung unleashes his white lotus kai and uses the technique of white funeral swordsmanship, and when power and acuity are lacking, the overflowing inner power will pitch in for power and the enlightenment will revive acuity. The elder Jung thinks he even has the sword white crane sword, and this is not a body that will lose to a demi-demon. Hajin smiles and thinks with his level of enlightenment, and asks him if he thinks the white funeral swordsmanship will work on him before or now. He brings out the demonic energy and wants to rip him apart, and releases his dark shadow demonic art in the second stage. The elder Jung is shocked to see that much level of power, and Hajin destroys his white funeral swordsmanship with a single slash of a heavy blade. The elder Jung wonders if this young man's enlightenment is superior to his. He again rushes toward him to attack, but his movements are getting slower, and he feels like he has fallen into water, and his arms or legs are heavy, and it's hard to breathe. His senses are fine, but his body is slow, 
while that boy stays still and he wonders if his demonic arts shatter. Hajin now has clear eyes, and he wonders if he got rid of his bloodthirst, and his energy burst was just so great that he was disillusioned into believing the world had become slow. Suddenly, there is a huge destruction, and the elder Young falls to the ground. He shouts at Hajin and asks him if he knows who he is, and says he is the first elder of righteous heavenly alliance. Hajin jumps upon him and attacks him with his sword, but the elder Young blocks it with his sword. Soon, a crack appeared in the white crane sword, while Hajin's large blade was enveloped with atrocious demonic energy that allowed it to crash down with force to sever a mountain. He thinks Hajin must be barely over 20, so how can he be this superhumanly strong? Hajin asks him if he knows why he brought such a brutishly large sword because he knows well that when they are on a similar stage, his white funeral swordsmanship is especially weak to heavy blades. Moreover, if he was stronger than him in enlightenment, then he would be nothing in front of him. Suddenly, Hajin scatters his body in all directions, and Elder Jung is unable to find his direction. In an instant, he appears from behind cuts his ponytail, and says if he is an executioner of the righteous heavenly alliance, then he should know about Hajin's footwork. He exclaims that after he changes routes from martial arts to politics, and hasn't actually fought in so long, he has gotten rusty, and one year ago, he used the inescapable net formation as an ambush, but that was no fight. He asks him if he thinks he can push Dam Swayung and take the role of righteous heavenly alliance leader with that level of talent, and Elder Young asks him if he is really Hajin. He says that he hasn't known who he has been looking for since earlier. But if he wants to know about his identity, then they will start with his leg. He jumps upon him and cuts his right leg. Elder Jung falls to the ground and cries in pain and Hajin thinks he made the wrong judgment. Elder Jung thinks this boy is the first person to injure him this severely since he joined the Righteous Heavenly Alliance when he started practicing martial arts. He shouldn't have gotten into a fight with him from the beginning and thinks he needs to run if he wants to live. But suddenly, he is shocked to see that his condition has changed, and he releases a large amount of blood because he doesn't have enough demonic energy. The demonic vision higher heaven and earth gateway he forcibly opened is trying to close again, and if he keeps moving around like this, the little remaining demonic energy will go upstream, putting him into Kai blockage. He needs to find a way to refill the demonic energy and use primordial energy to continue the fight. The elder Jung observes that he has suddenly gotten pale, and his breathing is rougher. He is certain that he has used up most of his inner energy and observes that his demonic martial arts aren't complete yet. The only reason he managed to push him into such a tight corner was due to his usual martial arts technique. He thinks he can now win against him because he is in a higher realm, and it doesn't make sense for a kid from the demonic cult to be in a higher realm than him. He wants to use this chance to overpower him with one ultimate attack. He rushes toward him saying his good time has gone but Hajin reacts in time and slashes him into two parts. Hajin says this is the reason he should have left him alone and thinks freedom was the enmity and earnestness that pushed him through hell in his past life. He doesn't need any of that right now, but he just wanted to kill him. At this moment, he has taken his revenge and killed his enemy, but he wants to kill him several times more, and the rage and resentment won't subside. Meanwhile, Goldie and Dongpul reach him, but he has collapsed till then. Later, it is revealed that in the internal enlightenment facility, there are a total of five casualties, and the third squad of the Guardian Court suffered 22 deaths, and in total the count is 27 dead. Juhua apologizes to the facility master and feels herself responsible for this, but she says the ones who are at fault are the people who attacked them. She has accomplished her mission and what she needs isn't punishment but comfort and asks her to go and eat something. She thinks the third young lord has recovered Juhua's martial arts by more than half in just 10 days and he's eliminated all the monsters that massacred 80 demonic cult members on his own. She thinks the third young lord is a scary man and she will have to meet him again soon. At the same time Dongpul goes to see the first leader and apologizes to him for not being able to protect his people. He replies that he wouldn't even put him in that position if he thought he wasn't qualified. He decides to visit the families of the deceased himself, but Dongpul says he will do this because they are his squad members. The first leader gives him the report he wrote for the Guardian Court Master and asks Dongpul not to concern himself over this issue too much. He is the one who was in charge of this mission, so he needs to take responsibility. 
He says protecting someone is the same as saying he is going to die for their sake, and that is the essence of what they do. However, he needs to take some responsibility as the leader of the squad, so he will punish him in place of the court master. He will be relieved of his duties at the Guardian Court until his punishment is complete. He declares that the third leader, Dongpol is placed on indefinite suspension and issued him a secret order and he will not be reinstated as the third leader until this directive is fully executed. Dongpol thinks this suspension is hurting him, but he wouldn't be surprised even if he were expelled. The first leader states that from this point onward, Dongpol will act as the third young lord's personal guard. He exclaims that this isn't something he should wish for as someone inferior to the third young lord and asks him to learn lots from him before coming back. On the other side, Hajin wakes up in his room and is shocked to see that he is back again. He remembers that he passed out there and was brought back like a piece of burden, and Dongpol put him in the carriage. He gets up and gets out of his room thinking he can't be like this and remembers the moment he heard Young's name, he saw Red. He didn't know the resentment in him ran that deep, and now he wondered if he really wanted freedom or if it was revenge. He sees Dongpol outside and asks home when he arrives there, and he asks him to eat together since he is getting hungry. Dongpol says there is something he must tell him beforehand. He bows before him and says he is Dongpol and swears as his loyal servant to dedicate himself to protecting him as his personal guard. Heijin is surprised to hear about the personal guard and is shocked when Dongpol says he will reside there from now on and will act as his personal guard. Now, Hajin's dream of escape is escaping him, and now he won't be able to get freedom soon. After some time, Anqua offers them the food and they praise her cooking skill. Heijin thinks he came back alive, but that fight with Young was dangerous and unlike the demonic arts underground prison spirit guard gateway. His demonic vision of a higher heaven and earth gateway is at the second level, and it implodes the demonic energy itself to accumulate the essence of the demon endlessly. He needs a substitute until his dark shadow demonic art is complete, and it would help if he had a skill that would work against different types of martial arts like when he fought Yun. He asks Dongpol if he remembers when he brought him a blade last time and asks him where he got that. He replies that he got it from the Demonic King weapon storage, and that is one of the weapon storages maintained by the cult. He remembers that in the information provided by Yonism, there were references to weapon storage. Mind Demon Weapon Storage is the weapon storage accessible to ordinary members of the cult, and most members acquire their weapons from there. The Demonic King weapon storage is located deep within the heart of the cult, and this storage houses the treasured blades and swords of the cult. Only captains of combat squads and those of higher rank are permitted entry. Divine weapons are sometimes stored there as well. Similarly, the Heavenly Semen Weapon Storage is the cult's best weapon storage with very restricted entry. The only people with access are the cult leader and the successor. Even the Great Nine Demonic Elders cannot go in without the cult's leader's permission. He tells Dongpol that he needs the cult leader's permission to get into the heavenly demon weapon storage, and asks him if he knows how he can get the permission. Dongpol tells him that each of the cult leader's disciples is granted a single opportunity to enter the storage of the heavenly demon weapon. Hajin is shocked to think that he already went in there during the time he can't recall, and he can't go in anymore. He thinks he should have given up on that. Suddenly, someone knocks at the door, and it is the squad leader who has brought food for drink. He asks her if she doesn't work because she comes there quite often, and she says she pushed aside work to come there. He asks her to come again at a later time because he has somewhere he needs to be. She asks him where he is going, and he asks her if she wants to keep tabs on him. He then tells her that he is going to the weapon storage, but someone enters there and asks him if he should go to the heavenly demon weapon storage instead. The general strategist enters the house and says it has been seven years since they last met. He asks him to offer him a cup of tea, and he won't stay there for too long. He asks him if he going to the weapon storage, and asks him to have a cup of tea with him before he goes. Hajin says he doesn't know who he is, this isn't a tea house, and he is in the wrong place. Dongpol calls him and informs him that he is the general strategist, and he is shocked to hear this. He exclaims that it has been a while since they met each other, but it hurts that he doesn't recognize him. He remembers this person is the second in command in the divine cult, the general strategist Ho Yoseon. He asks him why he is going to the demonic king weapon storage, instead of the heavenly demon weapon storage, when he has already been there before. 
He says it seems like the sword he got last time isn't serving him anymore, and Hajin says that is why he is going to the weapon storage. Yes Yang says he heard that he is using quite the fancy blade technique usually, and asks him if he is changing his main weapon of choice. Hajin wonders why he is suddenly interviewing him, and is sure that he has come there for something. He then asks him if he wants his help to get into the heavenly demon weapon storage. Hajin asks if it is possible for him to get into the heavenly demon storage. Yes Young asks why he would lie about something he can verify immediately, and Hajin asks him if he wants something in return. Yes Young says it's a shame but life is about exchanges, and he seems to have a similar experience too. Hajin asks him about his price, and he asks him to let him have him for today. He just wants to talk and have a drink in the evening, and Hajin thinks he has some kind of scheme in his mind. After that, he goes inside to change his clothes and asks Dongpul to go see the internal enlightenment facility master and asks him if she met him while he was gone. If they did meet, then he has to ask her what they talked about and if she said anything about him. He thinks the general strategist Ye Seong is different from anyone he has met in the divine cult, and his words seem lighthearted, but they all carry meaning. He remembers what he said earlier and thinks he appeared as soon as he recovered after coming back to the divine cult. He comes outside thinking he is sure he met the internal facility master and must know that he went outside too. He just wants to avoid him right now, and the reason for that is, the moment he saw his face, his instincts urged him to avoid him. Yoseong looks toward him and asks if he is ready and Hajin thinks his net 6 power technique reacts so intensely just from seeing him, there must be something he doesn't know. However, they start walking, and he recounts an unbelievable story about going to enjoy nature on his first vacation and getting robbed by bandits instead. His words oscillate between lie and truth, and Hajin thinks he is very skilled at concealing his true self. Hajin says he is the really brave one there, and Ye Seong says he earned a vacation to get out, but he sneaked out. Hajin thinks he already knows that, and asks him not to go running off to the demon lord about this, and Ye Seong says he is admitting too quickly. Hajin asks why he would lie when he already knows the truth, and asks him about the real reason he came to see him. Ye Seong replies he can't just help himself when it comes to his curiosities, and says they still have quite a way to go until the heavenly demon weapons storage. Hajin says he has no choice but to stop, and it must be true that he went on that trip on his own. He doesn't feel the presence of any escort warriors. He takes out his sword says the atmosphere is just way too off, and asks him if he is ready to have his head go flying. Yo Seong replies he didn't expect this turn of events, while Hajin is at the point that a predictable plot is no fun. Ye Song asks him to tell him at least a reason why he is doing this, but Hajin counter-questioned him why he is doing this. He doesn't know the real reason, but he is not there out of curiosity or goodwill, and Ye Seong asks him if he will threaten him to try and find out. Hajin says this is not just a simple threat, but he is fully prepared to kill him. Ye Seong exclaims if he kills him there, then he won't be able to escape the consequences of that even if he is the third young lord. He asks him to put his sword back, and this can be considered treason, and says he will count to three. He can feel the determination in his blade, and he might actually die, while Hajin asks him for one last time why he came to visit him. He also threatens him saying he will kill him if he says he came out of curiosity, and also puts a cut on his neck. Ye Seong asks him how he knew about this, but Hajin says he shouldn't respond to a question with a question, and he has already told him that was his last chance. They made a deal and Ye Seong asks him to tell how he knew he had other intentions. Hajin replies it was just his intuition, and has quite the sixth sense, and he already knows that the world doesn't function logically. When his logic and emotions clash, he acts out his emotions to lead him to so that he won't have any regrets at the very least. Yo Seong is surprised to hear these kinds of words from the third young lord and remembers the time when he asked the demon lord why he was making him the general strategist when he had not even seen his skills. He replies that it was just his sixth sense and asks him to keep one thing in mind, the world doesn't run only based on logic. Smart people like him forget this often, but they need to work on their intuition. He told him that logic may get him the answer to the present, but intuition gets his answer to the future. After hearing those words, he bowed down to him and didn't even bow down when he met the imperial prince, but he couldn't help but bow down to the demon lord. Unlike the prince who had just given him orders, he had taught him a lesson. 
Now, he tells Hajin that if he doesn't know the answers to something, then he should ask someone else, maybe they'll know the answer. Hajin asks him what he meant by this statement, and Yosyang says he wanted to see how he would react if he put him in an awkward situation. For example, to have him enter the weapon storage, and then say that he actually doesn't have the right to send anyone in there. Hajin says that he would have put him in there, and then claimed that he entered without permission. If that were to happen, even the demon lord's disciples wouldn't be able to avoid disciplinary action. Trespassing in a restricted area like that is a heavy crime and calls him a wicked person. Yesyong says he is often called a psycho by many people. Hajin asks him to split their ways, but he asks him about the heavenly demon storage and drinks with him. Hajin says he is not going to get drinks with someone who is going to send him to prison just for the sake of satisfying his own curiosity, and he doesn't need to go to the heavenly demon weapons storage anyway. Yosyang says he thought he would be a man of his word, and he pulled all-nighters the last few nights for this day, but Hajin asks why he should care about that. Yosyang tells him that he knows already that he sent an escort warrior to the internal enlightenment facility master, and he guesses that it was to warn her. Hajin thinks if he knows that, then he is more than just a nuisance. He gets sad and says the internal facility master doesn't trust him anymore and asks him to be a bit nicer to him. He blames Hajin saying he has ruined the only relationship he had in the divine cult, and he has no other friends there. Hajin agrees to have a drink with him, and Yosyang says they will stop by the weapons storage first. After some time, he is shocked to see Hajin with so many blades and weapons and asks him if he didn't come there just for one sword. Hajin says he took him in there once, not to take just one thing, and Yosyong has nothing to tell him. He thinks he doesn't truly know someone until he meets them in person, and the internal enlightenment facility master was right about that. He thinks the third young lord looks like some old martial artist who has been through hell and back has possessed his body. However, he can't doubt him because he made it out of the Demonic Judgment Pavilion alive, but he's not someone who would harm the Divine Cult, and he assumes that is also why the Demon Lord has left him alone. After a while, Donpul reaches there and is surprised to see all the weapons with him. He tells him that he got these weapons from the Heavenly Demon Weapon Storage. He is surprised to see the Seven Knights Blade, and its official name is the Dark Demon Flaming Knight Blade. The blade is known for its rather plain look, but carries a subtle, bloodthirsty energy. It was the seventh heavenly demon's favorite back in the day. Those twin blades are the northern winter winds of red and blue, the meteor twin blades, and the seven knights blade is famed because of its owner, but the meteor twin blades truly embody the term divine weapon. The unique thing about the meteor twin blades is that they are not demonic weapons, and that's why even the martial artists of the orthodox faction cover them. Dong Paul praises him for bringing back amazing weapons, and Hajin says he just liked them, and he won't keep them if they don't feel right in the battle. Dong Paul thinks the third young lord is more concerned about whether the sword suits him than its history or fame, and that is what he expected from him. After a while, he shows him a sword and asks if he knows about it, but he replies that he has never seen it before. Hajin says it was tucked away in the corner of the storage and asks him if he wants to try holding it, and when he picks it up, he feels like it is really heavy and its weight is about 30 of 40 kilograms. Hajin says it's not something he would use for long battles, but there's something about it that draws him. Unlike the other weapons that were displayed on shelves, this one was just in a corner, so he didn't even know its name. He has been calling it the Dragon Scale Blade because of its handle and Dongpul thinks his young master really has a bad naming sense. He was amazed when he saw the young master at the solitary bamboo grove and was handling all weapons effortlessly. He then gives him another sword and asks him to unsheath, and he trusts his judgment, but he can't be sure it's to his liking. However, it suits his heavy and serious martial arts style, so he chooses it, and Dongpul unsheathes the sword on his command. It's one of the Divine Cult's five great demonic swords and one of Zhang Hu's ten great demonic swords, the Silent King Sword. The Silent King Sword is also known as the Sword of Silence and doesn't reveal all its demonic power unless it finds the owner worthy. But once it recognizes a worthy owner, it unleashes incredible force. This is a sword handpicked for him by the young master from the Heavenly Demon Weapon Storage, and he can't thank him enough, but overdoing it might diminish the favor he's shown. He is determined to protect him his entire life. He bows before him again and swears to be the best demon cult member, and Hajin just smiles at seeing him. 
Suddenly, someone knocks at the door and says it is a message from the demon god's palace, and Hajin thinks this seems to be horrible for him. After some time, he is in front of the demon lord, pays his respects to him, and asks him to have a drink with him. He hopes that the demon lord won't ask him about sneaking out. The demon lord asks him about his training and Hajin says he is being too kind to him. First, the demon lord says he was pretty harsh with the fourth, and Hajin is shocked that he came out of nowhere. The fourth Serpent King demonic art is a newly revised version of the Geoxa family's martial arts. The demon lord says he was stubborn and skilled, and not many would think of inventing a new martial art at his age, and it started off poorly but gradually improved over three years. Eventually, the demonic art became quite formidable, and Hajin thinks he is talking a lot today, and he doesn't know what point he is trying to make though. After a while, the demon king says the fourth's demonic art couldn't be considered complete, and he had talent, but wasted it on plotting schemes. Someone who doesn't know his own talent is just an ignorant fool, and the demon lord abhors those who are ignorant. In the end, he was disappointed with the fourth, and he shouldn't have wasted his life like that. Then, he defeated him, which was totally unexpected for him. He already knew about the fourth's ambitions and that he would never take his position, but he didn't expect him to fall out of the succession race so soon. He said to abhor those who are ignorant and asked Hajin if he knew what kind of people he admired and respected. He admires those kind of people who defy his expectations, and he did exactly that and more. Therefore, he admires and respects him, and Hajin is shocked to see that the world's best demon respects him. Admiration and respect are difficult to obtain, but someone as great as him is telling him that he admires and respects him. His excitement induces pride followed by a wave of self-loathing. He thinks he was raised as the Righteous Heavenly Alliance's secret weapon and lived as the Alliance leader's loyal dog. Having endured countless horrors, the term pitiful barely captures the life he has led, and now he is being acknowledged by the Heavenly Demon Cult's Demon Lord. He hates himself for how much he is enjoying this recognition, and a single compliment from the Demon Lord has made him so proud. He has dreamt of freedom his whole life, but at this rate, he wonders if he will ever be able to free. However, recognition from someone of his stature is something any martial artist would take pride in, and he thinks he shouldn't be so hard on himself for feeling this way. He thinks emotions are real, and in the end, even these unwanted emotions are a part of him. The demon lord observes something again and says he has done something against his expectations again, he seems to hate the fact that he was excited, but he accepted it as a part of himself immediately after. He tells him that he is growing and changing every moment, and that is why he is great. Hajin didn't expect him to say that. The demon lord told him about the general strategist who visited him last night and told him that he went into the heavenly demon weapon storage. He asked him if he had tried out the sword he liked, but Hajin said he hadn't tried it yet. The demon lord says the seven knights is savage the meteor is sharp, and he has good eyes. He would have been disappointed if he had chosen some relic without considering its suitability for him, and Hajin is shocked to see that he brought the weapons from the entrance with his sheer will. He wonders how much stronger the demon lord is, and he tells him that all these swords are a reward for him. He asks him to pick one he likes, and his gaze seems to offer and ask for something at the same time. He intends to teach him something and Hajin observes awareness and becomes understanding as soon as he grasps his intent his instinct to attack surges. He grabs one of the swords and releases his demonic energy, and there is a huge destruction there. He wonders if his attack worked against him, but the demon lord stays still, and there isn't even a scratch on his body. Considering the traces on the ground, this ultimate attack was perfect, and he neither dodged nor blocked, and he wondered how he was perfectly fine. The demon lord says he is impressed by his attack, but he asked him to teach him something not to attack him. He thinks he pinpointed the exact moment he would be vulnerable, and he wonders if this is an insight or if he was born with this. It was an instinct driving towards death like that of a beast. The demon lord says he has a question. He was about to launch a hand art attack after his ultimate strike, and he asked him why he stopped. Hajin is shocked that he noticed his intentions in that split second and says there was no specific reason to stop, he just had to, and it wasn't because he knew that he stopped. He thinks this wasn't because he knew that he stopped, and if he had charged in, he would have been struck by his barrier, so that was also an instinct. The demon lord asks him to get ready for the next round, and he says he will teach him, and he doesn't even know what he possesses yet. 
Therefore, he has yet to teach him anything and asks him to come at him with the intent to kill this time. He opens the gates of hell of the dark shadow demonic art and uses nine heaven contraction divine steps. He jumps up on the demon lord to attack and slashes his sword in the air, but the demon lord stays unharmed this time too. There is a huge destruction there and Hajin is trying to attack him again and again. On the other side, the berserk squad leader enters Hajin's house and asks Onghua about where he is. She tells him that he is at the demon lord's palace, and she wonders how he is busier than her when he is jobless. Enkwa gets angry about this and says she is so disrespectful to the young master, and the squad leader asks if she is not scared to be saying that in front of her. However, she can't hit her because she is too small so she holds back. Meanwhile, Dongpal approaches them and says they don't know when the young master will return, so if she is there to drink, then she can go back. She asks him to stop messing with his sword and go to the guardian court for training. But she is shocked to hear that he is actually assigned as the young master's bodyguard and also asks him where he got that sword. He tells her that the young master gave it to her and asks him where her sword is since he gave one to him. She shouts at him and they both wish that young master came back quickly because they can't handle this woman. On the other side, Heijin is out of breath and is tired, but the demon lord asks him to get up again and attacks him. He thinks the inescapable net formation of the righteous heavenly alliance wasn't that bad and he is only half as strong as he was in his past life, but he gave it to him all each time, but the demon lord is perfectly fine. However, he learned a lot from this and fighting someone as strong as him is a lesson in itself. The demon lord always made him anxious, but he finally did something nice and he asked him to come back to the gazebo. In the evening, the demon lord takes him to his room and asks him how his training was today. Hajin replies that half a day felt like half a year and also gives him something that indicates the missing parts of his martial arts. He tells him that his demonic arts are on par with the ten great demonic arts, but there were gaps since it's a recent creation. He pours a drink for him and says this should be of help and Hajin is shocked that he spotted the weaknesses and needed changes in the dark shadow demonic art in just half a day. He had never received anything like this before and he didn't know he had this side to him and this was the lesson he was teaching him. He thanks the demon lord, but he says it's an obvious reward that should be given to a disciple who has surprised his master. Hejin is shocked that the demon lord can say things like that too and promises him that he won't disappoint him. After that, the demon lord thinks the third young lord is interesting, but interest in someone means that he is still in the grasp of the demon. It had been a long time since someone aimed their sword at him, and he saw the traces of the ultimate blade that he managed to master. He then thinks about the legend of the mythical fox that brings war to a nation, and if that legend is true, the one to cause the war must dance with death. The demon lord hopes that he understands death better than anyone, and it is almost time to let the war happen. At the same time, at the heavenly demon divine cult military office, the first guardian asks the general strategist about the demon lord's health. Yoseong asks him what he means by his health, and he thinks the only answer he can give is what the internal enlightenment facility master said, and he must have had a rough time. He replies that it's difficult to learn everything about a person from just one meeting. The first guardian says that is why he is asking him, the one with the keenest insight into the cult. Yoseong was happy to hear that the first guardian praised him and asked him why he had asked him about this. He tells him that two days ago, the third young lord was summoned by the demon lord to the demon god's palace. The demon lord taught him for half a day, and no successor candidate has even received his teachings. Yoseong is shocked to hear that the demon lord did that, and he also heard that he opened the heavenly demon weapon storage for the third young lord. He says that it's not his place to meddle in the succession, and the demon lord's will shall prevail, but he can't stand by while the balance within is disrupted, and he doesn't think they should take sides. Yoseong asks him if he is there to reprimand him, and he replies that he lacks the authority experience and wisdom to reprimand him. He is just there as the head of the guardian court to express his concerns about the person who is at the peak of the cult's politics. Yoseong says he knows that when he asked about the third young lord, he actually wanted to ask him if he is someone worth opening the heavenly demon weapon storage for. He replies that opening the storage for him wasn't necessary and someone who's already ahead of others doesn't need a divine weapon. Moreover, he can't tell exactly what kind of person the third young lord is, but from that day's conversation with him, he came to understand him a bit better. 
He says he is just someone who strives to understand and measure the differences among their cult members and all to assist the demon lord in making accurate assessments. After that, the first guardian thinks he has misunderstood the general strategist all this time and finds out that his devotion to the cult is real. Meanwhile, the general strategist thinks discussing the future of the divine cult with the first guardian, with whom he has only spoken a couple of times, is also because of the third young lord. On the other hand, Hajin and Dongpul are sparring with each other, and he tells Dongpul that he is suppressing his killer instinct too much. His identity as a guardian probably pushes him to protect him and asks him to put it his responsibility positively. He says he is pretty strong, but he is still not good enough to protect him. He doesn't want to see him die before him because he wants to protect him, and Dongpul wonders if he is holding himself back. However, Hajin asks him to come with him to eat since it is enough for today. Suddenly, he senses a powerful energy outside the gates and thinks an interesting guest is there. After a while, Heavenly Demon Divine Cult Penal Law Hall Master Gagu is in front of him and he asks him what brought him there. He says they weren't exactly close enough for casual visits and he says he is aware that the Mara Festival is near. He asks him to remember he said he preferred directness over beating around the bush and Hajin appreciates that he can remember that. He asks Hajin for help and he asks him why he helps someone who doesn't even like him. Gagu says his beliefs haven't changed, and he is still a dangerous person, but he thought if they shared a common enemy, then he might assist him. Hajin asks him what he meant by common enemies, and he says as a succession candidate, all the other contenders are his rivals. At the Mara festival, he plans to arrest and imprison one of the disciples. It is revealed that the Mara festival is the ancient ritual honoring the soul god of the heavenly demon divine cult and the master of the sixth sky of the world of desire. In the past, they would even offer human sacrifices to Mara. That was when the heavenly demon divine cult started becoming notorious as a demon cult. However, the current Mara festival is different, and despite their doctrines and sacrifices, the heavenly demon divine cult is aware of worldly affairs. Ultimately, the Mara festival of today is simply an ancient rite, no different from a demon cult's Murum festival. Hajin says he has heard these things from Dongpul before and asks him about the connection between asking for help and the Mara festival. Gagu reveals that during this year's Mara festival they will imprison one of the heirs in the criminal court jail and they won't touch the seven and six unless they commit a major crime. Hajin asks if there are any heirs other than the remaining six and he replies that there was someone who was nominated as an heir and he will arrive on time for the Mara festival. It's the demon sword family's oldest son. It is stated that as the representatives of the seven families of the demon cult, the demon sword family are considered the greatest when it comes to swordsmanship. However, Hajin never heard that the eldest son of the demon sword family became an heir candidate, and he asks Gagu why he wants to lock him up. He reveals that he robbed and murdered seven believers of this cult and framed an innocent demi-demon for this crime. The temple made a grave error and the offender is still alive and well, while an innocent demi-demon who gave his all to the cult was wrongly executed. This causes embarrassment to the temple, and they have to capture him and deliver him to the bereaved family of the demi-demon who died unjustly. Hajin asks him how he plans to catch him, and he replies this is the reason why he is looking for him. At the same time, at the Heavenly Demon Divine Cult Internal Enlightenment Facility, he goes to see Yonsum and apologizes to her for coming with no notice. He tells her that he has come because of something unjust and tells her that two years ago, one of the maids who worked at the Internal Enlightenment Facility was murdered. He demands information on the victim and Yonsum asks him if this is the reason he is there. Hajin asks her if she knows that the real culprit is someone else, and she asks him if the penal law hall asked him for help. She again asks him if he has learned the identity of the culprit, and Hajin says he can't tell her. Hajin feels the pressure of demonic energy coming from her intense, and it happened several years ago, but her fury has not lessened. After that, she gives him a total of five scrolls that contain information on the victim, and when he leaves, she thinks the third young lord didn't mention the Mara festival today. He probably thinks she might discover the real culprit's identity, and if the penal law hall could solve this with their investigative skills, they would have done it themselves. But they have turned to one of the heirs for help, and this means that even the penal law hall members can't easily touch the true culprit. The true culprit likely is a high-ranking official demi-demon who is participating in the Mara festival. 
she orders her subordinates to bring her the list of high-ranking officials participating in this year's Mara festival, especially from the seven families of the demon cult. On the other side, Hajin is reading some books on law because this has to do with capturing a criminal, but now he is tired. He thinks any other heir could have interfered and handled this better, and he should have spent this time searching for a way to escape from there instead. It's more practical to pursue his dream of getting out quickly, and he thinks it's laughable that a former assassin is talking about what is right. He doesn't intend to be a threat, but he wants to remain human, and when faced with a request like this, humans should share the outrage, even if they can't help. After a while, he comes out of his room where Dongpul and Angkwa are waiting for him, and he asks Dongpul about his condition. He replies that he feels amazing, and he never had this power within him, and he tells him that he was suppressing his potential so harshly. Dongpul says he is ashamed to face him, but Hajin says he should be ashamed of the mindset that has held him captive. He instructs him that the point of a strong will is that his mindset should be rigid, and if this goes on, he will eventually face a heavy blow. Dongpul gets embarrassed and Hajin says he was just joking with him, and says they should slowly go and check out the culprit's face. The festival has begun, and there is a huge crowd everywhere. There are a lot of food stalls, and Hajin really likes everything there and says no wonders Angkwa was so excited to go out, and he is glad that he gave her time off during the festival. Dongpul is surprised that the young lord is so happy and enjoying the festival. After a while, they reach a traveling theater, and it is a story about the last surviving member of a fallen family overcoming adversity, becoming a hero, and emerging as the strongest in Jonghu. Hajin enjoys the show and says the plot is obvious, but cliché stories are usually enjoyable. Suddenly, he sees squad leader Yui there, but she doesn't respond to him, and she is still upset because he declined her invitation to go drinking a few times. But he is surprised to see that she is crying because of the play, but gets scared to see Hajin there. She gets so embarrassed because he has seen her while crying. Suddenly, there is an announcement of the Demon Sword family's arrival, and they are the ones he is waiting for. It's the ceremonial entrance of the family to which the culprit belongs, and it's the Demon Sword family. Among the seven families of the Demon Cult, they are renowned for their martial prowess. Their lord's name is Jai Wunwi, and the Demon Sword family hasn't attended the Mara Festival in three years. And this time, the Demon Sword family's elite squad, the Honorable Sword Force, has come too. He heard that the Demon Sword family's eldest son will become the Demon Lord's disciple during the Mara Festival and everyone is amazed to see that the Demon Sword family's martial arts are truly impressive up close. Dongpul thinks he exudes the stern aura of a master at the pinnacle and holds himself unwavering dignity, and it is a good thing he came up there. He tells Hajin that the Demon Sword family lord's presence is even greater than he thought, but is shocked to see that he is not there. He stands in front of the family's lord and asks him if he is the Demon Sword family's lord. He tells him that a while ago, he got greatly injured and lost his memories, and he might have met him before, but he doesn't have the memories. The Lord replies he doesn't know who he is, but he believes that he is well aware of the great disrespect he is showing. Hajin acts shocked and asks him what he has done to disrespect him, and the Lord calls him a quite foul-mouthed young man. Hajin says he asked for a reason, but he just called him foul-mouthed, and that is the attitude that uptight old men often show him. He gets furious about this, and the swordsmen he is commanding are radiating immense energy right now, but a tiger won't be intimidated by wolves. On the other hand, the demon sword family lord remains composed despite the provocation, and he says he doesn't know why he is being so disrespectful, but he will generously overlook it for now. Hajin says he has come there to ask him a question and asks what he would do if he saw his child commit a despicable crime. The Lord stays quiet and Hajin asks him if his question is hard to answer, and he replies that it's his policy to avoid pointless discussions. He releases his demonic energy and says it is the first day of the Mara festival, so he will let this disrespect slide once more move now. His energy is so powerful that people find it difficult to deal with, and it is that sword surge hand technique of the demon sword family lord. Dongpul and Yui think it is astonishing how powerful it is, considering he merely used sword energy to amplify the Kai surge with his hand. Heijin asks him to stop his hand technique and to hurry and respond, and the Lord is surprised to see that he is perfectly fine even in the face of his sword surge hand technique. This time, Hajin releases his demonic energy and asks if his question is that hard, and the Lord is shocked to see that he is using his martial art in front of him. 
he hits the ground and breaks it and asks him to respond to his answer. And the Lord is shocked to see his incredible power and force. He wonders who this young man is and what he wants from him. The Lord's horse loses its balance and is about to fall, but he flies in the air and asks him how he dares attempt to attack him with his petty martial arts. Hajin observes that he is controlling his descent with just his inner power, and he says if they are talking about who attacked first, then it was him. He just returned the favor and controlled his strength since he didn't manage to touch him. The Lord is shocked to see that the splitting of the ground stopped just before the horse's hooves, and he wonders how a young man like him controls his core energy to that extent. It's not as if he used a weapon or if he is able to control the aftermath of the attack just by advancing, and the boy seems to be a peak expert. He asks Hajin about his identity, but he asks him to answer his question first. The Lord says he has no obligation to answer someone he doesn't know, and Hajin says he did things without thinking, and now that he thinks about it, the Lord again asks him about who he is, and Hajin says he is certainly not someone he can speak to in that tone. In the meantime, Dongpil comes forward and pays his respects to the third young lord, which puts the family lord in a state of shock. They are all shocked to learn about his identity and Dongpil announces that he has come to escort the dignified third young lord of the cult. Hajin exclaims that his personal guard has revealed his identity. On the other side, at the heavenly demon cult penal law hall, a guard informs Gagu that there is a report that the third young lord and the head of the demon sword family are currently at a standoff. Gagu replies there may be an emergency situation and orders him to send the party members outside without the cult members knowing right now. He wonders if the third young lord was planning to make the first move, and he knew that he was a double-edged sword, but to think that even the handle was bladed. At the same time, the lord's sons are also surprised to see him, and this is their first time seeing the third young lord in person. The lord thinks he looks familiar to him, and it must have been just after his facial hair started growing around the time he was named Third Young Lord, but the difference between the Third Lord then and now is enormous. Hajin smiles and asks them why they are staring at him and if there is something on his face and the Lord with his army greets him and pays their respect to him. Hajin thinks this is a subtle greeting that doesn't show much respect and the family lord says he didn't realize that he was the Third Young Lord. However, he says as a successor candidate to the divine cult, he has also shown words and actions that deviate from etiquette, and they should act as if nothing happened. Hajin says he is fine with that, and it's not like he is there to pick a fight, but he still hasn't answered his question. The family lord says he will be grateful if he can repeat the question, and Hajin says he can repeat it as many times as he wishes. He asks him how he would react if he were to witness the shameless acts of crime committed by his child. The family lord wonders what his intent is in asking such a question, but at that time, everyone is watching them, and there is nothing good to come from prolonging a conversation with a high-status monkey. He replies that he will definitely follow the laws, and Hajin says the word law is quite ambiguous. He again asks him if that means he will follow the family's laws, and he replies that the laws of his family are stricter than those of any other family, and if such a moment ever comes, he will hold the child accountable for the crime without hesitation. Hedgen asks him if he should assume that since he is his child, he will be held even more strictly accountable for his crimes, he thinks he is exaggerating it, but he can't just argue with him because so many people are watching. However, he replies that he will act according to the law and asks him how he can call himself the head of the family even if he can't control his own child. He believes that his children and, of course, other members of the demonic cult would never act shamelessly. Hajin thinks these words reflect his pride as the head of the demonic sword family, and he can at least hear the sincerity in these words. He apologizes to him for holding him up, congratulates him on entering the divine cult, and asks them to move from there. He then apologizes to the eldest son of the demonic sword family, Jai Kangyun, and the third son, Jai Youngyun. He observes their eyes, and they view him as an eyesore, and he thinks they can't do anything, even when they give him those looks. After that, Dongpul says the head of the demonic sword family was impressive, but the Kai path of the eldest son, Jai Kangyun, wasn't bad either. Hajin says that Gai has a murderous aura, and it's not the kind he would get from a war zone. Otherwise, the aura wouldn't be so vivid or so thick, and he is sure that he probably killed a person every day if not every other day because it's the aura of someone who has killed a person who didn't resist. 
Dongpil says if he did kill someone every other day, that would be a huge amount, and the head of the demonic sword family didn't seem to notice it at all. However, he observes that the more suspicious one is not Jai Kangyun, but the third son Jai Youngyun. A young kid like him is hiding such ridiculous strength. He feels a fragment of secret power that can be felt with the sense completed with the help of Li Chen Sang's ninefold demonic arts. He feels that Jai Younghyun's internal power is equal to, if not greater than, his and Hajin thinks things are starting to get more interesting. After that, they go to a restaurant, and Yui is still jealous of Dongpil because Hajin gave him a sword. He asks her why the young lord would give her a treasure weapon, and what she has done for the sake of the young lord. She replies that she didn't expect the young lord to be like that, and this is not how human relationships work. She asks him why there is discrimination against her. She starts crying and says it's not just some regular treasured sword, but one of the five great demonic swords of the divine cult, the Silent King Sword. She says it's such a waste for the great amount of demonic aura sleeping within the sword to be held by a yellow toad, and this is a sword that recognizes its owner. She cries that a guy like him will never be able to demonstrate the true value of this sword even if he trains his entire life. People in the restaurants are watching them surprisingly, and a mysterious person is watching them from a corner. Meanwhile, Dongpil gets up and says he should hurry and return before the castle gates close since it's already dark out there. Engwa calls him from behind and asks him to escort her, and she tries to get Yui up, but she is so much drunk and is crying for the weapon. She again repeats the stuff like he only favors Dongpi, and there are many good things related to her if he looks carefully. Suddenly, she observes so much demonic and murderous aura from that person. On the other hand, Hajin goes to see the penal law hall master, and tells him that he was able to confirm one thing. The head replies in front of all those people that he will hold his children to even stricter standards. He is sure that the Lord wouldn't thoughtlessly say such things as the head of the demonic sword family, and he wouldn't be able to cover blatantly for the real criminal, even if he wanted to with so many watching because he would lose face. He exclaims that respect is the key to determining the rise and fall of power, and he doesn't believe that the head of the demonic sword family is foolish enough to sacrifice his family just for the sake of his eldest son. Gagu says he understands his reasoning, but that comes after catching the real criminal, and if they push too hard without any evidence, the angered sword of the head of the demonic sword family will be aimed at them. Hajin leaves saying his plan will work out somehow, and Gagu asks him what he wants in this case. Hajin asks him why he is asking that out of the blue, and Gagu says when he first met him, he had thought that he had no interest in the divine cult. He says that it was odd to be chosen as his disciple, and asks him how he could not have even a trace of ambition, and Hajin replies that he is overestimating him. Gagu reveals that he notices that he speaks like the people from the righteous faction, and ambition to reach a higher place isn't the thirst for power the essence of a demon. Hajin gets surprised at his prediction and says ambition only makes life harder, and he just wants to eat well, poop well, and sleep well. Gagu asks him why he didn't reject his request, and if he had said just one word of rejection, and he wouldn't be in this predicament. He has come to realize why he finds it dangerous and inexplicably unsettling. He states that the third young lord isn't a person that suits this cult, and Hajin is shocked to hear this. He tells him that tomorrow is when high-ranking members of the demonic martial factions pay their respects to the demon lord. After the ancestral rites, there's a competition to determine the future of the demonic Miram faction. There will also be reports on all the recent unpleasant incidents, and the incident where the great elder of the righteous heavenly alliance died will be discussed too. Heijin asks him if he has captured him if he knows already, and if it isn't a crime to leave the cult without permission. Gagu replies that the demon lord didn't wish for it because he looks favorable upon him and he wouldn't want him captured by the penal law hall. However, it doesn't mean he would specifically order him not to capture him and he let him go knowing the great crime he committed. Gagu asks him just as he overlooked him leaving the cult, then if he can overlook one of his crimes and Hajin asks him what crime he has done. Gagu rushes to attack him, saying he is about to commit it now, but Hajin reacts in time and dodges his attack. Hajin observes that he has become faster and stronger, and he is not the same as when he merely took attacks last time. Suddenly, he appears from behind, but he uses his sword to attack him, and Hajin wonders why he is suddenly going all out. He uses multiple sword techniques and attacks him again and again, and Hajin claims that he was hiding such a fine sword. 
Gagu says the third young lord still hasn't shown his true martial arts, and Hajin observes he keeps talking like he knows something about him. He gets displeased and uses the six Zinsective Hellish Winds technique, and there is a huge destruction there. But he is shocked to see that even when he increases the core energy, it only loses power and bends the sword, and his sword pressure is incredible. Hajin asks him why he is trying to boost his morale before they start for real, and asks him to end this night's sword dance there. Gagu says he will now understand why the demon lord is interested in him, and Hajin says he will overlook it as promised, so he should go and stay alert. He calls him from behind and asks him to be away of the demon lord. He is a dark person he can't see an end, and so bright that human eyes can't behold. He has heart-wrenching anger and overwhelming resentment that's turned cold, and he's like a volcano ready to erupt. He is a person who finds amusement in everything, yet fears it all, and the one who walked into hell looking at the sky, and before knowing it, stood on a cloud looking down at hell. Hajin replies he can't understand a thing he just said, and Gagu asks him to remember these words if the time comes. Moreover, he says the third young lord is the leader of this matter, so he asks him to lead them well and Hajin thinks how he can drop all this on him out of nowhere, giving him such a headache. On the other side, Donpul is passing through a forest, and he stops at a place and says the third young lord was correct that he was truly him. Suddenly, the same man from the restaurant appears and attacks him, and Donpul is shocked to see the demonic family's third son, Jai Youngian. He is shocked to see that Donpul is unscathed even with his full power, and he asks him to get a grip. Donpul observes that he is so different from this morning and he was clearly a healthy and conscious young man then, and he asks Dongpul to give him that sword if he wants to live. Dongpul thinks he looks like a demonic beast, mad to the bone, and he rodes at him to give him the sword. He gets mad and rushes to attack him again, and has such an incredible sword music art. It's not just a simple hand sword technique, and his whole arm is as hard as a treasured weapon, while his martial arts aren't anything special. However, his internal energy is extraordinary in both quality and quantity and Dongpul finds it difficult to handle this. It's as if he had extracted only the daimonic energy and internal energy and absorbed more than he could handle. He jumps upon him to attack, but Yui appears from nowhere and punches him to push him away. He pushes away but gets stable to maintain his distance, while Yui exclaims that she doesn't like ganging up on one person, but she will make an exception for him. She inquires Dongpul about his condition, and he thanks her for saving his life, and she asks him to save his energy, but it looks like they will be pooping blood together soon, and she can tell after that one hit. His body is as hard as a 1,000-year-old calls iron, and they wonder just how much internal energy he has, and he again rushes toward them asking for the sword. There is an explosion there, and he grabs the sword and is absorbing the demonic energy from the Silent King's sword. He is happy to taste the demonic energy and says it's the best, and Dongpul tries to stop him, asking how he can dare to do that to the sword given to him by the third young lord. In the meantime, Yui appears from behind and attacks him with her sword, but his head is so hard that she can't touch him. He is ready to attack them again, and she is shocked at what this monster is. His power is beyond enlightenment, and even if he is an expert, then a couple of levels higher, it would be more dangerous. Suddenly, he gathers his energy in his hand and throws an attack toward them. Yui falls back to the ground and she wonders what kind of energy he has that it is unlimited. Donpul asks her to hold on until the young lord arrives. He gathered his energy again and was about to attack them, asking them for the sword, but Hajin appeared there in the meantime and blocked his attack. He asks Donpul if he is not tired of being protected by the one he is supposed to protect, and he replies he has nothing to say to him now. Hajin apologizes to him for being late and says he got held up by an annoying guy. In the meantime, the man again rushes to attack him, and Hajin dodges him wondering how his power can be so strong when his martial arts skills are like a child swinging a wooden sword. He craves demonic energy and asks him to give him more, and Hajin observes his overflowing internal energy is maximizing the body's defense and reaction speed. Additionally, he has enough demonic energy to fight while using it as a sword Kai, and Hajin uses his demonic skill to attack and push him back. He exclaims that he will have to beat him until he exhausts all that energy, and Dongpul and Yui are watching them fight astonishingly. Hajin starts beating him and is feeling very well, and wonders if he has led such a dull life, and he feels a sense of liberation or satisfaction. 
Dongpo tries to stop him, but he is not ready to stop and is beating him again and again. Dongpo asks him to stop and says he is unconscious now so he can stop now. He is in a severe condition and Hajin asks them why they are looking at him like that and he did nothing wrong. Gagu asks him to look at his face and Hajin says he can still recognize him and his face is not that bad. Gagu says the suspect was the first young lord, then why he did this to the third young lord, and Hajin says he should also know the difficulty in this case arises from the suspect not leaving any concrete evidence. Handling things cleanly, leaving no trace, and being careful enough to avoid detection by his sharp gather, known as the Sword King, he came up with a hypothesis that he had an accomplice. By observing them he can tell that the older brother with a murderous aura, the kind acquired through regular killings, and the younger brother conceals strange demonic energy. They are the main perpetrator and the accomplice in this case, and Gagu says the case isn't simple, and the main perpetrator will deny everything and show him the hallucination powder. He had a hard time getting this out from the Geoxa family, and the medicinal plant, known for its hallucinatory effects would weaken his will. Using the hallucination powder, they will extract a confession implicating his older brother from him, as well as have him spit out the truth about his strange demonic energy. The demonic energy in his body surely comes from the people he has killed, and he became more certain when he saw him attacking him wildly, driven by the demonic energy from the Silent King's sword. However, if these two confess and are sent to the penal law hall, it will all be in vain if that one person doesn't agree. Hudgen says he needs to visit the last person who can resolve this issue. After a while, the Sword family's lord is in his residence drinking the divine cult tea. He feels heartwhelming because his son is going to become the demon lord's disciple, and he can't calm his heart even with a nice breeze and fragrant tea. Suddenly, he felt someone's presence there and was surprised to see the third lord there. He exclaims that the lord must lead a healthy life since he is drinking tea instead of alcohol. He asks him if it is alright there if he interrupts his relaxation and says he will tell him straight why he is there. He informs him that his third son Jai Younghyun was arrested, and he is considering doing the same to his first son Jai Kanghyun. After some time he shows him the list of cult members killed by Jai Kanghyun and Younghun's confession, and the lord wonders if this is truly his son's doing. Hajin says everything is true, and if he doesn't believe him, he can call the penal law hall, and the Lord refuses to believe this. He claims that Hajin is doing this to eliminate competition for himself, and Hajin reveals that the fourth has already been handled by him, and he is now confined to his house for treatment in a state between life and death. The fight for inheritance has long begun, and he can easily remove someone like them, so he should not dwell on useless things, and he doesn't know his notice for making them the demon lord's disciples. He asks him what happens if his son becomes a disciple and starts slaughtering cult members again, and asks him if he wants to disgrace his family name for this. The lord hits the table angrily and says he should think about this carefully, but Hajin asks him to remember his words from earlier, he gets up angrily and releases his demonic energy. The next morning, everyone stood in front of the Demon Divine Palace, and the Demon Sword family's lord was also present there. He sees the third young lord standing there from a distance and remembers their conversation from the last night. Hajin tells him that he hasn't come there to fight with the demonic sword family, and he is aware that he can easily cover his son's sin with his influence, but he knows that he is not that kind of person. He proposes he report Jai Kanghyun's sins directly to the Demon Lord during tomorrow's Mara festival, and he believes that confession will preserve the honor of the Demonic Sword family in front of everyone present. He asked him to choose the fate of centuries depends on his conscience. At present, the Lord wonders if conscience is more important than his dignity, and the Demonic Sword family's honor. In the meantime, the Demon Lord reaches there and everyone shouts for the long life of the Demon Lord. Everyone bows before him, and the Lord thinks he yearned to see his son revered as a god, in a place he couldn't reach. He had believed that the son he is so proud of, would have no problem attaining that position, but his son committed such atrocities. Hajin is looking at the head of the demonic sword family and wonders if he is still hesitating. Meanwhile, the demon lord watches Goldie and says it has been a while since they saw each other, and he thinks he is still just a child. Goldie releases his demonic energy and the demon lord asks him if he is trying to say that, despite his childlike body, he is as powerful as ever. After that, he announces that he doesn't like cumbersome things and that he will end this meeting with a few words. 
In the meantime, the family lord is wondering if this meeting can end without any issues and why he should denounce his son and tarnish their family's honor. Hajin thinks this is his last chance, and the demon lord announces that he will take Jai Kanghun, the eldest son of the demonic sword family, as his disciple. Suddenly, the family's lord shouts and asks him to wait, saying he must speak even at the risk of death. He states that he regrets informing him, but his son has committed a grave crime. The demon lord releases his energy and asks him to come to his palace. Hajin is shocked to hear this and wonders if he is really planning on taking him as a disciple. After a while he greets the demon lord and he asks them both to sit. He asks Hajin if he needs a glass but he refuses by saying he is just fine and the family's lord wonders how he dares to refuse the demon lord's alcohol. He then calls the family lord and says he has shown bravery and it mustn't have been easy to do such a thing in front of so many. He asks him to release his energy and asks how he wants to handle this and he replies that though he is his son, he feels that it's out of his hands now that he's his disciple. The demon lord calls him and asks if he is going to make him ask the same question twice. He wonders what the demon lord is thinking right now, but he guesses his intention is futile. He replies that he acknowledges his grave sin, but he's still his child and parents are the only ones who can forgive their child. However, he is the head of the demonic sword family, so they have to handle it more strictly, and he wants to impose a punishment befitting his crime. The demon lord again inquires about his intentions, and he agrees that the child has become his disciple and is beyond his reach. But he doesn't want to ignore his words, and he will discreetly handle him himself. He gives him a bottle of alcohol as a reward, and the family's honor bows before him to thank him for his kindness. The demon lord gets up and asks the third young lord to follow him, and asks him if he sought out the head of the demonic family himself. He asks him the reason for him getting involved in this matter, while Hajin stays quiet and doesn't answer his question. 